Hello, everyone. We are live. Welcome to the very start of the 12 hour California nature extravaganza. My name is Darian, and along with Aria and Sadie, who you'll meet in just a bit, uh, I'll be one of your hosts for today's marathon of a celebration. You can keep an eye out for us in these beautiful California poppy shirts. Before we begin this 12 hour celebration of California biodiversity, we want to acknowledge that the California Academy of Sciences sits on the unceded ancestral land of the Ramitush Ohlone. Our work seeks to connect communities with nature, and this cannot be done without acknowledging the history of oppression that these lands hold and seeking to help repair the immeasurable harm committed against the original inhabitants and stewards of California. Archaeological evidence shows that the Bay Area was one of the most densely populated regions in North America, long before European contact. And California more broadly has been home to many distinct communities of native people since time immemorial. These communities have survived centuries of oppression and displacement and are the past, present, and future caretakers of this land. Recognizing that we cannot undo the past nor the harm done, this acknowledgement is part of an ongoing commitment to reflect our, on our own complicity and to dismantle the lasting legacies of settler colonialism. Today, we honor California biodiversity and California's native people's deep connection with the natural world. And we invite you to join us in acknowledging the original caretakers of this land and their elders, both past and present, as we seek to understand and build our own personal connections to the nature that they steward. One resource to begin learning about whose ancestral lands you're living on and about how to support Indigenous-led organizations where you are is the website native-land.ca, which is also going in the chats or comments right now. To celebrate today, California Biodiversity Day, we will be reading the scientific names of every type of plant, animal, fungi, uh, brown algae found in the state of California, literally all of them. That's well over 7,000 names in total, most of which are so multisyllabic it makes my head hurt. Luckily, we don't have to do it alone. We've teamed up with about 50 people across the Cal Academy and beyond to bring you our best pronunciations, along with art, music, costumes, and more, because hey, hi, hello, you know we keep it interesting. California is a massive state with a huge range of habitats. It's got wetlands, it's got deserts, mountains, forests, scrublands, and that's just above the water. Uh, below the water, we have the rocky intertidal zone, freshwater ecosystems, kelp forests, the list goes on and on. Uh, all of those environments mean that there are a lot of different plants, animals, and other organisms growing in them. In other words, California is a biodiversity hotspot, which within which the Academy's Thriving California Initiative seeks to fight climate change, stop biodiversity loss, and advocate for nature by, harm, by harnessing scientific data and mobilizing diverse communities. We have our state's amazing biodiversity to thank for the 7,265 taxonomic names we will be reading today and hopefully pronouncing correctly. Oh no. <laughs> We've compiled this lengthy list of organisms entirely with the help of community scientists like you and you and you using iNaturalist observations made in the state of California pulled from the Global Biodiversity Information Facility, or GBIF. Knowing this, as endless as the names we read may feel, they definitely aren't comprehensive. And there are likely many more plants and animals and fungi and so much more that live in our beautiful state that are still waiting to be observed and uploaded to community science platforms by people just like you. If you're watching live or if you're watching the recording to keep the California Biodiversity Day celebration going after September 7th, feel free to drop us a comment letting us know where you're from, what you're excited to see, or what your favorite thing about California biodiversity is. Uh, it, we tragically will not be able to respond live to any questions in the chat because this is kind of a gargantuan undertaking and we're barely holding it together as is. But we absolutely encourage participating and hyping us in our moderated chats and comments. Uh, would you like a tour of the space? Uh, let's see, up here we have the 12-hour California nature extravaganza. That's the title of the show. Um, here we have our little timer. That's going to count down from 12 hours ever so slowly, just to let you know how much longer we have to go. 
see, moving counterclockwise, you have me. Uh, here is where all of our speakers will show up live. And then next to me here, we have some information. It's mirrored information um, <laughs> about each of the organisms we're featuring today. There is a lot of stuff here, but we'll just be reading from this top box today. That one. Uh, which shows you the genus names. Uh, genus is one taxonomy level above species, which basically means that each one of these genera, that's the plural form of genus, uh, Latin, uh, has a bunch of species contained within it. In other words, we'll be reading genus names because if we read California species names, well, uh, this would be much longer than a 24 hour live stream and I need to sleep. <laughs> All of the other information besides the genus at the top basically shows where an organism has been documented to exist in all the branches of the tree of life. Uh, one other thing on these info boxes, you might see some blank boxes here as we go along, some question marks pop up. That's because this whole genus, species, binomial nomenclature taxonomy system doesn't truly capture how wonderfully complex and expansive nature is. This is just one framework that humans have used across time to document and understand the vast variety of life that exists alongside us and to uncover more about how organisms are related to each other. And lastly, you will see uh, images of all the organisms that we're naming. We've pulled some beautiful images. Uh, I honestly didn't know a lot of this stuff existed before putting it all together. So I hope you'll stay to meet some new faces or some new organisms and to enjoy all of the other entertaining bits we've squeezed into this 12 hour extravaganza. Um, let's see. So just for example, this one here, this organism is in the kingdom plantae. Uh, it's a plant. Phylum Tracheophyta, class Magnoliopsida, order Geranialis, family Geraniaceae, um, and then finally genus uh, California. Wait, did I just, just start up the 12 hour California nature extravaganza with an organism in the genus California? I think I did. <laughs> well, there's no going back now, so let's just jump right into it. I'm going to start with a couple of beetles, uh, just because there are so many of them. <laughs> Evolutionary biologist JBS Haldane once quipped that if a god or divine being had created all living organisms on Earth, then there would that creator must have had an inordinate fondness for beetles. Like there are just so many species, and that means a lot of genera to get through. Okay, so up first we have Calimoxis, Clitus, Lepturobosca, Desmosaris, the elderberry borers, and Toxoleptora. Okay, well, that feels like a good place to leave it for now. Uh, I leave the other something thousand for someone else, I guess. Now, I would like to introduce you to another one of our hosts, Aria, and she is here to do a little demonstration. And folks, could it be? Oh my gosh, it is. It looks like she's got it. She's bringing out <laughs> ever so slowly an easel. <laughs> to paint some cactuses. Uh, it's gonna be the first thing that we start this day off with. I've got some paints here, I've got my easel here. Um, hopefully you can see all of this. And uh, watercolors, and I'm just gonna wait for these cactuses to, okay. Gotta hold this up higher, huh? Um, this is gonna be interesting. Yeah, gonna wait for these cactuses to show up. The plan here today is to capture the kind of shape generally of some of these cactuses um, and then fill in some details as I read some other species or other genus names rather. Um, yeah, so let's just jump right into it. First up, we have Ber Bergero cactus. And I like the shape of this one. It's kind of like, it's kind of like, a, it's got like a lot of little, little guys like this. Um, I like that they're kind of segmented. Excellent. Great, that's our shape. Next we have 
Carne Carnegia. Carnegia. This this reminds me of a saguaro cactus. I don't actually know if that's what this is, but that is a tall cactus. Um, I feel like California or cactuses are so underrated. They have so many cool adaptations. This is Mammillaria pincushion cactuses. So we're going to get a little like orb going for that one. Excellent. I'm just using this one shade of green, but I feel like that's not entirely true <laughs> to like what the spirit of cactuses is. They come in so many shapes and colors. This is Cylindropuntia, also known as the Cholas. And I did recently learn that these cactuses do this cool thing where like their spines are so sharp that they'll just grab onto little chunks of the cactus will cling onto fur of animals and even like clothes of people and um, travel all around and that's how they disperse. And like people call them jumping cactuses, kind of fun. Hom Homolocephala, this is another orb-like cactus. That's so fun. Let's get, uh, this one looks a little bit reddish. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna pull some pull some oranges and reds into here. What if we have it just up here? Excellent. This is Echinocereus, the hedgehog cactuses. Cute, cute. We're gonna get a bunch of little dots. This one here. Nice, cool. What do we got next? We have Ferrocactus. Oh, she's cute. Um, she's got this like reddish barrel shape, maybe, maybe. This is kind of serious again, but that's A-OK. -okay. Um, I think I might've pulled too dark of a red for Farrah Cactus, but that's OK. Grusonia, <laughs> we don't know what she looks like, but these are the club cholas. Um, I did read that some of the, the jumping cactuses got reclassified into this group, so that's kind of cool. Um, what if we just draw a flower? in the spirit of the snow image found. That's cool. Cool, cool, cool. Micropuntia, oh, that's really cute. Like a little one. I think that's a human hand next to it. It gives you like a size comparison. Love that. Okay, we got some red. My little napkin here. It's like, I knew I put that somewhere. And next is Myrtilla cactus. Okay. I love this one. This is such a like cool, gigantic shape. I'm truly running out of space for all my cactuses here, but it's just going to be a little abstract because we're not here for realism. We're here for chaos. Excellent. That's that's Myrtilla cactus, everybody. <laughs> it's definitely scientifically accurate. Um, Opuntia, prickly pears. These these are icons. Y'all know prickly pears. Um, they're edible. They're used by so many people in food, um, and they're so important. Such a cool plant. Okay, some prickly pear leaves here. Really trying to get the shape on these ones, right? Since they're icons. Okay. Lophocereus. Wow. That's a cool one. Okay. We have a lot of like tall, tall friends here. Truly. Love it. Love it. Need some more water. Parodia. Not gonna let my paints fall off my lap. Parodia. This is another like cute little orby one. Love it. Okay, next one. We have Escobaria, the foxtail cactuses. They're cute, check out those spines. I mean, like the, the way that these plants adapt to, um, also, also <laughs> my two orbs, this is one cactus, this is another. I don't remember what the difference in the spines are, but I think we can capture it. But I mean, like the way that cactuses use like really thick leaves and stems and, and like adapted spine structures to like, deal with really dry environments is pretty phenomenal. N N Nyctocereus, um, another tall one. Okay, okay. I feel like this is not really, okay. We're gonna do this. Yeah, there it is. S Sclerocactus, the pineapple cactuses. That's such a cute common name. This one's also kind of like orangey, orangey-ish. Looks a little bit like a sea urchin to me. I love a sea urchin. Trichocereus. Okay, I love it. Great. I feel like we're missing some long ones up in this corner. Okay, okay. And so that's all of our cactuses. We are officially sort of <laughs> captured the shape of all of them, um, or we have officially done that. So now 
we're going to transition to reading some other plants, assorted things, uh, while this dries a little bit, and we're just gonna we're just gonna make some happy little markings on top of them um, once that happens. So here we have sphag sphag sphagnum. I know this is used in a lot of houseplant stuff. Fossum fossum bronia, the frillworts, calipogia, fusco cephalop cephalo. Oh my gosh, <laughs> fusco ceph cephalosiopsis. Cephalozella, lots of lots of cephalo. Um, mar marsupella, the rustworts, and <laughs> yeah, we don't have an image for that one, but that's okay. Jungermania, that one's cute. Lepidosia, lophocolia. Lof These are some really beautiful plants. Sc Scapania, anura. R Ricardia, I gotta say it with confidence. Pelia, Fru Frulania, <laughs> that was not that was not confident. Scale words. Col oh no, <laughs> Col Cololegunia, Porella, Radula, uh, like a snail's mouth. Antilorbis, is this a mollusk? <laughs> That's really fun. Um, gyra, 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 gyro snails. Yeah, we're officially in the snails after Radula, though, so nice. Helisoma, Pl Planorbarius. And at this point, I'm going to grab one of my pens here and start marking up our little cactus painting from earlier because it seems to be dry enough that I can make some marks on it. This is Planorbella, also a snail. Promenectus, pro promenitus. I don't know where I put got the C from. Vor Vorticifex. Cerithi Diopsis. Iolea. Ividella. This is kind of becoming a blind contour moment, <laughs> which is great. Ividea. Long Chaeus. Odostomia. Peristichia? Turbonilla. Juga. Metaxia. Okay. I feel like I got that one. Triforia. Turritella. Oh, I love these. These are so cute. I think uh, they might be called turret snails. Alba trellopsis. That's, that's a fungus. <laughs> That's not a snail. That's <laughs> a fungus. Alb Albatrellus. Genoporus. Leucogaster. Neoalbatrellus. Scutiger. Artomyces. Or, or, or scalpium. This one's really cute. <laughs> Oh my gosh, maybe I should have painted fungi. Lentinellus. Bon Bondar Zewia. That's a cool name. Hetero heter Heterobasidian. That is that is a cool fungus. <laughs> I think we had some sphagnum moss in that picture too. Echinodontium. Heris Herisium. That looks like hair. <laughs> I know that's not how it was spelled, but Lexitexum. Peniophora. That's a cool one. Lactarius, the common milk cap. Rusula, brittle gills. I'll take a break here to show you my progress. I'm just taking some like black pen for anybody who's just joining. Um, my name's Aria, and I'm painting some cactuses from earlier as I read through these fungi now. Rusula, the brittle gills. Allurodiscus. Sterium. Oh, I think I've seen these, like walking out, taking hikes um, in Nortel. Pretty cool. Xylo, Xylobolus. Sebace, Seb, Sebacina. 
Bolitopsis, Hydenellum, Fellow Don. <laughs> kind of like stopped in the middle. I don't know why that happened. <laughs> Sarcodon, like start codon. Amarodon. Thela Thelephora. Tomantella. Trim Trimello dendropsis. Heli Helico Gloa Gloea Gloea. <laughs> Bar Barthelatia. So that's a fungus that grows on a leaf, apparently. Um, Calocera. Dacrymyces. Guepinopsis. Heterotextus. Amphit am that's that's not a fungus. That's a <laughs> that's a that's a thing with ten legs. Am amphitho. That's awfully cute. Remelo Gamerus. Oh, I like that one. <laughs> that's, a, that's a good name. Caprella. Oh my gosh. The skeleton shrimps. Are you kidding me? Everybody go look up skeleton shrimps. They're the coolest. Ameri Americorophium. Cran Crangonix. Siamis. Oh, so little. <laughs> it's just the size of a thumb. Oh my gosh. Platy Siamis. Um, and I'll take this opportunity to give you one more look at my cactuses because I'm going to switch up my pen color and go for some white. Hold it for longer near the camera. I will do that. I'm going so fast. So intent on reading through these names. But here are some cactuses. They're in progress. Alrighty, Platysiamus, not a platypus. Poly Polycaria. Allor, Allor chestes. Gamorous, Hy Hyalella, Erichthonius, Jassa, Leucotho, Thoe, Thoe, <laughs> Dolichiella, that's a cool one, Melita, my white pen seems to be giving me some trouble. I'm going to switch back. Fro Phronema. Clo Cro. I don't know where I got the L from. Chromoplustes. Thorla Thorlaxonius. Podoceros. Oh, this is the nudipig mimicky shrimp. Um, these guys are so cool. Uh, there are like so many different color variations of them. Um, because they mimic these like amazing sea slugs that are like all kinds of amazing colors. Um, these are so cool. And we both, Darian, who's the producer right now, we both learned about these because of this project. So kind of cool. Love them. Shout out Podoceros. Bulichevia. Megalorchestia. <laughs> I like it. I like it's just so round. Um, Tras Trascorchestia. Thysanoessa. Kelatia. This is another snail. I see these all the time in, um, in Southern California. Uh, they are so cool. They're gigantic and they have these like amazing orange speckled bodies that you can kind of see in this photo. Um, Kelet's whelks are the ones that I see really often. Ophiodermella. Cancellaria. Clatherella. I love that we're back in snails. Alia. Amphissa. Exesopis. Mitrella. Xenocerina. I feel like I'm kind of catching a catching a rhythm with these. Californicos. As I say that, Californicomus. I, I really did jinx it. <laughs> Plesiocysticus. Oh my gosh, look at his face. I'm sorry, that was so cute. Um, Barbarofusis. Harfordia. Hes Hesperat 
Texas. That's a tough one. Oh. Granulina! <laughs> oh my gosh. Ithi it, it, Scythera. Tena, Tenaturis. Volverina. Atrim, Atrimitra. Oh, yeah, cool, cool. I see those in the type pools too. Mitromorpha. Darmis, Darmistus. Hyal, Hyalimenus. I, I don't know if it's a beetle or a fly, but anyways, I'll give you one more look at my cat. Oh, true bugs, we're in true bugs. Okay, very cool. Um, yeah, I'll give you one more look at this cactus painting that we started at the very beginning of this 15 minute segment. Um, here we go. Don't know if they're scientifically accurate. I'm almost certain that they're not scientifically accurate, but we've got we've got some tall ones. We've got some orbs. I love the orbs. We've got some like barrel cactus sort of things. Anyways, I'm just working on this as we read through some true bugs now. Protonor. Stachyonemus. Stachyonemus. Tolius. Anthochorus. Cosivora. Macrotrachalia, Melanochorus, Montandoniola, Nidicola, Aureus, Craspidolepta, Pachycyla, Hackberry gall, Cilids, Macrosiphum, Nasanovia, Neophilophis, Neotoxoptera, Penifis, these are cool. Pemifig Pemifigus, popular leaf stem gall aphids. Pleotrichophorus, Procyphilus, Pro Protaphis. Pterocallus, this is an alder aphid. It's so cute. <laughs> ro, ro, ropalosiphum. Sorucallus. Chivaphis. And Sifa. And I feel as though I will give you a final, well, no, I'll give it at the end, but Cytobion. Stegophyla. Take callus. Temalia. This is the <laughs> ericaceous gall aphids. That's a, that's a tricky common name. Tetranura. The cabius. Tinocallus. Tuberculatus. Euroleucon. Capitophorus. Walgriniella. Amazing, and I think that's my list. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and show you my cactuses. They look like this, woohoo! Somehow managed to put some paint on a paper while reading some scientific names today. Um, yeah, this is what we got at the end of it. And I'm gonna go ahead and pass this segment along to our next person um, who's gonna read some amazing other scientific names, but Thanks for being here. This is the 12 hour California nature extravaganza in which we read uh, a whole bunch of scientific names all day long. So we'll be here, but yeah, thanks. Hi, I'm Jennifer Norris, Deputy Secretary for Biodiversity and Habitat at the California Natural Resources Agency. And I'm Madeline Drake, Assistant Secretary for Biodiversity and Habitat at the California Natural Resources Agency. And we lead our efforts to conserve 30% of lands and coastal waters by 2030 for California. And I just love all things biodiversity, plants, animals, fungi, worms, love them all. Same here. I think today we're going to be talking about wildflowers, which is one of my personal favorites. So I can't wait to share with you all the amazing wildflowers here in California. Secretly, you have a wildflower tattoo, don't you? I do. So do I. <laughs> okay, not so secretly anymore. You wanna get started? Go Absolutely, for it. let's go. Rayless golden head, a Camptopappus. I wanted to say a Camptopappus so badly. <laughs> Common 
Yaru, Achillea, Blow Wives. <laughs> what? Ac <laughs> Ac Acria Cana, I guess. Acria Great. Cana. We'll go with that. That looks right to me. <laughs> All right. Sacapelote, Acortia. <laughs> we cannot be plant people. We're nope. terrible. Uh, Adia. Oh, that's pretty good. American trail plant, Adenocolon. San Felipe dogweed, Adenophyllum. Adiophila. Western snake root. Ooh. Agaratina. Cool. Mm, I'm going to see that one. Yeah. Rayless mule's ear, Agnorthiza. I think it's Agnoriza. Oh. That's my theory. I, I think don't that's know. probably good. What do I know? <laughs> You know, we used to work for a plant person. She's probably cringing right now. Probably. Oh. <laughs> All right. Eastwoods, Seaside, Agoceras. Agoceras. Aldama. I wonder which of these are yellow, sunflowery things, because oh, that's yeah. my favorite kind of thing. Yeah. All right. Dwarf coastweed. Amblopapus. Got to say pappus again. Cheesebush. Ambrosia. Cheesebush sounds. I'd grow cheese on a bush. <laughs> I love cheese. <laughs> I wish I'd grown a bush. <laughs> Anaphallus. Pearly Everlasting. Also Anaphallus. Oh, I went way ahead. Okay. <laughs> uh, woolly fish hooks. Anstrosocarpus. Woodland Madia. Anisocarpus. Scale bud. Anisocoma. Pink Everlasting. Antenaria. Rayless amica, amica. California mugwort, Artemisia. I thought it was arnica. I think I need glasses. I think so too. <laughs> so really small. Who put this list together? All right. So many, <laughs> so many good wildflowers. <laughs> Dwarf alpine hawksbeard, Askelia. Gravel ghost, Ooh. Atracoceris. Coyote brush, Baccarus. I got know that it. one. Got it. Parish Vigira, Biopsis. Lax flower, Balia. There's a Balia on the coast that I really love. Super oh. rare, endangered. Oh, does that have a nice flower think, on it? It does. I don't think that's this one, though. Okay, gotcha. Arrowleaf, Balsma root, Balsma morphiza. Maybe balsam root? Probably. <laughs> <laughs> It's probably, funny if you can see it. how bad the smelling is. <laughs> All right. Uh, rough sweet bush, Bebia. Western, I should know this one, Lazinia? Lezen, I have no idea. Okay. <laughs> Benetoa. I've seen that one at least before. This hurts. All right. Yeah, yeah. Berlandiera. Harry Beggar Ticks. <laughs> Biden. <laughs> That's a good one. <laughs> Sorry. Is there a picture? Uh, oh. <laughs> glue seed. Mm. Blenosperma. Heard of Blenosperma? I've never heard of glue seed. Mm. Okay. Man, there's a lot of plants in California. I know. All I'm saying is we're on the bees and we got a lot to go. That's true. These are just the sun. Oh. These are just the flowers. I right, keep going. <laughs> Rough eyelash weed. Blepharopappus. You got to say pappus. <laughs> Glandular big tar weed. Blepharazonia. Bombsylania. Don't know. California brickle bush. Brickelia. Cockaleopsis. <laughs> or is it a C? I don't know. <laughs> I don't think they're going to use this tape. I think they're just going to delete it. All right. Sticky Western Rosen Weed. Calciadenia. White Tax Stem. Calisocerus. Calcistia. Oh. Southern tar plant. Centromadia. Fremont's pincushion. Mm, Synactus? That's right. Uh, Chetabadelpha. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's a. Well, I don't know. I don't know. I have no idea. Okay. Uh, oh, God. Pentacheta aurea, Chattopapa. Like it. 
Spiny Chloracantha. Good. Chloracantha. Rubber rabbit bush. Chrysothaminus? Yeah. I think that's a desert plant. Cool. <clears throat> I could be wrong. <laughs> Anderson's thistle. Circium. Sinoclinium? Constancia. Ooh, giant Coreopsis. Coreopsis. Now, I know for a fact that that's a little sunflower Aww. plant. And why do I love sunflowers? Let's talk about that for a minute. Yeah, let's talk about it. Why do you love sunflowers? Because they're always turning towards the sun. They're heliotropes. Aww. And that's how I like to think of, you know, my outlook on life. Like, things are kind of crummy, mm -hmm. but it's good to always look for the sun and try to be positive. I like I that. Know, they're kind of like my, you know, inspirational plant. I like it. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Your turn. All right. California Aster. Coreophagine. Cosmos, another super happy one. Oh. Cortula navaritia. 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 Okay, cool. I know that one. Oh, nice. What does it look like? No idea. Okay. <laughs> I know the name, though. Cortula. <laughs> Dwarf alpine hawksbeard. Crepus or Crepus. Could be either. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Crossidium. Okay. Cuniculotinus. Curio. Clustered tarweed. Deandra. Deandra. Nice. On to the Ds. All right, we're moving. Desert dicoria. Dicoria. Hori tansiaster. Dieteria. Dermaricea. Detritia. Dolingaria. Western blue-eyed grass, mm. East Woodia. Etanella. Echinacea, we know that one. Oh, we do. False daisy, Eclipta. That's probably pretty cute. Mm -hmm. Encelia farinosa, Encelia. Enceliopsis. California golden bush, Ericamaria. Narrow-leafed rayless daisy, mm. Aragarian. Nice. Golden yarrow, Aerophyllum. Western snake root, Euphotorium. <laughs> Euphrosine. Rough-leaf aster, Eurabia. Broom snakeweed, Euthamia. Featherweed, Viburnum. All right, so this might gonna be the last one. Arrow leaf Zeltnera. Okay, I just want to say I think we did a really good job, given yeah. that we had no idea what we were doing. <laughs> and that it's California Biodiversity Week. Yes. We hope you're out there enjoying all the beautiful things that California has to offer. It's a beautiful state with incredible nature. We hope you're out there enjoying it. Absolutely. And good luck to the next person pronouncing these names. But <laughs> all still very important biodiversity in California. Happy Biodiversity Day. Happy Biodiversity Day. I would like to thank Jen Norris and Madeline Drake so much for like contributing and being a part of our California Biodiversity Day celebration. So to start, we have Allotropa, the sugar sticks. Ooh, that's a fun looking, looks like a candy cane. That is a great name. It looks just like candy. Arbutus, the madrones. Ooh, Arctostaphylos, bearberries and manzanitas. Oh, we have manzanitas in San Francisco, all over the Bay. They're really like, they really have special plants. Cassiope, it's like almost a constellation. Chimaphila, the winter greens. Comarostaphylus. And Petrum, the crowberries. Ooh, those are like little black fruits, it looks like. So interesting. Galtheria wintergreens. Hemitomies. This looks like a saprophytic plant. I am not certain, but I'd, I'd guess that this is saprophytic. Like it, uh, it steals nutrients from other plants and it doesn't produce its own energy. It has no chlorophyll and that's why it's not green. It's just a little parasite. Okay. Uh, Monotropa. These are definitely saprophytic. Okay. So we're in the saprophytic plant section, the Indian pipes. Calmia, mountain laurels. Leucothoe, dog hobble. Dog hobble. 
you think if like you're on the playground, someone was like, you're you're five years old. I guess you're five years old. Someone on the playground is like, what's up, dog hobble? Would you cry? <laughs> yeah, I might. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Monices, ornithostaphylos. Those are pretty. Or philia, philo. Dosi, or if it's me, it's Italian. It could be a filo doce. <laughs> it might be Italian. Mountain heathers. Pitiopis. Pluricospora, the fringed pine saps. Those are so wild looking. Pterospora, the pine drops. Are we back in saprophytic plants? Yeah. Pyrola, wintergreens. Like there are a lot of winter greens in this category. Rhododendron. Oh, we have those in our yard. Rhododendrons and azaleas. Sarcodes. Oh my gosh, what are those? Those are so vibrant. Vicinium. Blueberries, cranberries, and allies. I would like to thank Vicinium for all of their fruits. I enjoy you regularly. I'm a big fan. Fuquer Fuqueria. Fuqueria. Aliciella, Allophyllum, Colomia, the trumpets, Ariastrum, the woolly stars, Gilia, Gymnosteris, Ipomopsis, Langloesia, Langloesia, that's actually a gorgeous flower. Do you see those stripes? Wild. Lathro Cassis, Leptosiphon, Linanthus, Loeseldiastrum, Microsteris, <laughs> Navaretia, the pincushion plants. Ooh, fun. Phlox. Oh, I know phlox. Everyone knows phlox. <laughs> Polymonium, Jacob's ladders. Saltugilia, Androsace, Androsace, pre oh, those were the uh, rock jasmines, Primula, the primroses, gorgeous, Lysimachia, loose stripes, Simolis, Darlingtonia, the California pitcher plants, Styrax, the snowbells, Myrica, the bog myrtles, uh, Garia, the silk tassels. Amsonia, those are blue stars. Aposinum, the dog banes. Asclepius, oh, milkweeds. Love, 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 love milkweeds. Cycladenia. Funastrum, it's fun. It's astrum, it's funastrum. Madalea, the milk vines. Trachelospermum. Coma stoma. Coma sto that, I love the internal rhyme structure in that one. Coma stoma. <laughs> Eustoma. Frasera, the green gentians. Gentiana, the gentians, comma normal, I guess. <laughs> Gentianella, the dwarf gentians. So we're on a gentian kick. Gentianopsis, the fringed gentians. Sicendia. Swertia. And I believe this is the last one on this list, Zeltnera. Okay, awesome. That's phenomenal. We got through a bunch of wildflowers. There are still so many more to go. So stay tuned, the 12 hour California Nature Extravaganza. Um, up next, we will be hearing from our guest, Mana uh, Dasari. Let's see, chair left. Hey y'all, um, I'm Mona Desari. Um, I am the government grants officer here at the Cal Academy of Sciences. Um, and I grew up in Northern California, so I have a really special relationship with California biodiversity, especially a mixed oak savanna that just feels like home, that big like golden open plain with a huge like oak tree in the middle. 
Um, but in college, I actually took a California mushroom class um, that got me really obsessed with foraging and like thinking about how we find mushrooms. I'm a little uh, nervous about actually like eating anything that I find, but I do have this book that I brought from. <laughs> this was my actual textbook, but it's got like a cool guide. So I highly recommend uh, Mushrooms Demystified or um, a smaller and more exciting version with a trumpet by the same author, David Aurora, uh, All That the Rain Promises and more. Um, but today I'm excited to read a bunch of California biodiversity while uh, attempting to cross stitch um, some uh, a representation of California biodiversity. So this is a cool little pattern um, from Lola Crow cross stitchery. Um, so we'll see if I can actually like do that. I've started this pattern here. Um, yeah, okay, we're gonna start with Acrospora which is the cobblestone lichens. Lichens are super cool because they're like this weird, this representation of a relationship between algae or cyanobacteria and uh, this is something else, or oh, fungi. <laughs> That's why it's like on the section, I guess. But lichens are super cool. Like if you look really closely, if you get like a jewel loop or something to look close to them, it's like a whole alien landscape across them. Here we have Pleocid Pleocidium, the golden cobblestone lichens. It doesn't really look so much like the last one, but um, this one is Sarcogyne, which is a grain spored lichen. Those are so small. Wish we had some scale for these so we could know how big they were. The Placithelia. <laughs> Uh, that one kind of just looks like a big fish or something. It's kind of cool how all these shapes are kind of replicated across nature in that they're blobs, I guess. Uh, so this is Saria. It seems like a, a simple name, but I wonder if I've completely pronounced that wrong. And it also kind of looks like something I find on in my fridge when the cheese has been in there too long. Um, Trapelia, I think I've seen these. They have like the cool little cat like cups. Um, if you look at them really close, but it's like, you can kind of see the moss in this picture around it. Um, yeah, take a closer look at your lichens when you're hiking. Uh, this is Trapeliopsis. Also looks like a cool lichen. Uh, Acolium, kind of looks like space. Uh, Alocalicium. Uh, Amandania, which is the button lichens. These kind of look, I guess they do look like buttons, but all the other ones have kind of looked like buttons too. So uh, we'll see, maybe they're related. Uh, we need like a tree over here or something. Builia, more button lichens. So this must be a big group. Um, I wonder how they look under a microscope, this is super cool. These are the calicium or stubble lichens. That's a little, it's a good that we have a side shot of that one. A uh, cyphilium, that's fun. I love this little no image found lichen. I think that's about how I draw a lichen as well. <laughs> Demelania or the mountain lichens. Oh, these ones go on adventures, I guess. Diplo, Diploisia, the pleated lichens. Let me get this guy started too. Um, Pseudothiloma. Also kind of looks like a button lichen, but maybe also related to the other ones. Texosporium. I wonder if it's in Texas. <laughs> maybe it's all over the place. Ew. Theoloma, uh, maybe has a, a trigger warning for tryptophobia there. Is that the whole, whole phobia? Oh, speaking of which, Anaphytikia, or the fringe lichens. Uh, heterodermia, the fringe lichens. Oh, it does look like it's ready to go to a festival or something. Hyperphysicia, the shadow crust lichen. 
Stay B C C. Uh, the wreath lichen. You can put that on like a nice Christmas wreath or something. Be cute. Bizicia, the rosette lichen, lichens. I don't know how, of all the things I mispronounced there, it's lichen. Bizicia, speaking of which. Uh, Physoconia, the frosted lichens. Rhinodina, the pepper spore lichens. Carbonicola, solenspora. Selenospora, Clad Cladonia, pixie cup lichens, Philosporus, the matchstick lichens. Those are super cute. I wonder if you can use them for anything. Uh, Cladodium, Lecanora, the rim lichens, Lycidila, the disc lichens. Ooh. Miraquidis, Miraquidica, Myrioplexus, Rhizoplaca, the rimmed navel lichen, uh, Protoparmaleopsis, Pyrospora, got that one, Lucky Dia, the tile lichens. Daliomyces. That one was a good one to say. Ooh, Geoscaphia. That one kind of looks slimy. Iodophanus. I assume that's an I. Paziza. The cups. That's a well named one, I guess. Plicaria. Sarcophera. Wow, look at these little mushrooms. Illyria. This one kind of looks like witch's butter or something. Anthracobia. Look at how cute these little guys are. Chato Theresia. Chalimenia. Genia. Geopora. Ooh. Geofixis. These are super fun to see in the wilds. Like you have to be really paying attention, but um, I just love the really tiny, tiny mushrooms. Oh yeah, and I'm <laughs> making very poor progress on this guy. Oh, this guy. <laughs> Humeria. Octospora. Otiodia. Paralachnia, Pseudoprophila, Pseudoprophila, Pulvinula, Pyronema. Ooh, it does look kind of fiery. Scutellinia, eyelash cups. Ooh, Smartia. So we're by Leah. A lot of these, um, when you're actually identifying fungi in the fields, um, it's hard to just by sight. So we often take spore prints to, to kind of figure out the differences between them all. Um, and stuff like this can be really hard to spore print because you don't exactly know where to start. Uh, Tarzita, but maybe that's my, my novice mushroom forager. Um, Tricarina, Rhizonia, Pythia, Pseudopithia, these ones are the fakers, uh, Sarcosypha, elf cups, they're so cute, it does look like a little elf's cup. Donadina, Donadinia, Plectania, Pseudoplectania. There's a lot of these uh, little pseudo, pseudo fungi around. Urinula. We've got some nice fingers for scale there. It's not very big. 
these little cups. Tubers. Oh, truffles. Everyone loves a good truffle, unless you don't. Um, but you could still play with the pig that digs them up, I guess. That's always fun. Coprotus. Coprotus. That's a cute little name. It kind of sounds like a Greek mythology figure. Ooh, our malaria. You've probably seen a bunch of these in the field. Um, the honey mushrooms, they're super fun because they grow in these huge um, masses like you kind of see here, but they can kind of take over whole logs. Crypto Merasmus. Oh, I love Merasmus. They're so small, but these ones are, I guess, the, the sneaky versions of them because they're crypto. Flamulina. Flim, Flamulina. Also very cool, like the Armillaria, where they have these giant masses, but they're way more dense than the others. Ooh, Rhizomerasmus. These are also like the tiny Merasmus that I love, but I guess they have these uh, rhizome-looking things at the bottom, so they're really fuzzy. It's almost like they have roots. Strobiliris. These are kind of cool because I think I have seen them in the field and they're pretty like transparent. Um, so it feels very satisfying when you see like a tiny transparent thing when you're just walking around. Hoen Buelhelia. What a mouthful. Pleurotus. Oh, these are the oyster mushrooms. So if you're ever having an oyster mushroom, like from the grocery store, you could also like grow these on a log or um, like find them. Again, make sure you got your, your spore prints and can ID them properly if you're going to eat anything you're finding in the field. <laughs> Pluteus. Deer mushrooms. I wonder if deer like these guys. They are really fun because they have this like little button S thing up top. Volveriella or rose gills. Ooh, I wonder if we look at it on the bottom if it's like a pretty purple color. That's also another way to help ID mushrooms. Vulvoplutius. Ooh, it's kind of, I wonder if this is where Volvo got their name from. Probably not, but it'd be exciting. It was named after a mushroom. Flomena, Flomena. This guy looks so small too. It's growing on a little log. It's moss associates or moss friends. Porothelium. It kind of looks like a lichen. These ones are super hard to ID, um, so it's kind of a pain in class. Ooh, capri caprinite. Oh my god, capri. <laughs> Caprinellus. These are like the inky cap mushrooms. So you've definitely seen these. They look like they're melting after a few days. So they're pretty dramatic, but they are um, edible mushrooms if you can get them before uh, they start melting because no one wants to eat melted foraged food. Ooh, Caprinopsis, the ink cap. So maybe I was totally t wrong. And these are the actual things that I was just thinking of the Caprinus. Uh, again, I am not a mushroom expert. Do not take advice from what to eat for me. Uh, homofron. <laughs> I will say that uh, an important detail is always taste, but don't like eat if you're trying something for the first time. Like don't swallow it. And that's like one way to kind of try things in the fields. But again, I'm not an expert. Do not eat something and then blame it on me. Lacrimaria. Ooh, these ones, I think if Lactarius is within here, um, they cry, essentially. <laughs> like if you break them a little bit, like sap will come out of it. That's super cool and helpful for identifying. Mythicomysis. I don't know anything about those. <laughs> Ooh, these ones are cute. Narci Narcissia. I guess maybe they know they're cute. That's why they're Narcissia. <laughs> Ooh, Parasola. I guess like most mushrooms, they look like a parasol. But these ones especially. Ooh, Scytheralia, brittle stems. They look kind of slimy. I wonder like how brittle their stems actually are or if that's only certain 
ones. Uh, Harmejaya. Harmejaya. Schizophylum. Ooh, I wonder how flat this one is, or it kind of stands out from the tree like a shelf mushroom. Agrocybe. Oh, yeah. I wonder if this is like within the agaricus complex. So these are like pretty common mushrooms that you'll see on lawns. Psilocybe. Ooh, these ones look kind of fuzzy. Or cyclocybe. Uh, Deconica. I wonder if these ones are slimy or just like just pictures when they're wet. I mean, they do like being wet. They're mushrooms. Ooh, hypholoma. These guys, I'm sure we've seen. They kind of look like um, when you have food going bad in your, your fridge, but I guess when all your wood chips are going bad, they're not going bad. They're actually just being decomposed because that's the whole role of fungi. Chironomyces. Laratiomyces. Foliota. Oh, the scaly caps. There's some cute ones here too. And the scaly caps is definitely true. Protostrophaeria. Stagnicola. Sounds like a fancy mushroom. Stropharia, the round heads. Oh, this one's got some little teeth on it too. Atro Atractosporocybe. Oh. Callistosporium. Catathelesma. I feel like after doing enough of these, you just forget how to talk in general. So this is Caloriza, the tail root. Clitocybin, the funnels. Coleobia. This Dendrocoleobia, I guess tree associated ones. I think a lot of these are tree associated because they are mushrooms. And Indof Indophobilisibe, more funnels, fun. Fun with funnels. Lepitista, bluets. Oh, these ones are super cute. Um, they're blue, as you might be able to tell. Leucopaxillus, Melanoleukia. Oh, and an update on my little chanterelle here. A little higher, I guess. Oh. <laughs> um, so we almost have a stem on this one. Melanoleuca, the Cavaliers. Oh, they're probably pretty bold mushrooms. Mycomephalia. Omphalina. Oh, these ones, um, the omphalitas are actually like the jack-o'-lantern mushrooms, if this is what I'm thinking of, right? So they're um, something you want to make sure is uh, not a shant, like they're a poisonous mushroom and they kind of look like chanterelles, but they glow in the dark. So it's a little bit easier to tell the jack-o'-lantern mushrooms. Um, and this is Paralepista. Phyllotopsis and Pseudobaspora. And I think I'm about up on my time. Ooh, the Pseudoclitopsis, I be the goblets. Oh, uh, Pseudoomphalina, Resupinatus, Rysabee, Rimbachia. Oh, that one's so cute. Trilacoma, the knights. Trilum, Tricholompsis. Trubaria, the twiglets. Oh, the twiglets. Typhula. Oh, look at those guys. Lorelea. So it's on Gilmore Girls, is it? Uh, Sedacula. Uh, Ficlatura. I think there's snow in that one. Bisocorticium. Hypocanella. Or a Cularia, the wood ear fungus. Oh, these look soft and kind of like an elf's ear on there. Uh, Exidia, Ductifera, 
grip in the air. Pseudo hidden them. Ooh, I wonder if it's got the teeth like things on it. Oh, and that's it. So thank you all for uh, trying to watch me cross stitch. Didn't get very far, but uh, it's been fun and enjoy California Biodiversity Day. We've got a ton of uh, more species to learn about. Back. Hi y'all, my name is Luigi Ale King and I'm a grad student for Islands through Islands 2030 Initiative and I'll be doing a speed round um, on these beautiful moths. Alright, so Abagratus, Abrostola, hmm, almost kind of white, it's like a like a winter one. Acera, Acontia, ooh, that one's pearly. Acronicta, dagger moths. Adephalgrotus, <laughs> Admetovis, Agrocola, Agrotus, Alisteria, Aleptina, Aleristeria, Alipia, ooh, that one's cute, Amphipoia, Amphipyra, Anarta, Andropolia, and Himla. Anicola, Anaphyla, ooh, that one looks like a butterfly. Eleuthosia, Apamia, Argentosteria, Aseptus, Autographa, <laughs> Autoplusia, Axinus, Azenia, Bagisara, Baptarna, oh, Berencia, <laughs> Benjaminolia. Oh, that was a name. Bacillomia. <laughs> Bilominia. Oh, that one's actually my favorite. Wow. Galopistria. Fern moths. That actually looks like a fern. Caradrina. Catabina. Cerastus. Chloridia. <laughs> Chrysodexus. Cobalos. Cobubatha. <laughs> Condica. <laughs> Copenarta, Copibrifola, Ryophila, there you go. Cosmia, hmm. Cremona, Cryphia, Stanoplusia, <laughs> Cuculia, oh, Dargeta, Dasiblema, Diarcia, <laughs> I'm say Daria, Dicagrius, Dolocuculia, <laughs> Dryotype, Agera, Anargia, Epidemus, Ascaria, Eutonia, oh, Ewanotia, Ewanotia, there you go, Oblema, Eucalcia, Eudryas, oh, that one's actually super dope, Euplexia, Eros, El Ceroptorus, El Trisopus, Eoxoa, Fala, Feltia, Feralia. Oh, that one has like an eye. Oh, that one's scary. Fischia, Fotella. Oh, that one's dope. Nectropsis. Oh, oh, wait. Okay, I was gonna say that's a different moth. Claviceps, Ergots. Acantomysis, uh, Belveria, Cordyceps, that was cute, Lysencilium, Acrostalagmus, Glyocladium, Hypomyces, <laughs> Mycogon, Mycogon, Spherostilbella, <laughs> Trichoderma, Trichotasium, Calonectria, Diole, Di wait, Dionectria, Fusarium, Fusicola, Nectria, Volutella, Ophiocordyceps, that was fancy, Polycephalomyces, that was actually cool, 
Polyplocledium. Oh, stack of rights. <laughs> stack of more trees. Telaclidium. Elosoriopsis. Stabala. <laughs> Catumium. Halminotosferia. Arnium. Lassiosferia. Lassiosferis. Cousins. Podospora. Chisothesium. Narospora. Sorderia. I think Garia. Apos Apiospora. Cersei Dospora. Eutipella. Anulo. Cylon. <laughs> Dardinia. Jacko Gosrilla. Crashamaria. Rosalinia. Xyleria. Oh, that was cool. Tafrina. Lutro. Anthena. Michael Selva. Dixonia. Oh, that was cool. Oh, these are furs now. Okay. Wait, I thought we were in, in fungi still. Equus. Okay. <laughs> Equisetum. Horse tails. Botrychium. Mm. Botrypus. Ophioglossum. Alderstone. Mm. Septridium. Great ferns. Asplenium. Spleenworts. I've seen that one actually. Athrium. Lady ferns. Struthiopterus. Woodwardia. Chain ferns. Oh. Cricytosperosus. Fragile ferns. Dryopterus. Okay, I know that one. Polypodium. Polypodium. Argriocosma. False cloak ferns. Aspidotus. Lace ferns. Astrolipsis. Cryptogramma. Oh, that one looks like one. Like parsley, yeah. Myriopterus. Lip ferns. Notholena. Halalia, cliff breaks. <laughs> that was actually pretty cool. Pentagramma. That's a good pentagram. Amaro Pelta. Halazonerium. No wrong. Woodsia. Pillularia. Oh, that was cool. Marsalea. Helicopter ferns. Hmm. Azola. And that's the last one, folks. Yeah, uh, my name is Luigi Alekin again. I'm a grad student, uh, Islands 2030 Initiative. And yeah, it's been fun reading these, these ferns. Thank you. Come with me and you'll be in a beautiful world of biodiversity. Take a look and you'll see some wondrous ecology. Hi everybody, my name is Jose Gonzalez. I'm the founder of Latino Outdoors Community Educator. I um, wear a couple of different hats in support of our state parks and our state public lands. And I'm really excited here for California Biodiversity Day have a list that I'm gonna share some of my favorites, just a tiny little snippet of the uh, beautiful biodiversity of California um, and some of my faves like foxes and fungus. So here's one of my um, absolute favorites right here. We got the gray foxes, you were scion, um, and I'm gonna stumble my way with some healthy dollops of human and laughter. Um, and also your typical foxes. I mean, I don't know how typical they are because look how fabulous that coat is. So we got vulpus. And then we also, man, we can just have so go off on some fungus. Here's Morkella, True Morals, Thimble Morals, Verpa, Field and Button Mushrooms, Agar see, I'm already stumbling, Agaricus, <laughs> Apioperidone, Batarea, Batareoides, True Puffball, Bovista, like a perdón. In Spanish, perdón is I'm sorry. So every time I read that, I was like, oh, what'd you do? <laughs> Calvovista. Calvatia. Ooh. Chlamydopus. Chlorophyllum. 
the inky caps. I know a lot of my uh, forager friends are so familiar with this. So I'm probably putting them to shame. Uh, or uh, rather, um, they're probably a little embarrassed for me. Coprinus. Ooh, Crucibulum. Look at that. Cyathus. And then, ooh, powder caps. Cristoderma. And Cristodermella. There's no reason for that to sound like a, like a fake <laughs> Italian, by the way. Uh, sistole, <laughs> sistole Piotta. <laughs> this Siseda. Echinoderma. Ooh, I'm thinking like a little echi, echi, uh, packet, no, pachyderm, echidoderm. I'm getting them all confused. And then uh, Flocularia. Hankia, not to be confused with regular Ikea. And Lepiota. Leucogaricus. Leucocoprinus. And then Melanophyllum. That's pretty. Ooh, now we're getting a little fancy here. Monta Montagnia. Mycenastrium. Nidula. Nidularia, and it makes me think of like nido, like a nest. So I can see how some of these are kind of like nest shaped. And then, ooh, termite in caps, podaxis. And skis, ooh, I'm already skisostoma. <laughs> and then the stock puffballs, so many puffballs. Tulostoma, amanita, the slime caps, limacella. And Sapramanita, <laughs> Volvitus, and then the cone caps, Conosai or Conosive, and Galeropsis, no image found, they're on the, they're hiding, and then the Motley Gills, uh, Paneolus, Descolea, Pseudolacaria, makes me think, are they said like the fake Lacaria, the nymph. All right, let's go on to the next one. Clavaria. Ooh, those are fancy too. And then Clavicorona. Wow. And then Clubs and Corals. Ooh, I can see how these have that look. So like Clavilonopsis. Irticlavula. Odophilus. Mucronella. Ramariopsis. And then chocolate webcats, calonarius. More webcats, cortinarius. And then miotomiesis. <laughs> it is so much fun to say these so if you're following along. Um, not to be crass esponorium. <laughs> and caimonophyllum. Grondo, oh, not grondo. Chondrosterium, and then Clitopilopsis, Clitopilus, and then pink gills, ooh, Entoloma, Rhodocide, Rhodophana, Fistulina, oh, I just want to do this, uh, if, oh, uh, this one, stum uh, I stumble on this one, let's see, it would be Hydnangium. Means you maybe <laughs> okay deceivers we went from like true this and true that now into the straight up uh, deception here lacaria ampuloclitosive <laughs> and afroditeola arenia that is a pretty blue look at that uh and then cantrosive wow who knew we had like this many mushrooms in california alone whoa for example, back to Cromosera and Crisomphalia, Falina. Oh, I had that right. Uh, Cupophilus. And then wax caps. That looks beautiful as a mushroom, terrible as a skin condition. So Gliophorus. Humidi ooh, humidicutis. Ah, very nice. Uh, oh, another wax cap. Hydrogosee, borside. Hydro, yes. Hygrophorus. Uh, wood waxes. All right. And then Lycanomphala. 
I should just say lichen, right? Like lichen non falia makes me think of little lichen, um, which is an old joke if you're all familiar, right? Um, uh, Freddie Fungus and Alfred Algy took a lichen to each other. Uh, now the relationship is uh, on the rocks or maybe out on a limb. So here we go back to more porpolomopsis. Spodoside. <laughs> Chromosifella. And then flamula. Ooh, yes. It's a little flamboyant in a nice way. Uh, moss bills, although it looks like someone took a bite out of you there. Uh, galerina. Ruskills and gems. Yeah, different type of gems. Right. And po poison pies. Wow. All right. Beware. Hevelom Hevelo Heveloma. There we go. <laughs> Elder caps, Naucoria, and then Faucolivia, Silosib, maybe. Uh, oyst oysterlings, pretty. Another uh, beautiful one. Uh, Crepidotus, Flamulasta. You can't just, it's hard not to say that with some flair. Uh, Fire caps, Inosib, Inosperma, Fau. Phaomarasmus <laughs> and pseudosperma. <laughs> I swear, you just take four different words and combine them in different ways here. There, because there's there's sive again, simosive or sive, uh, piggyback <laughs> like this. Asterophora, ast asterophora, dome caps, calocid, uh, more dome caps, liophylum or liophylum, miocromela. Sagaranella, and then the Tephrosib, I think, Graylings, Athenilia, Ooh. Biospora, Cali Caliptela, Campanella, Colibiopsis, the parachutes, Ooh. and Crinipelis, Geronema, Henning some or Mises, hydro hydro hydropus <laughs> and lactose lactocos li via cocina luco no sibe I just know all my ecologist friends are gonna come, they're gonna come back to be like I can't believe you said it that way. Um, you try being in the seat. Uh, Microcystidia. Um, pinwheels and parachute mushrooms, a plenty for and abound. Marasmus. Megacolibia. Mycopan, or mycopan. Plerocibella. Tetrapirgos. Half bonnets, not quite full bonnets. All right. Oh, hence, hence the word hemi, by the way. There's that hemi, semi, and demi all mean half, but three different language roots. So bonnets, uh, misena. I, I know a little word, word nerdy for you there. Oyster links. It's not helping with the pronunciations, by the way, for me. Panelus. <laughs> Restinomycina. Roridomyces. Ciromafalina. Dendrothele, Lacnella, Merismodes, Modes, Conopus, Gymnopus, or Gymnopus, Lentinula, ooh, it looks like a little piece of bread. Yes. Uh, Maresmielus, but it's the danger bread, don't eat. Uh, Micronfale, Micentini, like a little martini, all right, all right. Micentinis. And jack o' lantern mushrooms. That says, I love how sometimes common names are exactly what they are. Omphalotus, Paragymnopus, Pseudomarinus. See, like some of these aren't common names. No one came up. It's like, look at this. You know what it looks like? A little white umbrella. And Rhodocolibia. And that is my part of, that's my list and part of. Kind of my contribution to California Bio Biodiversity Day. Again, Jose Gonzalez, founder of Latino Outdoors, among many other hats that I wear in support of our state public lands and our beautiful eco California ecology and biodiversity. Uh, good, luck to, good luck to everybody else. Y gracias.
masterfully. Um, you make me wish that we had kind of programmed a rim shot in here. Like, gosh, I'm like, we should, to dance. maybe we'll just do it vocally from here on out. Oh my God, oh, you flatter us. Okay, well, up next, we are going to hear from Nisha. Let's see when, when we're ready to go. I'll give you the cue. Oh my goodness. Hello, um, my name is Nisha Leeser. I'm Associate Director of Donor Events here at the California Academy of Sciences. Um, I am so thrilled to be working at the Cal Academy and um, all that we do in our mission to regenerate the natural world. Um, really excited to be here today to read off um, a kajillion species names. Um, I have not had a chance to look at the list. I thought it'd be fun to read them cold. Ooh, I get bugs. Very exciting. Um, here we go. Aliocara. That's a fun little bug there. Caffius. Bloodius. Caffius. Creophilus. Dasiceris. Dianus. Dinothenorus. Echiaster. Nethusa. Habroceris, Hadrotus, Holobus, Hypomedon, Morius, Neobisnius, Onthelestus, Hedaris, or Whiplash Beetles, Phacophallus, Philanthus, Platodracus, Clat Hadius, Stennis, Canarinus, Hasgius, Sinopenus, Adelphochorus, Alarhinochorus. Oh, pretty. Um, Aeoplanema, Atomoskelis, Valella. Brachinotochorus, Campylonora, Ceratocapsis, Clamidatus, Clostericorus. Well, these are tiny, tiny little buggers. Oh my goodness, literally. Um, Corydromius, Creontiatus. Siphopelta, Deserla, Derichorus, Dicyphus, Ectopioceris, Engetatus, Europiella, Eustictus, Haltacotoma, Yucca plant bugs, Henry Ligus, Hoplomachidea, Herbicea, Larinoceris, Lepidoriginer, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> Leptopterna, Luteola, Lopidea, scarlet plant bugs, Ligochorus, Ligus, Macrotylus, Neuroculpus. Nothalopisca, Onceromatopus, Origodnema, Orthocephalus, Pamilia, Paraproba, Parthenicus, Phytochorus, Pilophorus, Plagionathus, Posilocapsis, Polymeris, Pseudotomocellus, Pseudopsalis, Pycnochorus, Ranzovius, Rhinocloa, Celeria, 
Simium. Slatericorus. Spanagonicus. Stenodema. Taylorilogus. Teleurinus. Tropidosteptus. Tupiochorus. Tuxedo. Ooh. <laughs> I love this name. Why can't they all be named like this? <laughs> Zanduziphilus. <laughs> Vesperacorus. Anginella. Anopleus. Blue black spider wasps. Aporus. Aplopus. Oh, that one's a pretty one too. Seropalus. Cuckoo spider wasps. It almost looks like, are there two of them there? Or does it have like two butts? Two distinct body segments. There you go. <laughs> Cryptocellius. Dipogon. And typus. Episeron. Hemipepsis, old and new world tarantula hawk wasps. Too bad we don't have an image. Noctisiphus. Pepsis, new world tarantula hawk wasps. Prionemis. Sorthaspis. Tachypompilus. Tastiotenia. Zero caris. Idioporus. Pteromalus. Scutalista. Deseriocrania. Areocraniella. Neocrania. Pactus. Agnipe. Aproarima. Oh, fuzzy. Oh, another fuzzy. Um, Aristotelia, all scientifically accurate. My descriptions, obviously. Um, Aroga. Bateristus. Caliprorora. Chionotus. Chrysothia. Coleotechnites. Dichomeris. Exotelia, Faculta, Philatima, Fresaria, Galicia, Noramoschema, Helcytogramma, Isofrictus, Kefiria, Leucogoniella, Mesoplups. Metoplura, Miraficarma, Monocroa. <laughs> I love it. Ornithobulba. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Platyurita. <laughs> Perlita, Pseudocalaria. I can't read them that fast. <laughs> Rifseria, Scroba palpopsis. I love these names. Symmetrischema. I'm assuming it's supposed to be symmetrical. Teleopsis, Telfusa. Xenolechia. And that is it. Oh my goodness. Nisha, <laughs> you did that like with a bomb. Your grasp of like phonemes and how sounds, like you didn't hesitate once. I just went for it. I know it's probably it's completely incorrect. Chris Grinter is probably gonna be like, oh, no, no, that's not how it's said. <laughs> but you know, I mean, yeah, we all try. But you know, that's, I guess kind of the fun of it like i love the how the words come together and you kind of just 
hooked on phonics, man. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> absolutely. I mean, I'm also sure it's fun to like absolutely flex on everyone else. <laughs> that was amazing. Yay. Right. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you so much. Good luck. Today is going to be amazing. Happy California Biodiversity Day. There are still a ton of names. And so, so that concludes my segment. Thank you. Thank you. All right. So up next, we will be hearing from uh, Jack Dumbacher. And I think we have a bunch of birds in store, which I'm very much excited for. Um, so far, we've been through about, we're almost at 900. We've been at, we've read almost 900 names out of 7,200, something, something, something. Um, so that's kind of where we're at with progress. We're making really excellent time. Um, I am going to hand it off to Jack Dumbacher, who I will give a cue to when we are ready to go. All right. Well, welcome everybody to the bird section. We're going to do some bird names. And, um, and I brought a couple things, my binoculars, because you don't really need that much to get out and enjoy birds besides a pair of binoculars is super helpful. Bird field guide, also very helpful. And um, and this was kind of fun, but there's a, a few different bird books, um, books about Latin for birds. And it's interesting because because birders don't actually use the Latin names very much. So because there's so many, um, so many people involved in birding who don't, you know, know Latin or who aren't professional birders, um, we've codified all the common names. And so we often use the common names and we capitalize them. So you might see that, that where the, like people say blue J with capital B, capital J to say that that is the blue J from the Eastern United States, not just, you know, some J that's blue. And, and because of that, we can avoid using the, uh, the Latin names a lot. So this will be fun. And, um, and I'm going to do my best and I probably will get a couple of these wrong. And all my friends from from Europe, you know, always cringe whenever Americans try and pronounce Latin names because we didn't grow up with it the way that other folks did. But um, we still use them a lot and um, they're super useful. So um, what else do we need to know about birds? Let's roll. All right. Sounds good. Cardinalis. These are the typical cardinals. And Passerina. These are the North American buntings, little birds with conical bills, seed eaters, and they're super beautiful. Some of them are really bright blue, like this one. This is a lazuli bunting. Fructicus. So these are the grosbeaks, and you'll actually see several different genera of grosbeaks that aren't that closely related. So this is um, the black-headed grosbeak. Paranga. These are the northern tanagers. This is a, a huge group um, without that many North American representatives, but this is our western tanager. Certhia, these are the tree creepers. That's our little brown tree creeper. Sinkless, these are the dippers. I think there's only like four or five species worldwide, but we have one. And these are birds that actually swim underwater in the torrents. So they're super cool. Sinkless. Aphylacoma, these are the scrub jays and allies. Corvus, um, these are the crows and ravens. So these are some of the smartest birds in the world. Tool users, they do all kinds of cool things. Cyanocida, these are the blue and stellar's jays, and this is our western stellar's jay here. Gymnorhinus, these are the pinion jays, and these are very social birds, and they tend to feed on pinion pine nuts, the pine nuts that we like to put in our, in our food. Um, Nusifragia, these are the nutcrackers. This is Clark's nutcracker. Parasaurus, the boreal jays. Pica, this is, um, this is the yellow-billed magpie, and it's an endemic to California. So that's a cool thing. We only have them here. Imophila, these are the thicket sparrows. And there's a ton of different genera of sparrows that we're going to see today. So this is one, the thicket sparrows, Imophila. Amodramus, these are the grass sparrows. Amphispiza. Artemisio spiza. And Artemisio comes from the word sage. So this is the sage sparrows. Calamospiza. Condestes, Junko, Melospiza, it's a song sparrow, Melazone, and so these are the some of the tohis, Passerculus, Passerella, there's our fox sparrow, Pipolo, these are the typical tohis, and this is our, our uh, spotted tohi, Spizella, Spizaloides, 
Zona trichia, and this is cool because there's one species, the white-throated sparrow, that that has like um, four sexes instead of just two. Very complicated story, but very cool. Acanthus, these are the red poles. So those were the sparrows, then now we're moving into something different. So you can see how much diversity there is in sparrows. So this is the red poles, Acanthus, high elevation specialist. Hemoroas, these are the American rose finches. Cocothraustes, so I mentioned that there are different uh, gross beaks. So these are the whole Arctic gross beaks. This is our evening gross beak. Leucosticti, these are the rosy finches and allies. Loxia, these are the crossbills. Pinacula, this is the pine gross beak. So this is yet another gross beak that's unrelated to those other gross beaks. Spinus, these are the siskins and New World goldfinches. Hirundo, so now we're into the swallows, and this is our barn, barn swallow. Petrochelidon, these are the cliff swallows and allies. Progni, these are the martins. And riparia, these are the sand martins, plain martins, and allies, so more small uh, swallows. And Stelgodopteryx, these are the rough ring swallows, rough wing swallows. Tachycineta, uh, this is our violet green swallow. Agileus, so these are blackbirds now, so we're moving into a new family. It's our red winged blackbird. Dolichonyx, this is bobolink. Euphagus, these are the rusty and blue brewer's blackbirds. We get a lot of these outside the, um, uh, the food court downstairs. Icterus, so these are the New World Orioles, very brightly colored birds. Molothrus, these are the cowbirds. Quiscalus, these are the grackles, they're blackbirds with long, beautiful tails. Sternella, so these are the meadowlarks. Xanthocephalus, so that's the yellow-headed blackbird. Lanius, or the typical shrike, so we're into another family again. Dumatella, this is our catbird. Mimis, so these are the typical mockingbirds, which are related to the catbirds and the thrashers, which we're going to see in a minute, I think. Oreoscoptes, so these are some other thrashers. Toxostoma, these are the typical thrashers. Anthus, so again, moving to a new family now, these are the pipits. Baleolophus, these are the tip mice. Posile, these are the chickadees and the allies. Okay, so now we're getting into the, the North American wood warblers. So Cardin, Cardolina, this is our Wilson's warbler. Helmetheros, so Helmuth is worm hunter, so this is the worm eating warbler. Icteria, this is the yellow breasted chats. And they're actually in their own family now. Lyothlipus, it's our orange crowned warbler. Minio, Minio Tilta, it's our black and white warbler. Or no, this is black. Yep. And Parkesia, the water thrushes. Cetophaga, more of the uh, warblers. Polyoptila, these are gnat catchers. So again, moving to a new family. Phenopepla, these are the silky flycatchers. Corthilio, the ruby crowned kinglets. Regulus, these are the fire crests, gold crests, and allies. So the golden crown kinglet here. Ara Paris, this is the Verdon. Sida, there are nut hatches. It's a nice red breasted nut hatch. Okay, now we're into the wrens. So this is Campylorhynchus. This is the large wrens, like the cactus wren. And Catherptes. And Cystothorus, the marsh wrens. Salpinctes, Thryomanes, and Troglodytes. So these are all of our little wrens with their tails in the air usually and skulking around on the ground making lots of chittery noises. Pretty active birds. And now we're into the thrushes. So Catharis are the brown thrushes and nightingale thrushes. And these birds have the wonderful flutey song and they can actually sing out of both sides of their uh, syrinx so they can kind of sing two different tunes at once and harmonize with themselves. I, not that one. I, I can't do that bird <laughs> song. There might be one that we see that I can try and do. Hylocicla, this is another thrush. 
Ixorius, this is our buried thrush. Maya Destes, these are the uh, typical solitaires and Hawaiian thrushes. This is our Townsend solitaire. Sialia, the bluebirds. Here's our Western bluebird. And Turtis, the typical thrushes. So this is our robin, American robin. Contopus. So these are some of the flycatchers. Um, and these are the peewees. Impidnax. We have several species here. Myarchus. Pyrocephalus. So this is the, um, the vermilion flycatcher. Sayornis. These are the Phoebes. This is our black Phoebe. And Tyrannus. These are the, the kingbirds. And Vireo. So these are little warbler-like birds, a little bit bigger. Okay, here's some owls. So we got Agolius. This is the forest owl. Some of the forest owls. Azio, the eared owls and allies. Athene, the little owls and allies. Bubo, this is the typical eagle owls and horned owls. And this is one I can sing. So that's this is the one that you hear like when you were watching, um, you know, scary movies and you hear the... <laughs> So that's the bubo. And Glaucidium, this is our pygmy owl. It's a teeny tiny little owl that's only about this big. A lot of people don't even know that these things exist. And they're voracious hunters. They, they can hunt things that are almost the same size as them or even a little larger. Uh, little mammals. Um, I mean, they do take some insects, but they're amazing hunters. So they can do, they can do a number on small mammals and even small birds. Megascops, these are the screech owls. Microthene, Siloscops, and Strix. So Strix are our wood owls, and this includes um, the, the uh, northern spotted owl that's endangered, and they have a four-note hoot call that goes, woo, 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 woo. And it also includes the invasive barred owl that we have in California, and it says, who cooks for you? Who cooks for you all? And it goes, woo, woo. So that's the, uh, those are the two Strix owls. And I'm pretty familiar with those. Every mouse in this room just scurries. Yeah. That's how we keep them out. And in Taito, these are actually in a different family, but they're also owls. These are the barn owls, the barn masked grass and sooty owls. And we have just one species, the barn owl here. Frigata, these are our frigate birds. So now we're moving into some seabirds. Morris, these are the boobies or gannets. That's what we've got, and all right, awesome. Thank you so much, Jack. Not all the birds in California, but a pretty significant selection. Yeah, well, a lot of the perching birds. I think we got through a, a huge number of the perching birds, but there's a lot of the non-perching birds, a lot of seabirds, a lot of shorebirds and ducks, which California is very well known for. Um, so we'll come back to those some other time. Yeah, we have those. We have another like eleven hours to go. We'll get to them in due time. Awesome. Okay, thanks, you guys. How did you learn the bird, the bird calls? Like, how did you get to do them so well? I wonder. Um, well, I actually study the owls, and one of the ways that we we actually do have to call them in sometimes. Um, so, and and they're really social. And even back before I was studying owls, and I was living in the eastern United States, when I was camping, you could do a a, a barred owl call, and they'll come in. And, you know, we know now that it's not a very nice thing to do because it kind of upsets them. They're like, hey, who's in my territory? What are you guys doing here? So, um, but, you know, a lot of birds will come in if you can mimic their calls. And you don't have to be that great of a mimic for the owls to respond. So that's it's a fun thing to, to know how to do if you're outside. And just to know them because at night, like if you hear a screech owl calling or one of these owls, you know, it's just nice to know that it's there and know what it is. And, and if you do hoot, they'll come over. And so it's kind of a cool thing. Pretty, pretty cool skill to have in your back pocket for sure <laughs> all right well thank you so much for for joining us today um, um up next we are going to hear from chrissy pietrowski who i believe has a a bunch of uh, assorted worms from california to show us uh chrissy when i give you the cue you are welcome to start hi i'm chrissy pietrowski 
I am the Senior Collections Manager of Invertebrate Zoology here at the Academy. And so I manage a big collection of um, marine, terrestrial, and freshwater uh, invertebrates. And uh, polychaete worms are some of those invertebrates, and they're my favorite group. And I think that that's the beginning of the list will be the polychaete worms, followed by some that I may not be quite as familiar with. So let's see if I can pronounce those. <laughs> Periorthoe. Um, this is a fireworm, and these worms actually have um, white bristles off of the, the side edges of their bodies, and the bristles actually have a, a little neurotoxin inside of them. So if you handle these guys, you better watch out because they can actually irritate your skin and you'll feel a burning sensation. They're very interesting, very beautiful worms, though. Euphrosini. I like the image that you found for Euphrosini. <laughs> this one, it looks just like it. <laughs> this one uh, was actually named after Zeus's daughter, um, the, uh, one of the three graces, and it means merriment, Euphrosini. Listria lobos. Um, this is a spoonworm, and it does not look like the image here. Um, it's a little kind of green um, plump worm that um, is in a burrow usually, but it has this long um, spoon-shaped proboscis or feeding um, apparatus that it uses to feed with sediment. And it'll eat the sediment and it'll derive all of the nutrition out of the sediment and then it'll poop out the little fecal pellets afterwards. Dorvalea. Um, this is a small but really beautiful little worm that lives um, near um, us. It's got these beautiful red stripes on it and um, tiny jaws that you can just make out in this photo. You can see off to the left-hand side, you can see the jaws through the, through the dorsum there. They usually hang out with algae. Leodice. Um, this is a part of one of a member of a group of worms called the Unicids that has five ringed antenna. Um, off of its face that you can see here. And um, interestingly, they also have this really um, intricate jaw apparatus that they use for feeding. And that jaw actually can fossilize unlike the soft bodied parts of worms. And so there is fossil uh, record of, of this group and some of the other groups of worms. Marphiza is another type of um, unicid, same group as the first one. And um, they're also used as bait worms around the world because they're larger. Arabella. Um, Arabella are sandworms. And um, some of them, actually, I think the ones on the East Coast have been reported as uh, parasitizing other worms. So they'll actually live inside the body cavity of another worm of kind of comparable size. And most of these guys are not parasitic. So there are parasitic worms out there. Most polychaetes are not parasitic. Uh, Disponitus is a type of ketopterid worm. And Paleonotus as well, these, sorry, not Ketopterid. I'm getting my, my C families <laughs> confused. Chrysopitalid worms. Um, these Chrysopitalids are actually really beautiful. Um, it's difficult to tell from these photographs, but they have these um, fans of flattened bristles that um, are often kind of shimmery gold or silver, and they cover the dorsum. They're very tiny, and um, they tend to live um, kind of in sediment, sand grains, or, or in um, habitats that are kind of cryptic. Glycera. This is a blood worm, and it's you can kind of see the proboscis that it uses to feed. Um, it's kind of half sticking out of its body. They're, they're, it has a very long proboscis um, with little jaws on the end of the proboscis, that, which it uses to nab its food. And um, the jaws actually have venom glands associated with them. So it can use this venom to immobilize its prey before it sucks it down. And they're called blood worms because if you were to cut one in half, it would actually look like blood. Um, their body fluid has hemoglobin in it, just like our, our blood does. And hemipodia, hemipodia is also another type of blood worm. And you can see the shape is kind of pointed in the anterior. Glycindae. Um, you don't have an image for this, but it looks a lot like the blood worms, although it's in a different family. These are the proboscis worms. Um, Glycindae is a member of the proboscis worm group. And they look kind of like the blood worms, but their proboscis is um, really long, and it actually has these um, kind of spines on it and a little round circlet of jaws. Amphiduros. Uh, Amphiduros is... Um, 
let's see, what is, oh, it's a Hesionid. That's right. Um, so Hesionids are um, really fragile. It looks like this one was probably broken towards the, the left. You can see where, where it, um, it's broken apart when it's been collected. A lot of worms, when you try to collect them, they fragment or they, um, you know, you just don't, you don't pull them correctly and they might might pop apart. Um, but they can continue to live um, when, they've, when they've been broken. Hesionids are really beautiful, but very fragile worms that have a lot of um, long cirri that you can see kind of coming off of their bodies. And Oxydromus is another type of um, Hesionid that this guy lives um, is as a symbiont to um, several groups, one of them being the starfish, which you can see in this photograph. It lives along the ambulacral grooves of a starfish on the underside, um, and it, it will eat um, what the starfish doesn't eat um, when the starfish consumes something. And also they can live on keyhole limpets. And when they're living on keyhole limpets, when a starfish tries to attack the limpet, the, um, the worm will try to um, actually bite the tube feet of the starfish to defend its home limpet, which is kind of interesting. Neftis are sandworms, and um, these are kind of somewhat nondescript, but they have um, circular cross sections in their interior and then kind of um, rectangular cross sections in their posterior, which is one way that you can tell them apart. Um, they're um, beautiful worms nonetheless. Okay, Hadiste, we're getting into the, um, the Nereid worms. This one's a ragworm. Uh, these guys also have um, jaws that they use to, um, to um, snare their prey. Some of them are also herbivores as well. Um, and we can go through maybe into the next group of um, Neanthes. We don't have an image of that one. And Nereus. These guys are um, interesting. This group actually um, has an interesting way of reproducing in that it um, forms what's called a heteronoreid, which is um, a modified um, a modified body that actually has eyes and swimming swimming um, bristles, which you can kind of see in this picture here. It looks like the eyes are really large and red. Um, this might be a heteronoreid. So it, it modifies itself um, for breeding and the heteronoreid will fill with either eggs or sperm and then um, during the lunar, lunar cycle um, at a full moon, they will um, swim up into the water column with their swimming bristles, and then um, they'll swim around the males and females, and then they'll, they'll rupture, they'll just burst. And all the gametes go everywhere and fertilize, and then um, the fertilized, um, um, the larvae that end up um, having been fertilized will um, live in the plankton for a while. Um, and of course, the adults die after rupturing, of course. Platinoreus is another type of, of uh, nereid worms. These are also called um, clam worms or pile worms, rag worms. There are a lot of different species of them. Okay, Etione, this is a different group. This, these are the paddle worms, the phyllodocids, and um, you can almost see here um, little paddle-shaped cirri that are um, arising from the sides of their bodies. They, um, this one has um, specks on it, looks like, but also they often have um, bright colors, greens and yellows, um, this, this group of animals, the, the paddle worms, and um, they're really beautiful as they kind of shimmy their paddles as they as they move around. Um, they're usually really long, um, and they produce a lot of mucus that they use in their feeding. Eulalia, that's another type of paddle worm. This shows some of the, the beautiful um, color patterns that you can find um, in the paddle worms. Umidi, umida, um, again, no, no image, but imagine a beautiful paddle worm here. <laughs> And phyllodose, here you can really see the, the paddles um, and the flattened nature of the series. So this is how you can tell um, a phyllodosid um, paddle worm from other types of polychaete worms. It's amazing that there are so many different types of polychaete worms out there and not very many people know what a polychaete worm is. <laughs> uh, Terocerus um, and Arctinoe. Um, these guys are... Um, are um, scale worms. The scale worms are actually my favorite group of worms. And um, Arctinoe are, um, are um, symbionts as well on, on invertebrates. Hesperoni is another type of, of scale worm. And Halicidna occurs really commonly in our area as well. 
Lepidonotus is another type of scale worm. So all the scale worms are named um, for the elytra or scales that um, are occur in pairs along their dorsal surface, so along their backs. Malmgreniella, another scale worm. Okay, this one is my favorite scale worm. So I have something really embarrassing to um, share with you. <laughs> I do have a harmathoe hat. <laughs> this is what Harmathoe's head looks like. You can't see it because it's covered in elytra, but it does have these long palps and it has eyes on the on the front and on the rear. So they have four eyes. <laughs> and I don't have my scales with me today. Sorry about that, but I thought you might enjoy seeing what a Harmathoe worm head looks like. So these guys actually um, can brew their eggs and their, um, depending on the species, they can brew their eggs or their larvae um, underneath their scales. And they actually take care of their, um, their larvae or eggs, whichever they're brooding, um, by flapping their scales up and down to allow um, water to move past them and thus aerating the, the eggs and keeping them, keeping them clean. I know I am, but I might not. <laughs> <laughs> I just thought I'd share it for a, a brief moment. <laughs> Thormora, another scale worm. Picture Elytra here. Um, this one is actually a psyllid worm, um, Amblyocillus. And a psyllid is, um, I think they're also called necklace worms as well um, as a common name. There aren't common names for lots of these guys because they're not commonly, um, commonly talked about. Um, but psyllids are usually very long, um, narrow, although this genus not quite so much. Um, they're slender. Um, maybe you can go on to the next one. Um, this one doesn't have a, 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 um, an image. Megacillus. Here you can see um, how long and slender they are. Um, they're, um, they tend to just be everywhere. They're in lots and lots of different habitats. They actually have, um, can you go back to that one? Um, they have a, a um, area of their anterior gut called the um, proventriculus, and it's this um, muscular area that they kind of squeeze um, water back and forth to create suction, and that's how they feed. They feed on little diatoms and things like that. Marionida is a very cool psyllid worm. Um, these guys actually, psyllids reproduce in a lot of different ways. What Marionida does to reproduce is it buds little mini worms off of its tail end. So it um, produces these stolons, which look like mini worms, but they're just um, reproductive bodies. And they grow little eyes and they grow swimming bristles. And um, as they mature, the, the most mature one is at the end of the chain, like a little train, and the caboose um, breaks off and start swimming around in the water column. And, um, and eventually these guys will get together, they spawn synchronously, um, the male and the female um, stolons that are swimming around and um, they'll fertilize much like the, um, the other um, fertilization technique I showed you about, uh, told, told you about. But um, Mary and Ida, the, the adult gets to kind of hang out safe and sound in its habitat while its little stolon goes up and does the, does the dirty work. They can be very brightly colored, so they're really beautiful animals. Odontocillus, likewise, a really beautiful, um, this one with the longitudinal stripes, another psyllid worm. And psyllis, obviously, a psyllid worm. You can kind of make out there's a, a pattern along the, the dorsum there, but it's difficult to, to see. Okay, Owenia is a different kind of worm. These guys make um, little tubes made out of sand grains and shell fragments. They are very narrow tubes. Uh, Neosabellaria. Um, this is a, a different kind of worm um, that makes um, little tubes out of sand grains and then it sticks them onto rocks and other hard surfaces. And Phragmatopoma, these are sandcastle worms related to the one we just talked about, but these guys actually make reefs made out of sand tubes that it creates um, using sand particles that it selects for size. And then it uses mucus to glue them together and it turns out to make these ginormous reefs that you can see associated with mussel beds and um, in the rocky intertidal area around here. They have a, um, a little trap door called an operculum um, that you can kind of see in the um, head area by all of the, um, the um, filter feeding um, uh, tentacle radials there. And, um, and it, it can close off the tube so that the worm is protected. 
acromegaloma. Um, these are um, our um, sabellid worms. And by Spira is another sabellid worm. This one you can see, um, uh, feather duster worm is the uh, common name for this group of worms. And um, they kind of look like a feather duster, I guess. But um, when you see them underwater in their habitat, they're really beautiful. They look like flowers of the sea. They have just these really gorgeous crowns of radials. And you can see on this one, the radials, um, which look like tentacles, it's, it's, a, it's a kind of a cone-shaped crown of them. Um, but it, it will open up wider and you can see eye spots along um, the length of them and they can actually sense light and dark. So if a fish comes up and tries to bite their head off, they can um, retract into the tube that they've built. They usually make a parchment tube. Um, Branchioma is another type of feather duster worm. And Eudistilia, you can see here why they're called feather dusters, uh, another of them. Mixicola, um, not quite as pretty of an image, but these guys are also uh, feather duster worms, but they have webbing on their radials. Paradialichoni, <laughs> sorry, I think the genus name changed on this recently. Or, um, this is a, a smaller um, type of sabellid worm or uh, feather duster worm. Pseudopotomia, another um, feather duster worm as well. And Skyzebranchia, these guys can get to be fairly large and um, they live, uh, sometimes you'll see them in the, the dock fouling. If you look down off of a, a dock, a floating dock that you're walking on, sometimes you'll see one of these feather duster worms if you're lucky. And Skyzebranchia is one of them that you might see. Crucigera, this is a serpulid worm. And I think uh, Phycopomatus shows you what a serpulid can look like. Uh, this is actually an invasive worm from, um, we think, from Australia, and it can um, make these big reefs out of their calcium carbonate tubes. The, the uh, serpulid worms are similar looking to the, the feather duster worms that we looked at before, but they make these shell type tubes instead of the parchment tubes. Um, and they have a little trap door operculum that um, protects them from predators, um, and they do filter feed with radials as well. But these guys are invasive and they tend to foul um, rocks in this case, but ships and docks and things like that. Hydroides is another serpulid worm. And this one can be invasive in parts of the world too. Paradexiospira, these are very tiny um, serpulid worms. They used to be called spirorbids. Protoleospira, this shows you the how a, a spirorbid um, serpulid looks. Um, they're just very tiny little calcium carbonate um, tubes. And protula is another spirorbid, or sorry, serpulid. <laughs> Salmacina as well. Um, these guys have um, kind of reddish radials that you can make out here protruding from their tubes. And serpula is a really beautiful um, serpulid worm. And you can see the trap door here, that cone-shaped operculum is what they use to close off their tube. In this picture, the tube has kind of been broken away. And um, if the tube were intact, their um, radials, the, the bushy looking stuff would be sticking out of their tube to feed. And then when a fish came by to try to bite their head off, they would um, pull into their calcium carbonate tube and then shut the, shut the door with its operculum. So all the fish would see would, would be this outside of the cone. Spirobranchus is another type of serpulid, and this is a Christmas tree worm that lives um, on coral reefs as well. Um, these guys are gorgeous. If you've ever gone snorkeling, you will um, hopefully see the Christmas tree worms. They come in lots of different colors, and the um, same species are different colors on one reef, and you'll see a, a coral head with blues and yellows and reds and whites and all kinds of different color colors of these worms um, sharing the same reef. Ketonotus and Schizocardium and Berencia. And these are not polychaete worms. Um, Berencia is a type of, of entoproct, which is a different type of invertebrate that is uh, kind of poorly known. Myosoma as well. Pedicillina. And now we're in some gastropods, Angusta semenia, and Amphithalamus, 
barley, barley, <laughs> this is a barley snail, and crostata, cecum, those are, I believe, the blind snails, and they don't have a spiral-shaped shell. They actually have a, um, like a curved shell. I think that's the end of my segment. It's been fun talking about worms with you. Have a great biodiversity day. Hi everyone, uh, my name is Alex uh, Astris. I am the marketing coordinator here at the Academy. And my connection to uh, California nature is I'm actually originally from New York. And when I moved out here, um, one of my aunts told me um, the West, she always felt that the sky was bigger. And I can definitely relate to that. The All of the dense trees on the East Coast kind of cut off the skyline. And there's so much wonderful, um, you can see mountain ranges, um, forests, coastline. You pretty much have everything here for you in California, which is amazing. And um, I do not have, I have very little to no science background. So I love that for me. Um, it won't be as interesting as our previous guest, um, but I'm hoping to do my best. So let's see what we've got for you. I love that. <laughs> no image found. I love the drawings. This is ap Apteroloma, Necrophilius, Amphizoa, Symbiotis, Hemicoelis. This gives me like uh, Hercules's long lost brother for whatever reason, a little, um, Greek mythology, Lassioderma, Mesocolopus, Microbregma, Ozognathus, Priobium, Tinomorphus, Stegobium, Trichodesma, Trichornis. Rilletta, new baby name, 2024. <laughs> Acanthinus, Anthicus, Kyclodinus, Formicilla. I feel like I'm doing so much better than the other day. This is, I'm loving this. <laughs> Iscalia, Iscropalpus, Leptoremus, Natoxis, oh, a hooded ant like flower beetle. Very interesting. It's so small. <laughs> Amonatus, Retocomus, Strictocomus, Tenarthrus, Vacusus, Eraserus. Oh my gosh, these all look a little bit scary. To me, <laughs> this one? Uh, very scary. Oh my gosh, <laughs> Inovus, Macropogon, Olatobius, Deporus, Marin Marinikides, a rose weevil. This one's cute. This one's pretty. Fashion show. Temnoceros, Amphisaurus, Apatides, Dendrobiola, Dinapati, Lycanophanes, Malalgus, Polycalon, mm. <laughs> Soa. This is also very like Xenon, if anybody's watched that lovely um, Disney favorite. <laughs> Scobesia, Xylobiops, Deratafras, Notiodes, Stenopelmus, Brachiopestra, very small, Exapian, Oh, that one's cute. Podopian, Ropalapian, 
Acmeodera. Acmeodera. Acmeodariotes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Acmeoderopsis. Actinodes. Agrilus. Anambodera. Anthaxia. Love a green guy. I love this one. Oh boy. <gasps> Uprestis. Yes. Love. Green's my favorite color. Love this guy. Or girl, or they. Chalcophra, sculptured pine borers. Chrysobothris, Chrysophana, Dicerca. Oh, this is like all the green people, all the green beetles. Gaius Gudis. Hespero hips. Noltonia. Melanophila. Manularia. Poa kilonoda. Polycesta. Praesinalia. Bereo Bothris. Lime green. Love it. Trachy Kelly. <laughs> Kelly Clarkson. <laughs> I don't know. Xenomelanophila. Amphicurta. Leon. <laughs> Zeracia. Looks fuzzy. Cantharis, Caliognathus, Cultilunguus, Curtomopetera, Pacificanthia, Podobrus, Agonum, Acophorus, Amara of oh, sun beetles, have seen those. Amblycala, Ancominus, Anisodactylus, Apristus, Axinopalpus, Bambidian, Brachinus, Bombardier, Beetles, Bradycellus, Calathus, Calidia, Calosoma, a caterpillar hunter beetles. Oh no, the poor caterpillars. That's okay. <laughs> Carabus, <laughs> a worm and slug hunters. Oh wow, we're really getting into the warrior beetles now. <laughs> Clanius, a vivid metallic ground beetle. Kisin, Cicindella, a common tiger beetle. Clinidium. Coleurius, long necked ground beetle. Oh, yes, very long necked. Giraffe. It's giving giraffe beetle. <laughs> Jundlandia. Parvindella. Dicarotricus, Dicarius, Diplus, oh, this is the DJ beetle, Diplo, oh. Diplo beetle, <laughs> Discoderas, <laughs> yes, Dromius, Dis Discherius, Elaphropus, Elaphrus, a marsh ground beetle. Ooh, this one's cool. Ellipso Ellipsoptera, elliptical winged tiger beetle. Unoda, Gallerida, false bombardier beetle. <laughs> false. <laughs> 
Harpalus, Lacnophorus, Lemostenus, Lebia, a colorful foliage ground beetle. Ooh, blue, very nice. Love your colors. Lastus, Loricera, Metrius, Myoptacus, Nebria, a gazelle beetle. Notiobia, Notiophilus, Omaglimius, Omophron, a round sand beetle, Omus, a night stalking tiger beetle, Om Opistheus, Paradromius, Platinus, Poselus, Promacognathus, Pseudo Pseudaptinus, Cydrus, Pterostychus, a black clock ground beetle, Radine. Scaphinotus, snail eating beetle. Scarides, yes, very scary. <laughs> Stenolophus, a seed corn beetle. Stenomorphus. Tanistoma. Tetraica, a metallic tiger beetle. Tetraconodaris, Thalassotrechus, Trechus, <laughs> Zuphiotes, Mictorus. The end. That's the end of my segment. I, I breezed through a bunch of beetles. That's amazing. <laughs> Uh, that's awesome. And I hope you enjoy the uh, rest of the show. Happy California Biodiversity Day. Thank you. Alex, you know what I love yeah. is when they have like a really specific common names, like you know they were struggling. Yeah. They're like, so, so it's the tiger beetle. No, no, it's, it's the one with actually the spotted wings. No, no, the elliptical shaped <laughs> spotted wing tiger beetles. That's specifically the group I'm talking about. Okay, that's helpful. The colorful spotted wings, elliptical shaped wing tiger beetle. Yeah. I love it because I make up that backstory. Yeah. Really yeah. <laughs> well, thank you so much thank for joining you. us. We are making actually phenomenal time. We have read a little over 1200 genera so far. Um, and we're just going to keep going because the I just said the party don't start till I open this, so the party don't stop until we read all 7,265 genera in California. Um, it's my kind of take on the Kesha lyric. Um, great. So what I'm going to do right now is I was going to read a couple of these bats upside down, and then I realized that like our cameras actually don't go upside down, and so I'm reading bats right side up. But no, if I had my druthers, I would be fully upside down right now. So let's go through the bats. Um, let's see, we've got the bonneted bats, Umops, it's a beautiful mammal, um, Nictinomops, Tadarida, Tadarida, Macrotus, Lazyurus, the hairy tailed bats, that is so cute, <laughs> Anthrozoos, Corinorhinus, the American big eared bats. Uh, Eptesicus, Eptesicus, the house bats. Euderma. Lysio nicterus. Myotis, the mouse eared bats. Parastrellus. And I believe we're out of bats now. That was that was all. You got that was all the bats. Okay, so my druthers, I'm turning right side up again. We're getting through um, some more insects because there are truly so many. These are the uh, bunch of hemipterans, which are the true bugs. Uh, occasionally, if you're with like a science nerd like myself or Aria, you'll be like, oh, cool, look at that bug. And they'll be like, actually, and they will be right, but it will be annoying. Um, 
So the only things scientifically you're supposed to call bugs are the bugs or the insects in the order Hemiptera, which are the true bugs, which is what we'll be going through now. Bugs. Um, so Mega Melanus. Nothodelphax. Pisanotis. Stobera. Apache, the Durbid plant hoppers. Aeonidiella. Aspidiotis. Chianapsis. Oh, so this looks like um, it, those are probably those woolly secretions on the plant are probably made by the bug. Yes, that's not the bug. No, yeah. So this is a, still a bug. It's just evidence of a bug. Um, Chrysomphalus. Diaspidiotis. Diaspis. Lepidosaphes. Quernaspis. Hello, Kermes. Kermes. <laughs> oh, I'm so glad I got to do my terrible Miss Piggy impersonation. I was worried I wasn't going to get to show that off. <laughs> I'm trying. Um, Kermes. <laughs> Ticardiella. Largus. Declidophlebia. Euphilura. Livia, Neophylura, Silopsis, Arocatus, Bellonochilus, Cladoceris, Ligaeus, Melacorephus, Melanopleurus, Neacorephus, Nicias, the false chinch bugs, Acrimnus, Oncopeltus. Oh, that looks like um, I think it may have been a I'm not sure. Aegonoskeletus, Amorocros, Amorocros, Anthemia, Banasa. It's a very pretty. Rochimena, the rough stink bugs. The the Penten, the Pentatomidae, the, the, the stink bugs, because they have the five points on their body. Like it's like, shaped like a five, like a shield almost, yeah. Chinavia. Chlorocroa, yeah, here you can see that like shield shape really clearly. Cosmopepla. That one looks like it has like little glasses on it. <laughs> Kyptocephala. Dendrochorus. Euskistus, the brown stink bugs. Holocostethus. Mesidia. Neotiglossa. Pelea. Perillus. Podesis. That looks like the, the nymph form of the insect. Cryonosoma. Proxis, Thyanta, Tylospilus, Zychrona, Phoenicococcus, Phyloxera. Oh, I don't know that one. What's a what's Phyloxera? I don't know. We don't have an image. <laughs> Aelothrips. Oh, so here we're in the uh, the thrips, which are a type of insect. It's fun because it's confusing because the singular form of thrips is thrips, but the plural is also thrips. So I'm so excited to be talking about the thrips. Uh, Erythrothrips. Franklinothrips. Orothrips. Rapidothrips. Heterothrips. Gynaicothrips, Clambothrips, Leothrips, oh, <laughs> Macrophthalmothrips. Oh, I actually, no sweat. Literally no sweat. <laughs> Neurothrips, Calliothrips, Echinothrips, Franklinella. Heliothrips, 
Parasinothrips, Neo High Datothrips, Parthenothrips, Scolothrips, Lithosiopsis. Oh, we're out of thrips. Can I tell a fun thrip story? When I was in undergrad, I had to make a bug collection or an insect collection, rather, for um, a class. And then you had to get like certain types of insects. And I was like, I need one more type. And then just like happened to be like a thrip like in the box where I was keeping the collection. So I was like, this thrips saved my grade. Thank you, thrips. I owe everything to you. Um, OK, we can go on. <laughs> uh, Polypsocus. Mauripsocus, Valenzuela, Teleopsocus, Ectopsocus, Cuneopalpus, Ellipsocus, Propsocus, Lacasilla, Teroxanium. Liposcelis. Oh, the Socodia. So these are like lice and yeah, lots of parasitic. Yeah, we'll, we'll see. Um, Mesosocus. Pediculus. The ridiculous pediculus. Um, Peripsocus. Columbicola. Lipurus. It's just a little speck of life. <laughs> So beautiful. Um, Samon Dysonia, Philotarsis, Amphigerontia, Ceratipsocus, Hylopsocus, Hyalopsocus, Indiopsocus, Loencia, uh, Thurius, the pubic lice. Uh, Trichopsocus, Cerobasis, Lepinotus, Tenocephalides, Pulex, Heteroplectron, Hydropsyche, Smicridia, Agralia, Mystocytes, Dicosmoecus, October Caddisflies, Halisochila, Hesperophylax, Limnephilus, Anocosmoecus. Ano, you ever see so many vowels in your brain actually can't function? Psychoglypha, snow sedges. Nemamia, Neurophilus, Ephria, Neophylax, the autumn mottled sedges, Tricholepidion, Alacrotelsa, Tenolepisma, oh, Lepisma, uh, all too familiar. Lepisma, Leucolepisma, Mirolepisma, Thermobia, Pseudoceramili, Parabasilis, the short form walking sticks, ah, phasmids, Timema, Eucapnopsis, um, Mesocapnia, Sierra Capnia, Calinuria, Clasenia, Hesperoperla, Pteronarchus, the giant stoneflies, and salmon flies. Coltrichia, oh, we're in fungi now. Fomitiporia, let's speed around these. Hydnoporia, Hymenocate, Inocutus, Inonotus, Ania, Felinus, Pseudoinonotus, Trichaptum, Alloclavaria, Contumyces, Cotylidia, Xylodon, Hysterangium, Trapia, Clathrus, the stinkhorns, oh, fun. Lysurus, mutinous, that's devil's dipstick. Phallus, pseudodocolus, hapalopilus, etherodon, lentilus, woodcaps and sawgills, postia, irpex, amylocystis, antrodia, calisiposita, uh, climacocystis, daedella, fomatopsis, fuscopostia, ischnoderma, Letoporus, Lentoporia, Astenia, Astena, Phaleolus, Hycnoporellus, Rhodophomes, Ganodermia, Crystallicutus, Meripilus, Abortiporus, 
Fenero Chait, Jerkandera, Agarita, Glorioporus, Junghunhunya, <laughs> Myo Mycoasia, Libia, Pyrex, Sarcodontia, Stecarinum, Bisomerulius, Seraporia, Flebiopsis, Colactus, or, oh, we're at uh, Etiron, Heptium, Plumatila, Amplaria, Glomeroides, we're at Millipedes now, Brachiaulus, Californulus, Pheromopus, Balmanulus, Brachycybe, Gosodesmus, Icecnocybe, Mitocybe, Harpon, Harpogonopus, Near Arctodesmus, Polydesmus, Skytonotus, Harpapi, Parsipromus, Selenoshear, Sigmoshear, Tidesmus, Octoglina, Delozonium, Bdel, Bdelozonium, the bee is there. Buzonium, Stenozonium, Onychelus, Hiltonius, Tylobolus. Did, did I get through it? <laughs> Phenomenal. Okay, this is great because we have our next guest like rearing to go. Um, we are going to hear from uh, our next guest, Elora. Um, you can sit down, oh, unless, you're, never mind, it's all good. We have the camera set on the chair. Um, and I'll give you the cue once we are all set to go. Hi, everyone. I'm a postdoc researcher here at Cal Academy. Grew up in California, have lived here most of my life, and I love it. Let's get started. Ooh, so this is a sea anemone called Orticina, maybe. And this one is Aptasiogeton, Exaptasia. This one I actually know quite well. Um, it's a model organism that we often use to study coral uh, development and other things like that. It can also be pretty pestly. Um, Amphianthus, Flosmeris, Diadumina, Scalanthus. Cactosoma, Holcampa, Heronactus, Zaludus, Metridium, Plumos anemones, uh, which you can see if you go diving in Monterey. They're really lovely. You can see a giant, like this size, Metridium uh, fields uh, out in breakwater in Monterey. Uh, Silista. Barrow or the cigar comb jellies. Hormifera. Pleurobranchia or the sea gooseberry. Great name. Bolinopsis. Leucothea. Arbacea. Mesocentrotus, a lovely sea urchin. Lidocinus. Centrostephanus, Dendraster, Versus, while we're in a lot of the kind of germs, Lavinia, Bryzaster, Leptosynapta, Cucumaria, Lysothuria, Pisolus, Eupentacta, Pachyphion, Caudina, Paracaudina, Apostichopus. These have all been a lot of, oh, well, I was going to say these have been a lot of sea cucumbers, but now we're at a brittle star. Uh, Amphiodia, Amphipholus, Amphiura, Ophioplicus. Ophiactus, Ophionaris, 
Ophiopholis. Ophiopsilla. Ophiotrix. Ophioderma. Ophiopteris. You know, I did not know we had this many brittle stars in California. So They're pretty cool. Ophira. Clethrina, or the net sponges. Ernsta. Lucilla. Lucandra. Leucosolemia. Dragmacidon. Allospongus. Siamon. Endecteon. Uripon. Trichentrion. Halicnemia. Cliona. Spheosphungia. Aplicilia. Dissidia. <laughs> <laughs> These are hard. You know, I've never named a species, but I feel like if I were to, I, I actually don't think I plan on ever naming a species, but I would give it an easy pronunciation name. Make it easy on the people yeah. who do these in the future. Yeah, which like, I say that as a person who I know people have a hard time with my name. And so I'm like, oh, this is now very silly. Let's, let's just keep going. Dissidia, Haliclona. Amphimedon, Neopetrosia, Hamacantha, Acarnus, Iophon, Guitara, Acanthancura, Forbus, that's a good name, Isodicta, Antho, Clathria, my kale, polymastia, scopolina, halichondria, hymeniacidon, galaxia, tethia, or the puffball sponge. I wish we had a photo of that. Tethitimia, stiletta, geodia. Alocroia, Oscarella, Autostephanos, Philodina, oh, Rotiferans, Rotaria, Colothica, Floscularia. Sinantharenia, Brachionis, Nathoka, Plationis, Platius, Decranophoroides, Lacane, Colorella, Lepidella, Squatinella, Mytilina, Biopsis, Codium, Derbesia, Catomorpha, I think we're in the algaes now, Cladophora, Valonia, Trentifolia, Acrosophonia. You know, it actually gets harder the more of these that you read, not easier. I feel like my eyes are just kind of crossing at all of the letters. <laughs> Spongomorpha. Eurospora. Acrocanium. Cumagloia. Nemalion. Cyneia. Halosachion, Palmaria, Plucanium, Champia. You know, this is definitely making me want to learn my algaes, though, because I feel like, you know, I go out tide pulling and like see all these things, and my eyes kind of like don't even 
process how different they are from each other. Yeah, but now I'm like, oh, I should actually start to learn some algae. They're pretty cool. Yeah, there's some really gorgeous ones. Yeah. All right, Neo, this was really just me stalling on this one. <laughs> um, Neo gastrocolonium. Glioclatia. Lomentaria. Botrioclatia. Maripelta. Rhodimenia. And that's. That's your list. Cool. Well, I got through my list. Good luck to everyone else. There's a lot more to get through. Have a great biodiversity day. Thank you so much, Alora, for getting through all of those. And you're right. It does get a lot harder the longer you do. I think you get used to it. Um, you know, it gets worse. Your brain stops being functional. Um, with that being said, let's jump into a few more. We have a lot to go. Um, we've got some gas to get through. Okay. So this is Bostri Capulus. Crepidula, the typical slipper snails. I love slipper snails. Crepipatula, the half slipper snails, which kind of feels like offensive. Um, crucibulum, the cup and saucer limit, limpets, to be the half of anything. You know, you're whole. You are whole. You are enough. Um, Carinaria. Trionia. Fusid Triton. Neobernia. Oh, gorgeous. Those are cowries. Amazing. Archi Arado. I know the suffix Arado. Hesper errato because it comes up a lot like this. Are, the, are these, I don't know, is this apple seed errato? Arya, do you know what errato means? <laughs> I do not. Cool. Melanella, again, internal rhyme scheme. A vitriolina, hyponyx, pyrubulopsis, fluminicola, lacuna, litorina. Sinum, Glossaulax, Neverita, the moon snails. That's huge. Wow. Simnia, Albania, Tynostoma, Pseudopusula, Pusula, Hynotus, Lamellaria. Lamellaria, Limneria, Marcenina, Velutina, Petaloconcus, Thylacodes, Vitrinella, Anguina. Ooh, these are nematodes. Okay, I know very little about nematodes. Let's go. Uh, Cinepanguina. Um, Ascaris, the large round worms. Bailey Sascaris, Ascaridia. Canor Habditus, Gordius. Argo Nemertes, Amphiporus, the rocky shore proboscis worms. Neponemertes, Neponemertes. Emplectonema, Paranemertes, Prosadenoporus, Tubulanus, Cerebratulus, the sandy shore proboscis worms, Linnaeus, Macrura, Basiodiscus, Foronus, Foronopsis, um, Neascus, Platy Helminthes, these are flatworms now. Ribeiroia, Caburachia, Praestesarius, Aplaplana, 
Hop lap lana. Um, Echiridium, Enchiridium, Prostheostomum, Pseudoceros, Stylocus, Vorticeros, Mesostoma, Girardia, Dolicoplana, Hylocellus, Urilepta, that one has a beautiful pattern, Nodocomplana, Coltrichia, oh, we're in fungi now, Coltrichia, Fornitopora, I, we may have done these already, these are, these are my fungi from last time, but it's all good, let's show some fungi some love, um, but it's actually perfect timing because I believe we have our next guest, not only guest, but actually third host ready to ready to show us how it's done. Um, we will be hearing from the one, the only, Sadie Samuels, give it up everybody. Hello, hi everybody. I am your third host. And I cannot believe we have been doing this for three hours. It's been going by very quickly and it's been an absolute delight. Um, I am going to kick us off with a segment. So what do we got for me? Akinthinucella, starting off really strong, great. Babylomurex, Boreotrophon, Ceratostoma, Ferraria, that's a cute shell. Maxwellia, I like the stripes on that one. Mexicanthia, Musella, Ocinebrellis, Passiocinebrina, Teropurpura, Roparia, Stramonida, <laughs> Confidence, <laughs> Ursula Pinks. I feel like when I go to the beach, I do not see this many kinds of shells, <laughs> but I love it. Uh, Calulus, Chamarionta, mm -hmm. Aramarinota. Oh, Arya's having a reaction to this one for all of the folks that can't see her face right now. Shoulder band snails are a favorite on our team. Um, the Helminthoglypta. Micra Renata. <laughs> Monandania. Sideband snails. Noyo. Rothelix. Sonorelix, lots of no image found snails, but it's a great illustration. They're mysterious. Very mysterious. Zerarionta. <laughs> Onchidella. Homolopoma. Leotia. Margarites or globe snails. Oh, this is a pretty one. I like the pattern. Eulithidium, Parviturbo, Norissia. I can't quite tell what's the snail in this picture, but it looks like the red, the red part is very cool. Tegula, also a very cool looking one. Halostylus, Megastraea, very cool. Palma Ulax. That's a great spiral. And that's it. Those are my snails. Kicking it off. We have gone through a lot. Uh, almost 1,700, it looks like, maybe. Yeah, we have a lot more to go to get to that over 7,000 mark, but we are just tearing through them, which is awesome. Um, I will say that snails have a special place in my heart because my sister always loved them growing up. Like we we had snails um, in our house as like pets that she found in the yard and it was delightful. Not necessarily these sea snails, 
more like garden snails, but still love for all snails. We are extremely ahead of schedule, <laughs> which is awesome. Um, do we have some beetles that we can chip away at or other? Oh, moths. Let's dive into moths. <laughs> got a real system back here. So shortly we're going to be reading some more moths. I love that everybody has been reading them with such confidence that we are going through them so fast. Um, I wish I had more commentary for all of the cool snails that we just saw. But one of the really interesting things about working on this project is how many creatures and plants that I have seen in this list that I never knew lived in the state of California. Um, I've lived here most of my life and my family was always out in nature and like learning about our local flora and fauna. And um, there are things here that I have never seen, like didn't know existed and certainly didn't know existed in this state. Um, so that's been really delightful. And I hope that you will all also meet new friends in this list. All right, ready? We're gonna get into some moths. So we're starting with Vela. I love the reference, the uh, size reference on that one. Uh, uh, <laughs> not moths. Still looking for the list here. Okay. We're gonna do sharks instead, which I'm also extremely into. So let's start with Cetorhinus. Carcarodon? Isurus or Mako sharks? Lamna? Hippanus? Taroplady trigon? Love that. Gymnura or butterfly rays? Ooh, I want to see an image of that. I imagine that what's in my head is probably not quite accurate, but they're probably lovely. Mobula or devil rays. That sounds like pretty aesthetically different from the butterfly, <laughs> butterfly rays. Myliobatis, common eagle rays. Eurolophus. Baron Grazia. Platy rhinoidus. Pseudobatos. Zapteryx. Isitisis or cookie cutter sharks. Echinorhinus. Somniosis. Zemius. Squalus or spur dogs. I have never heard of that, but it's a fun word. Squantia or angel sharks. Tetranarse. Hydrolagus. I think that's the end of the cartilaginous fishes that live in or in the waters around California. And now we have the moths, which I am excited about. I love moths. This is another thing that like, I know that there are a lot of moths that live in the state of California, but I feel like I only see the same like three little brown moths that look very similar to each other um, in my house or my yard. And it's really cool to get to see the broader variety that we have. Thank you. 
All right, here we go. Moss. Pano, Panorpodes. Cordialis. Flying, flying insects. Um, <laughs> dis, Dismycohermes. Neohermes. Orohermes. Protochalu. Dis kind of lost that one. Somebody who was coming out of their segment said that it gets harder the longer that you go because your brain just kind of stops understanding um, the syllables and I'm, I'm seeing what they mean. I think I can relate. Um, <laughs> Cialis, uh, Polarctic alderflies. Yule, hmm. you'll load these. <laughs> Lolomamia or near Arctic bearded lace wings. That's a wild shape. Uh, Chryspora stink lace wings. Chrysoperla common green lace wings. I think I have seen these, and for whatever reason, they kind of creep me out in real life. Um, I love most bugs. I don't know when one of these is like near me. It's a little, a little sketchy. Aramochirza shadow lace wings. Leucochrysa. Nothochrysa. I like the colors on that one. Pseudomalata. Conwentia. Neoconus, Hemerobius, Megalomus. Oh, that's a cool looking thing. It's kind of a wild shape. I like it. Micromus, Symphirobius, Olicaries, uh, Platystochotes. That's probably not right. Um, <laughs> Polystochotes. <sighs> Clemaciella or wasp mantid flies. I didn't know that this was a creature that existed until looking through the list for this live stream. And I have to say that it's, I'm going to have nightmares, I think. It's like the scariest parts of several insects. I just, I don't understand it. But now we know it's a thing. Boss mantid flies. Uh, Dichromantispa. Leptomantispa. Plaga. Brachymenurus. Uh, Chedoleon. Clathronaria. <laughs> Dendroleon. Euptilon, Glenaris, or picture winged ant lions. That also sounds really cool, and I wish there was an image. Go Google that. It's probably neat. Menachelion, Mexilion, Mimerel, My, My, Mermelion. <laughs> That one was tricky for me. <laughs> Parathaclysis. I love that this one's just like a little like pyramid. Um Enchenopa. Purin Leon. Scotoleon. Tytholion. And back to Bella. I think that's where we started. Great. So those are some very interesting bugs, most of which I have never seen. Um, but it's, all, it's just been so cool to see the variety of, of what lives here. Up next, I am going to hand it over to our colleague, Melissa. And so go ahead. Go ahead and take it away.
Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Melissa Felder. I'm the Chief Experience Officer. Wing, get it? Moth's wing threw on a little bit of, uh, you know, image uh, costume um, to have some fun. Okay, so let's start. Um, a callus. A Troia. Acrobasis. Acrono. Acroncosa. A comment here, a lot of these sound like Pokemon creatures. I don't know if anybody else knows this. <laughs> um, Aglosa, uh, Tappy Moth, Alphesi, Alphias, Alphioides, Ambasa, Ambisa, Amylosis, Anadolosemia, and cyclosis, anemocella, arta, barbiera, no pink, hagiotherapia, <laughs> cataspia, conocroa, dasi. Pyga, Dior, Dior, Tria, uh, the conifer coneworm moth. I like the colors on that. Ectomyelosis, Elasmopalopus, Ethestia, a flower moth. Mmm, yummy. Epistodes, Uzofera, Homeosoma, Honorara, Hypsopygia, Hayra, Latilia, Scale Eating Moss, mm. Lipographus. Macrorhinia, Martia, Mylopsis, Phobus, Bicytotus, Puma, Protasia, Pyrolus, a meal moth, another yummy one. Rostrolatilia, Selbriacus, Sarata, Satoli, Sayota, Sosipatra, Tacoma, <laughs> Tabula, but not that one. Telethusia, Turipalmus, Vitula, Zophodia. Oh, look how it matches its background. Morosia, Sychomatstack, Grillus. Oh, like a cricket. I thought I was just doing moths. Myogrillus. Surprise. I crossed the line into a whole other genre. I have to change my clothes. <laughs> my outfit. Did I say this one? Yeah, my own girls. Uh, Ocanthus, common tree cricket. Cyclotillum, common scaly cricket. I want a picture of that. Hyplospirum. Uh, near me, copolis. 
Acuthophilus. Grammar, grammar wrote tetic, tetics. Macro bayonetus. Pristocuthophilus. Rachonemus. Tropidistia. That is funky looking. Oh, no wonder. <laughs> it's a dragon loopers, but Draco Tetra Tetex. That's funny how we get excited about something. Spania Chris. Spanish Desert Grasshopper. Spanistic Desert Grasshopper. Uh, Titty Hotile. Furnace Heat Hoover. <laughs> That's funny. Amopelmatus, a North American Jerusalem cricket. Wait, am I going to have to see cockroaches? <laughs> Is that like where we're headed? Mohavacris. Tanoceras. Paratetics. Acro. Rectus. Aglathorax. Aglathorax. Arethea. Thread legged cadid. Atilopolis. Brachianisara. Capnobotus. Clinopleura. Conocephalus, lesser meadow Katie did. I kind of like the green ones the best. Are we supposed to, we're probably not supposed to have favorites though. You can have favorites. <laughs> uh, Kyrtophilus, Philicus. Dectoxida. Aromopetus. Ideonotus. Ideostatus. Insara. Microcentrum. Angel winged kidneys. Nijuba. Neoconocephalus. Common conehead. Petropetus. Bimontus. By my notice, Plagio Stira, Plate Lira, Scuderia, Scooter's Bush Kitty, Scudder, and New Enemobius, even spurred ground cricket, Neo 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 Nemobius, no Mobius, small ground cricket. Batus, Batus, turtle Wait, and now, are we in now in plants? Oh my God, covered so much ground. <laughs> Batus, turtle weeds. And Analsonia, Arabus, oh, that's pretty. Ath Athesamus, Barbaria, a winter. Victor Crescis. Oh, like, oh. Bochera, Rock Crescis. Cardamine, um, Bitter Crescis, and Toothwort. So I guess that's in two families? What is that? Maybe. Cruchimalea. Cusicchiella. Descurania, uh, tan sea. Well, <laughs> when the description is harder to read, the common description is harder to read than the actual <laughs> scientific description. I'm just going to say it's in the mustards family. Making a guess. Dithyria. Drava. Anything but drab. Urisimum. 
wallflowers. Calimolobos. Hesperidontum. Wax fruit mustard. Oops, don't mustards. Mustards can be purple. Cornuglia. Gia. Idahoa. Malcomia. Nesturium. I've actually heard of this one. What is, I didn't know it was a watercress. Interesting. No kea. Pony callus. Physaria. That's a bladder pod. Planonidi. Planodes. Polycetinium. Roripa, uh, yellow crust, presses. Sabara. It's like, it's not like an eye test, but it feels like <laughs> Smellowskia. Stanalia, Stanalia, princess plumes. Strepanthus, a jewel flower. Alipodium. Bisonocarpus, a fringe pod. Tomostema. Tropidocarpum. Charitius. Tomster. Eusemitiaea. I bet I can guess where we can find that. Cle Cleomella, stinky. Polynesia. Uh, that's a clammy weed? Kiberlinia. Fle Flurkia. False mermaid reads. Lemon piece. Uh, metal foams. That's pretty. Oligomeris. Sesuvium. That's uh, a C. Flurs. That's another one where common names. Pass. Pass. Um, <laughs> Trianthema. <laughs> Alan Rolfia. Amaranthus. Amaranthus. Afanisma. Arthroceros. Lutum. Dysphania. Extriplex, extriplex, Graia, Aracene, Blood Leaves, Crachin, mm. okay, Crachinini, Covia, Winter Fats, let's go by Winter Fats, Neococia, Nitrophilia, Phila. Oxybasis, <laughs> Sally uh, Cornea, pickle weeds. I know what those are. But they're a lot prettier in these pictures than by where I live. Yeah. Tide Stromia. Ta da! Passing it off. Yep. You did it. You did it. Awesome. Yeah. That was Thanks fun. Why have I never done that before? <laughs> it's new for all of us. Yeah. I have to say, passing it on the hard ones is an innovation I had not considered. So <laughs> thank you for um, <laughs> I won't tell anyone introducing else. that. Yeah, no. Not not something we're necessarily gonna accept, but I, I like the I like the idea. our next presenter. Go ahead and take it away. Hello, I'm Sue Pemberton. I am our Marine Mammal Stranding Coordinator here at the Academy of Sciences. Um, we are part of the Marine Mammal Stranding Network here in California, so we respond to dead marine mammals uh, over about 400 miles of coastline. 
Um, and I'm here to make a complete fool of myself and talk a little bit about uh, the animals that I love, the pinnipeds of the Bay Area. And I'm probably going to utilize pass. Artemia, brine shrimp, Brankinecta, an underwater thingy. You you bran you more underwater thingies. Linderell Linderella. Streptocephalus. That was easy. A ram's horn fairy shrimp. Thamnocephalus. Oh, picropleuroxis. <laughs> Thoroxis, Sizicus, Daphnia, Water Fleas, Cynocephalus, Lepidurus, Triops, that was easy, Anthrinus, Carpet Beetles, Added, added Genus, I think I see those in my yard. Cryptoropalum. Orphalus. Predonoma. Fredonoma. Risa. Trogoderma. These are cute. I love I love, well, we have our own species. I don't know the, the subspecies, but we do have dermestids here in our beetle colony. Trogoderma. Hypococcus. Neopacalopus. Oh, that was a good one. Spalodiscus. Hybosaurus. Pachyplectrus. That's another good one. Hydrena. Amator. Anacana. Barosis, Circeon, Anocris, I love beetles, Helicaris, Hydrobias, or Hydrobius, we'll give you two options, Hydrochara, or Hydrochara, Hydrophilus, Hydrophilus, a uh, giant water scavenger beetles. Lacobius. Spheridium. Atropisternus. That was pretty. Alaniscus. Ancinus. Mesanthra. I, Idarturus, Cubaris, the reclined pillwood lice, Venezillo, Venezillo pillwood lice. I thought they were just roly polies. Uh, Sacidotia, American water slaters, not to be confused with Kelly Slater, the surfer. Calicellus, Argea, Philodorus, Phil Philodorus, Cyrillana, Eurydice, I fix Exerilana, Metacyrillana. Simothoa, uh, the tongue lice. I don't even want to know if there's lice on my tongue. Althusa. Armadilloniscus. Well, there's a name. The Drift Clingers. That sounds like a movie or a rock band. <laughs> Detanella. Litorophiloscia. 
uh, Colladodier? I say with trepidation. I dotier. Pentadotier. Stenosoma. Synodotier. Those hands have been in some water. Ias. Ger Geropsis, a typical stub witchers. Ligia or Ligia uh, sea slaters. Ligidium, rock slaters. Limnoria, the gribbles. Paranthera. Di dinoides. Dinoides. Ex exos exospheroma. Ginorm gy wait. <laughs> My brain's not working. Norimosferoma. Paracerces. Brachinrigia. Mictoniscus, Tylos, uh, Callus beach pill bugs, Archaeomyces, Deltamyces, Hemisquilla, Ler Lerneodiscus. All right, we're reaching my jam here, so I have to. Arctocephalus. So we have a local, uh, a local species, Arctocephalus townsendi, which is a Guadalupe fur seal that we see here most of the year from March uh, through the rest of the year. Calorinus. This is, uh, we also have this. This is a northern fur seal. This is the only one, um, there's only one uh, species in this genus, and we have them right here living in offshore islands on the Farallons and um, on your Nuevo Island. Zolophus, um, we have Zolophus californianus, California sea lion. Uh, you'll see these guys out at Pier 39. Uh, they're very comical and gregarious and uh, very numerous here in California. Moranga and Gustarostris, the, uh, the elephant seals. There are two species in this genus. One of them is here, uh, the Moranga and Gustarostris that you'll see at Año Nuevo or Point Reyes. They're the second largest seal in the world. The largest is the Moranga leonina, which is the southern elephant seal, but this is the northern elephant seal. Foca uh, is a very large genus. Uh, locally, we have the Foca vitulina, uh, the, the um, Pacific Harbor seal. These guys are found all around the northern hemisphere. Locally, you can see them uh, on offshore rocks and in San Francisco Bay. Um, and they have spotted coats like that that can be white with dark spots or dark with light spots. And their babies can swim from birth. Basariscus, ringtails, aplodontia, castor, beavers, I love beavers, Arborim, arborimus, tree voles, macrotus, meadow voles, clethrionomus, we'll leave it at that. Neotoma, wood rats, I've got plenty of those around my house. Onditra, the common muskrats. Onchicomis, grasshopper mice, they sound adorable. Uh, Paramiscus, uh, North American deer mice, that one looks sad. Oh, Rethrodontimus. American harvest mice. Zappus. Erythizon. 
Tomomis, Tomomis, Western Pocket Gophers. Caetopidus, uh, Caetodipus. There we go. Caeto, okay, yeah, pass. <laughs> Tipidomus, kangaroo rats. Microdipidops, uh, kangaroo mice. Paragnathus, Amospermophilus, uh, antelope squirrels. I've never even heard of them. That's wild. Callispermophilus, a mountain striped ground squirrel who's enjoying a beef stick. <laughs> Not sure that's the best thing for it to eat. Uh, Glacomus, uh, a new world flying squirrels. Marmota, marmots. I would love to see one of those in the wild. Neotamius, uh, western chipmunks. Autospermophilus, the North American rock squirrels. Scurious, 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 tree squirrels. He's running. Tamius, scurious, scurious, uh, pine squirrels. Eurocytelus, Eurocytelus, long tailed ground squirrels. Xerospermophilus, the pygmy ground squirrels. Nodiosaurex, the gray shrews. Sorex, long tailed shrews. How cute is that? Neurotrichus. Scapinus, a western moles. I do see a lot of those at my house. Eptatritus. And we forgot one pinniped, uh, the Eumatopius, the genus Eumatopius. Locally, we have uh, Eumatopius jubatus. It's the largest sea lion in the world, the stellar sea lion. Uh, those can be seen offshore uh, on rocks uh, all along California or the western coast. But locally, you can see them if you're lucky enough to be on a whale watching trip. Um, out to the Farallon Islands. There you can see them from the boat. They're very large, 2,000 pound males. And now I will pass the tomfooleries on to the next victim slash scientist. Awesome, thank you so much, Sue. That was great. And I love the hat, <laughs> wonderful. Um, all right, coming up next, we're gonna have Paul. Um, but before I jump into that, if you are just joining us, we are reading every the name of every California plant, animal, fungi, and algae, um, or at least as many as have been observed in the lifetime of the iNaturalist platform. Um, and we have just been churning through them. It's been a lot of fun. I am going to hand it over to Paul. And Paul, I'm really excited about your segment oh. <laughs> because we're going to have you read normally for a little while to get you kind of warmed up and then we have a challenge uh i'm going to be reading some scientific names for you and i want you to guess the common names oh this is gonna be great I'm so excited. hopefully you've been watching the stream or pay attention to the common names um in your section um to give you an idea of what might be coming up um but this we is terrifying will... <laughs> It's going to be great. You're going to do fine. I'm Fantastic. sure. This is good. Um, so we're going to get you started with um, just some regular casual reading. Ah, casual reading. And then I'll let reading. you know when we're switching over to is it casual reading. The, like this? the challenge. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Good. That seems good. Good. I'm jealous, by the way. I was unaware that we could bring the seal hats. So I just have Pinky, my plastic flamingo friend. Ah, Tamaris, the octopus spiders, terrifying combination of two animals. Uh, Calligrapha, the Scribner beetles, all ad libs guaranteed to be wrong, by the way. Close your eyes, Paul. <laughs> 
<laughs> One second, we need to do some quick rearranging. It's killing me. What are you doing? <laughs> Already, you can open your eyes again. <gasps> Salon! <laughs> I can't see an image, but I bet it's beautiful. Uh, Mycoceros. Akalima. Acanthos gelidis, the long named moth, Chrysomela, Algarobius, Altica, flea beetles, they play bass, Ambulaceris, uh, Androliparis, fish moth, Anistostina. Aula Cothorax, Baliosis, Brachycornea, or Corina, Bromius, the dude moth, a uh, beetle. Oh, these are beetles, right? I love beetles. I saw one of their early shows in Pangea 275 million years ago. Brucidius, Brucus. Cat is only found in Spain. Calosabrucus. Wow, look at that. Caridatella. Kelimorpha. Chrysocus. Colispidia. Coliorosina. That sounds like a disease. Coleothorpa, that sounds like a body disease. Cosinoptera. Crepidodera, the studded flea beetles. Crayoceris, the pleather flea beetles. Cryptocephalus, mysterious head beetle. Diabertica. Diacus. That's beautiful. Diarabda, salt cedar beetles. Disonica, Epidrix. Sounds like a superhero. Galaruca, Galarucella, the fancy Galaruca. Gastrophiza. Gibberbrucus, <clears throat> Glyptoscalus, Gratiana, the very thankful beetle, Hemiglyptus, Lemma, Megaceros, the large horned brucids, but they're so small, Microropala. The tiny nosed beetles, maybe? Microthica. Why did you get a picture of those two like that? Neltunius. Ophraella. Hackybrachus. Scriptured leaf beetles. That's awesome. Paria. Paropsis. Penthobrucus, a lot of brucuses. Phylobrotica, <laughs> Phylotreta, Plagiotera, take its name from another beetle without crediting it. <laughs> Ampliolupurus, Saxonus, Skeloliparus, Stator, Stator. Stenopodius, Cystina, Timarca, Triarius, Trirabda, 
sure. Zego Grandma. Oh, they blend in really well. Look at that. Lipidopa. That one's flying. <laughs> Whee! Alpheopsis. That's not a beetle. Alpheus. <laughs> Bateus. Synalpheus. Also a flying shrimp beetle. I love that. Syncaris. I think I saw that running on a treadmill in a video once. Blepheoropoda. Yeah. Vladimira. Neotrapaea. Globocarcinus. Metacarcinus. Romeolon. Krangon. Lisso Krangon. It's a very light, wispy Krangon, like a hint of sage. Yeah, exactly. Isocles. Pegaristes. Look at that. That's so cool. Moriradromia. Epioltoides. Herbstia. <laughs> Loxorhynchus. The smoked salmon crab. Pelia. Pugetia. It's found in a very small region of Italy, right along the coast. Skira. Taliopus. Pachygrapsus. Plains. I'm sure that's not right, but it sounds good. Hapalogaster. Odignathus. Emerita. It used to be a sand flea. Hippolyte, or Hippolyte. Erisorodes. Pyromea. So close. Randalia. That one looks like it has a cracked shell. What happened, buddy? Cryptolithodes. Echidnoceros. Lithodes. Paralithodes. They help the lithodes. Phyllolithodes. Lismata. Grimothia. Look at that. <laughs> Leptuka. That one is a blacksmith. Uka. Or Usa. Narrow fronted fiddler crabs. There's no wide fronted fiddler crabs. Oregonia. Hygiopagoras. The saintly flying beetles with, or crabs with no names. Orthopagoras. Pagoras. It's like that, but with worse teeth. Pimocorus. Pale Paleomon glass shrimps. Paleomonella. Panuliris. Pendulous. That one blends in nicely. Lophopanopius. What is that thing? Wow. Great color on that. Malacoplax. Rithropanopius. The tiny, tiny, tiny crab. Latulambris. Panaeus. Pilumnus, <laughs> the incredibly hairy crab. <laughs> Fabia. Opistopus. Opistopus. Pinixa. Scleroplax. 
Pecky Kellys. These really do sound like Pokemon. Someone mentioned that earlier. These all sound like Pokemon character. Petrolistes. Polyonyx. Akalos. Akalos. They're either Pokemon or Greek warriors. Kalanectes, the blue crabs. Siconia, the rock shrimps. Solanocera, the R&B shrimps. Heptocarpus. Levius. Spirantocarus. <laughs> Upogebia, the mud prawns. Hemigrapsus. Cycloxanthops. Cycloxanthops. Yeah, I said it right the first time, and now I'm ruining it. Man. Paraxentheus. And now the vast darkness of space. Yes, momentarily. But then the guessing game. <laughs> so yes. close your eyes again. Help me, Pinky. We gotta we gotta go back Help me. to the challenge. How many of these do you think you're gonna guess correctly? Zero. Yeah. I think that would be a safe bet. Mm -hmm. um, so you give me the scientific name and I guess the common name? Yes. Yes. I will give you the scientific name. You'll see the scientific name on the screen. Mm -hmm. You guess the common name and then we will reveal the correct answer. Got it. After that. Okay. Are we ready? Definitely. You're emotionally, mentally prepared? No. Okay. Well, we're diving in. Okay. <laughs> Our first one, if you were paying attention earlier, mm -hmm. uh, Tamaris is the? That is the octopus. They weren't spiders, but I think octopus spider. You So you did get at least one. Oh, wow, yes. look at that. Octopus spiders, fantastic. If I saw that thing, I would not say Tamaris. I love this image. All what? Little, like, Where lights. do they? Where do they know. live so that I can never go there? No additional information provided. Are um, they as smart as octopuses? Oh, I hope so. No, no, you don't <laughs> hope so at all. I would love that. Look at that. I love how long its forelimbs are. That's cool. All right. Next, we've got Calligrapha. Calligrapha. I made up a name for these earlier. Uh, so these are the incredibly uptight uh, wedding invitation beetles. Ooh, that's weirdly close in terms of vibe. They're the calligrapher beetles. That yeah, see? Yeah. Calligrapher beetles. Yeah. yeah. I love it. Excellent. Very precise. <laughs> Very precise. All right. Up next, hipster. I really wish this were hipster. Um, <laughs> this is the Arc de Triomphe beetle. Mm. Named for the design on yeah, its back. I can see that. But actually, no, they are. Clown that was going to be my next guess. Mm, too bad. I feel like a clown beetle now. <laughs> okay, what about hypoponera? Hypoponera. Uh, hypo meaning lacking or less than. Uh, ponera from the Spanish for putting upon. So these are the ants who are very bad at cleaning up. <laughs> These are actually or crypt ants. Crypt ants. Yeah, crypt. I was trying to find a connection there for you, and I don't think I can. Notorious do it. <laughs> crypts are for just, you know, body parts and and Decay? skeletons strewn that's everywhere. Sure. Decay? Yes, that's yeah. right. Yeah. I crypt should ants. get partial credit for knowing it's an ant. Very goth. All right. How about Eupathesia? Eupathesia. This one's named Gertrude. Gertrude, the Gertrude moths. No. No, just that moths. one. Mm, okay. Hug moth. Oh, I see it. And what about this next one? A different moth. Prodoxus. Uh, this is 
the two-faced moth because I can't tell which side is the front. Hmm, okay, I like it. Uh, these are actually the bogus yucca moths. No, that's not a thing, the bogus yucca moths? This is like one of my favorite names. I if you're think. gonna come at me with this, at least bring me the real <laughs> yucca moths and not the bogus yucca moths. I just have to imagine someone found one like in the field and was like, oh, look at that yucca moth. Hey, look that at that yucca moth. And they're like, no, nah, that's a bogus oh, yucca moth. Yeah, no, it tricked me. And then they like blamed it on the moth with its name forever. <laughs> <laughs> ah, right. echidnophagia. Yeah. What do we think echidnophagia is? Um, this is a flea that occasionally thinks it's an echidna, phage being the state so that it actually turns into an echidna. Uh, echidna was a Greek monster that did what I'm trying to remember. Uh, this is uh, a, a common flea. <laughs> Close. Oh, the stick type fleas. The stick -type fleas. Velcro fleas. I know these. <laughs> They're really hard to get off your dog. What about Sarah Digitus? Sarah Digitus. Uh, oh, yeah, this is the scorpion I never want to meet. Um, it's fair. Sarah Digitus, uh, the spiny footed scorpion. Ooh, kind of close. Saw finger scorpion. scorpion, yes, serrated. Yeah. And Digitus, I went with uh -huh. foot instead of finger because scorpions don't have fingers. They have enough things to terrify me. If they have fingers, <laughs> It's game over in favor of the scorpions. It's the opposable thumbs I think you really have to worry about. I'm yeah. Sure they're not there yet. Just give me a heads up, scorpions, if you wind up with opposable thumbs, and then you and I can come to an amicable disagreement for the rest of our lives. All right. What about lepus? Um, these are the muscles that leave you hungry because you could eat like 10,000 of these things and it's not even an amuse bouche. What are they? They look like tiny little shells. Are they shells? They, they do have shells. Lepas? Mm -hmm. um, these are micro clams. I, that sounds extremely cute. Doesn't it? These are goose barnacles. And I goose think barnacles. their resemblance is pretty clear. Yeah, I mean, I see the barnacle for sure. Goose, <laughs> oh yeah, kind of the long... Nope, don't see it. Membrane opera. Yeah. Huh. Um, that looks like snake skin to me, but okay. membrane kind of has something to do with skin, I'm guessing. Um, this is... Uh, oh, boy. This is the um, hasn't moisturized gecko. <laughs> Oh, lacy crusts. It's a lacy crust. Yes, cross. that's yeah, right. I lacy mean, crusts. This is pretty much what it says for, in the tin. Um, right on the tip of my tongue. <laughs> like, what is it even? Is it? It's a what? It's a bryozoan, a colonial animal. Yeah, okay. So the actual crust thing. is the thing itself. What's it on? I don't know what it's on, actually. Some of these images uh, don't have a lot of context. It looks like a very old but... Slim Jim. <laughs> beef stick from the tomato there. Um, <laughs> <laughs> all right, let's move on to the next one. Yes, please. I'm doing so great. <laughs> I got one, which is better. Ah, sea pork. Eat pork. Oh, sea pork, like eat pork. Something happened to these ones. They're supposed to be. So I'm just going to say it to you. Okay. Uh, pyrosoma. You don't get a picture hint for this one. Sorry. So pyrosoma. Pyrosoma. Uh, this is the fire slug. That would be a good guess. And also, I want to see a fire slug if there yeah. isn't one. Sure you do. Ah, and sea pickles. Sea pickles. Mm -hmm. Commonly known as fire slugs. Mm -hmm. Sea pickles. Uh, what do you think about, uh, yeah, what do you think about Corynactus? Corynactus? Corynactus. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, this is the Natalie dressed uh, snail. Hmm. Not even the right genre. <laughs> I mean, I can't blame you. You don't have I'm to in marketing, this one. by the way. In I'm in marketing. Don't worry. I don't actually 
interact with the animals because they wouldn't let me do that. <laughs> We're jewel anemones. Here, so yeah, jewel anemones <laughs> is the right answer. <laughs> I think we only had a couple more. Oh, thank God. Um, so the next one up is going to be uh, Arthonia. Arthonia. This is the last one, actually. So uh, make it count. Ah, these are the... Sword in the Stone Beetles. Hmm. Named no. for King Arthur. Okay, I like it, but these are just common lichens. Oh, comma lichens. I comma lichens. These are not common <laughs> lichens at all. Not at all. No, these are the many in a series lichens. Yes, essential to the grammar of life. Pinky, you weren't good luck at all. You <laughs> lied to me. I mean, you did get the one at the very beginning right that you saw 10 minutes prior. So that's Hooray. something to be proud of. <laughs> Um, Short-term memory, vaguely intact. <laughs> there were some that were remarkably close. Thank you. Um, so thank you so much, Paul, for this joining us. Great. Thank you for having this me. This was a delight. Good luck to uh, all future hosts and hostesses and host folk. Great. Thank you. Okay. So I think I'm actually up next. And we're going to do something a little fun, but I have to... Um, collect some materials. Actually, Darian, can you hand me a sketchbook? <laughs> maybe not. So I will just give you all a teaser. I think it's coming up now, but maybe it's later. Um, we're going to be doing a speed draw where I am going to attempt to draw 25 creatures, organisms, in five minutes. And I would love for you folks to play along at home. Um, so we'll have like roughly 10 to 12 seconds per, uh, per creature. There'll be reference photos for all of them. Um, so I'm going to read some moths for real this time. First, while you go and grab a piece of paper, a pen, pencil, your favorite art supplies, so that we can speed draw together in five or 10 minutes, however long it takes me to get through this list. Um, and again, it's going to be 25 creatures in five minutes is the goal. Uh, they're probably going to be terrible, but that's the point. So um, while you are gathering your supplies to join me in that endeavor, let's take a look at some moths. Uh, starting off really strong again, Atholoida, mm -hmm. Alcephyla. Anna Vitronella, Anticlea, Archieris. There's a lot of vowels in that one. I feel like the large groups of vowels are the hardest. Uh, Archiro, Fiston. And I like the pattern on that one. Cabera. Car Carapetta, Ceratodalia, Chlorocalamus. That one's really pretty. I like the green ones. Chlorosea, Cochisea, Costa Convexa, Cyclophora, the mochas. Dasypidonia. Ooh, that one's got a cool pattern. It like blends in, but then it's got that, that pop of orange. It's lovely. Dicorda. Dicordophora. Digramia. Disclisioprocta. Drepan Drepanulatrix. Distroma. Ectropis or the engrailed moths. I don't know what that word means. Encoria. Enomos. I really like the shape of that one. It's very dramatic. Entephyra. 
Antiferia? Hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, Epiro? Eparita? Aranis? Euberanesia? Eucaturva? Euclania? Eudra Panulatrix. Ulithis. Euphia. Batia. Borkhausenia. Bork, Bork, yes. <laughs> Decantha. Androsis, Fabiola, I like that one, Hoffmanophila, Pleurota, Pollux, Pyramidabella, Pseudopostega, Battis, or the pipe vine swallowtails and allies. Papilio, common swallowtails. Parnassius, Apollos. Abaeus, that one's on a very pretty flower. It's just a good photo. Anthrocaris, or orange tips, makes sense. Coleus, clouded yellows. Eucaria, Euclo, or dappled whites, Nathalis, Neophasia, Phobus, Pieris, or garden whites, Pontia, Zerine, or dog faces, California state butterfly is a dog face butterfly. Uh, Edophagia, Pliniaca, Platella, Rhygonostis, Grea, Tegaticula, Tegaticula, uh, <laughs> Apterona, Thyridopteryx. Wow, that is a wild looking just flashed by, but that was a lot. Um, Coleopota. I love, I don't, this is another one that I had never seen until I was going through this list. These like very straight wing blobs, moths. Like what do they, how do they fly? What does that look like when they're in flight? Is that just folded up? I don't know. I love them. Um, I didn't even read it. Adiana, I think. <laughs> <laughs> Um, Agdistis, Ambil, oh my gosh, Ambit, mm -mm. can I take a pass from Melissa? <laughs> um, <laughs> Amblitopilia, sure. Um, and Senoptopilia, Dejongia, Emelina, that's just like a cute little name. Uh, Jaina, Helencia, Lan Lantanophasia, Leoptilodes. Leoptilodes? This one's just Michael. I mean, <laughs> um, <laughs> Michael of Forest. Great. Uh, Odiomataphorus, Paraplataptilia, Platoptilia, uh, Stenoptiliodes, Caliphilus, Automeris or Eyed Silk Moths, very beautiful, Hemiluca Sheep Moths, that's a great pattern, I love that. 
Saturnia. Uh, Shrekenstenia. Arensitheris. Sitheris. Albuna. Not a moth. We've we've switched. <laughs> Is it a no, moth? It's still a moth. Really? Yeah. Oh my gosh, it's so cool. It's a very convincing mimic. Um Penistesia. Eclinia. Alcatho. Is this another mimic? What the heck? So cool. Moths are so cool, folks. Um, Parenthrene. Penstemonia. Sessia. Uh, Synanthedon. Xenodoxus. Agrius. Uh, Cocytius. Enyo. That's a cool shape, too. It's got, like, little fins on its tail. Uh, Araneus. Eumorpha. Euproserpinus, or Primrose Sphinxes. Hemeris. Macroglossum, or Hummingbird Hawk Moths, which are super cool. They definitely do look like hummingbirds in flight. Manduka, this is obviously the pre-moth version. <laughs> um, Pachylia, Pachy Sphinx, uh, Paeoneus, Proserpinus, Smerinthus, I'd hawk moths, Sphinx. All right, and now we are gonna go into the speed draw portion. Um, so again, the goal is 25 organisms in five minutes. We're a little bit over time, so we're gonna try to do it as fast as possible. Um, roughly 10 seconds per drawing. These are probably just gonna be like vague shapes. Maybe they'll look like the things, maybe not. Ready? Here we go. All right, we're starting with forget-me-nots. Okay. Uh, Podiceps or typical grebes. <laughs> I'm trying to get me drawing. <laughs> I love the shape of these wings, but I don't know if I'm gonna get it. Oh, he's got like a little. Okay, time out. <laughs> okay, that was bad. Um, beautiful garter snake. All right. Uh, some wide branch algae. Okay. I feel like I can probably do one more pass up through the list if we want. Get get through them all. Come back. Uh. Myco calcium or stick pins. This is a cute little slime mold, I think. When you finish that, what have you got for progress? You want to show us? Sure, yes. Here's what I have so far. The grebe is um bad. It's bad. <laughs> um, <laughs> more birds. More birds. This one's screaming. Love it. Puasetis. This one's not good either. My, these poor birds. I love birds. <laughs> They're doing their best. Uh, here's uh, some yellow throats and allies. Uh, this one's very round. I like that. Uh, Brahma. I don't know if I left myself enough space. Next page. Uh, on, that's true. There are multiple pages in this literal sketchbook. Okay. Mm. Not good. Um, <laughs> Martins. Oh my gosh, the picture is so small. I can't barely even see it. But it's like a little weaselly thing, right? It's oh, long. No. Oh no. 
Uh, okay. Uh, Billbug Weevils. Got just a couple more. Ooh. I love weevil noses. They're so good. I hope everybody at home is drawing right along. Yep. Yep. I want you all to um, send them to our social handles, which are on the screen. No excuses. Show me your drawings. Ooh, spiky little friend. The worse they are, the better. Yes, please. That's the point. These are so, these are so bad. Half of them like, don't have eyes or any distinguishing features. <laughs> all right. We got a thresher shark. It's a big long tail. Right? Mm -hmm. It's a good shape. Oh no. <laughs> we got more than a couple. <laughs> Jagged ambush bugs. What a name. Uh huh. <laughs> I did this to myself. Yeah, uh, Sadie really hand selected all of these. <laughs> yeah. Yep. I made this decision. It's. I love it though. Beautiful moth. Oh, I'm one of these little thin winged friends. <laughs> oh, no, it went away. Okay. Oh, <laughs> because, because they're so cute. I am going to not do this justice at all. Oh, actually, okay. I don't hate this. <laughs> the, like, like, it's just a little, it's just a little blob, but I don't even know if you can see it, but very cute. Okay. Jelly babies. That sounds like a candy. Is there a candy called that? Cannonball fungi. That's so cool looking. Like definitely looks like it's. Uh huh. Yeah, like it punctured through something. Micro microbrium. It's a moss. I can't remember if it's a moss or a slime mold. I like the little um, water on it. Columbine. These are one of my favorite California native flowers. Um, too complicated of a shape. Why did I do this? <laughs> and a raccoon, which is like a full on recognizable creature. Also a super easy thing to draw in 10 seconds. I love the expression on its face, though. It's so good. This is our last one. No, it's not. There are a couple more. Oh, no. Oh, no. My raccoon is so not done. Um, <laughs> this, um, the face of this creature, what, I don't know. What is this? Is this a fish? Is it an eel? Is a it lamprey. a worm? What is, oh, lamprey. Great. Um, its face is how I feel. Okay, just a nice little triangle shell. That's that's doable. Very pretty colors. Oh, and then an umbrella slug. Look at it. They're so cute. This is our last one coming out. Okay, one more flower. I can do it. Okay, okay. Let's get a close up. These are my. These are my creatures. Can you see them? <laughs> They're really not recognizable probably as any of the things, but that was a lot of fun. I hope some of you played along. Uh, if you did, please do send us um, your drawings. Um, all of our social handles are on the screen. Um, this was great. I am going to hand it over to my colleague, Allison, to talk about some things that glow. Hi, uh, I'm Allison. I am a research scientist here and I study bioluminescence. So we're going to go into the dark side for a little bit. Lights off. Do this. All right, welcome. Um, so I am going to first read off some of the bioluminescent critters found in California. Um, I'm not sure that any of these are fish, which is what I study, but um, I'm going to give it my best. Motixia. Uh, it's the Sierra Luminous Millipede. Um, 
Zystosheri, Sheer, um, another millipede. Diurnal fireflies. Who knew we had fireflies in California? I had no idea. Elekinia. Microphotus, another firefly. Terotus, firefly. Pyropegia, firefly. Lots of fireflies in California. Is that it? Oh, now we're moving into the fish world. Okay, there are bioluminescent fish out there. Um, sometimes in California, we get the Pacific football fish that wash up on shore. Um, but I don't know if that's on my list. But we're going to go through some fish now. Uh, Acipenser, the typical sturgeon. They can get really big. Albula. Don't know what it looks like. Gymnothorax. Oh, this is the moray eel. Yeah, they're cool. Um, Fatchiolela. Don't know what that is. Myrophis. Myrophis. Ophicthus, oh, 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 yeah. Atherinops, Atherinops, so cool. Atherinopsis, probably a cousin. Lurespes, Lurespes. Alapisaurus, that kind of sounds like a dinosaur. Alapisaurus. Synodus. Porichthes, midshipman. Uh, strongy, strongy lura, strongy lura. It's got a pointy nose. Oh, cool! Flying fish, Kilio, Kiliopagon, Hyprohamphus, Gila, Western chub, Hesperolucus, the California roaches. I think those can be really loud. Fish can get really loud. Lavinia. Um, Milopharodon, looks like a tiny little one. Orthodon. Pogo nixies. Oh, we're seeing ichthies a lot. That, that's short for fish, like ichthyologist, fish. Tychochelius, a pike minnow. Rhinichthys, there's another ichthy. Riffledace. Richardsonius. Richardsonius. Cyphotelles. Oh, Soprinodons, the little pupfish. So cute. A fungulus, those are the killifishies. Yep, typical killifish. A poselopsis. Microgaddis. Merlucius, a hake. Allorhynchus. Gasterosteus, three stein stickleback. Oh, the sticklebacks. Goby socks, not to be confused with your own socks. Rimicola, Regalicus. Oh, those are oarfish. Regalicus. Oh, those are cool. They get like massive. Yeah, neat. Um, Trachypterus. Mugil, muggle. Muggle, like in Harry Potter. I don't know, Muggle. Common mullet. <laughs> A tarletonbienia. Bienia. Brosmophysis. A lot of these are being fished, which I guess is the theme in, in California. We have good fish to eat. Uh, Kilara. Don't know what she is. Ophidion. A snake-like cusk eel. Oh, those look cool. Argentin, Argentina. Argentina. Hmm. Symphorus. Cytherichthys. Another ichthys. Are these flatfish now? Hypoglossinia. We're into the flatfishes. Uh, Zystrys. That's a hard one. Atherestes, Eopsetta, Glyptocephalus, Pleuronychthes, flatfishes, Isopsetta, Isopsetta, Lepidopsetta, Roxel, ooh, Roxel, okay, 
Lyopsetta microstomus paraphrase <laughs> Plactichthys. Flatfishes? We're still in the flat. There's a lot of flatfishes in California. Sedicthes. Agonopsis. Agonopsis. Bothragonus. Bothragonus. Odontopixis. <laughs> Stellarina, like a ballerina. Xenertamus. Ana uh, Anoplopoma. Almost like an anomalopid, which are bioluminescent. And we have them here at Cal Academy. Artedius, Aselichthys, Chitonotus, Clinocotus, a sharp nosed sculpin. Oh, now we're into the sculpins. Okay, Cotus, a freshwater sculpin. Enofreeze, a stone sculpin. Hemilip. Pidotus, Irish Lord. Oh, fancy. Icelinus, Jordania. Jordania. Leocotus, Leptocotus, Og Oligocotus. Oh, a tide pool Johnny. A Johnny. Oh, he's cute. Orthonopius, Ruscarius, Ruscarius. Scorpanyctes, a cabazon. A synchirus. Not sure what that picture is. It's just <laughs> caught in a bag. A blepsius. Blepsius. Nautictes. Hexagramos, a typical greenling. Ophiodon, lincod. Oxylebius. Zanilepis, Caraproctus, Liparis, oh, he's cool, Ramphocotus, oh, we're still in the Cotus, Scorpania, Argyropelcus, a silver hatchet fish. I botched that one. Hippocampus, a seahorse. Oh, seahorses are super cool. The, the dads carry the babies in their bellies. It's really neat. Go dads. A Cygnathus, a pipefish. Ballistes. Mola, the mola mola is the sunfish. They're really cool. A spheroides. Oh, those are puffers. I didn't know we had puffers here. That's cool. Clavel. Clavel. Oh, now we're totally into a new critter. Okay, these are tunicates. Light bulb tunicates. We're out of the fishes, but they still are in the chordata phylum. So these are actually, uh, you're more closely related to, to tunicates than you are like a squid or an octopus because they have, um, they're in the same phylum. Um, chordata. Clavelinina, whatever. Pycnoclavella. Yellow choir or something. Didemnum, wrinkled sea mats. Diplosoma. Tridemnum. <laughs> I botched that one. Euphardmania. These are all tunicates still. Dystaplia. Cystodites. Those are funky. Eudistoma. Polyclinum. Cynoscum. Riterella, Acidia, oh, I know Acidia. Those are like classic. Siona, those are other like classic tunicates. Chiliosoma, Corella, Parophora, Molgula, Boltenia, Halocynthia, sea peaches. Oh, that's a cute name. Pyura, red baits. Boat. Botryloides, Botrylis, Nemidocarpa, Metandrocarpa, Polyandrocarpa, Styella, Lumpy Sea Mat, Simplegma, and Anthropleura, an anemone. So we moved on to a different group. Cool. I think that's it.
All right. Thank you. I had so much fun. Now going to hand it off to Adriana Hernandez for some plants. Good. Hi, uh, I'm Adriana Hernandez. I'm a postdoc in botany. Um, I'm a California native, native to Southern California. And um, yeah, my love for California biodiversity uh, was basically growing up here and uh, in college, kind of discovering the huge diversity of plants in the US. Um, California has one third of the diversity of plants in all of the U.S. Um, it's also one of five Mediterranean climate regions around the world, so we're pretty unique here. Um, yeah, so I'm excited to name off some some plants. Ephedra, joint firs, Elisma, the water plantains, Damasonium, the star fruits. Echinodorus, bird, burr heads and sword plants. Ooh, I don't know these. Sagittaria, arrowheads. Lumna, duckweeds. Well, you'll definitely see ducks eating these <laughs> around ponds. Lysichitin, skunk cabbages. Spirodella, the greater duckweeds. Wolfia, water meals. These are the smallest flowering plants uh, ever. <laughs> And they don't have petals or, or sepals. They just have the kind of reproductive parts, um, stamens and pistils. Elodea, the water weeds. Najas, or the naiads. <laughs> Belisneria, or vallis. Triglocan, arrow grasses. Poda mogedon, the pond weeds. Stachenia. Xenichelia, Rupia, the widgeon weeds, uh, Skeuxeria, <laughs> the pod grasses, Triantha, sticky false asphodels, Phyllospadix, the surf grasses, Zostera, the eel grasses, Washingtonia, the fan palms. I think these also go down into Baja. Hymenocallus, the spider lilies. These are really cool looking and have an interesting name. <laughs> Pretty aptly named, I think. Uh, Nothoscordium, killing it, grown out of some concrete. Agave, uh, or century plants. We all know agave if you, if you drink tequila. <laughs> um, Androstephium. Blumeria, the golden stars. Dipterostemon. Uh, commonly known as the blue dicks. <laughs> Hastingia, Hastingia, the rush lilies. Hesperocallus, very pretty wavy leaves. Uh, Hespero yucca, Huveria, Leucocrinum, oh, uh, May, Maianthemum, Mayanthema, Mayflowers, and False Solomon seals. Mwila, Nolina, or bear grasses. Mm. Yuccas, who doesn't love a nice Joshua tree? Irises, Olsinium, Cystrinchium, blue-eyed grass. Calypso, one of our uh, few orchids in California, a fairy slipper orchid. Cephalanthera. Coralloriza or coral roots. Cypripedium, hardy slipper orchids. Epipactus or helborines. Goodyria, rattlesnake plantains. Ooh, I want to stay away from those maybe. Uh, Neodia, Platanthera or bog orchids. Those look like little, little flowers. Spiranthes, ladies' tresses. Odos, odontostomum, odontostomum, <laughs> heteranthera, uh, mud plantains, narthesium, calicordus, my favorite, mariposa lilies, repping it on my shirt too. <laughs> Clintonia, the bead lilies, 
erythronium, the fawn lilies, fritillaria, uh, or fritillaries, prosardes, American fairy bells, scoliopus, or fetid adder's tongue, streptopus, twisted stalks. Oh, yeah, those are doing some crazy things. Uh, Anticlea, pseudotrillium, toxicoscordian or death chemis, trilliums. Yeah, I don't know what differentiates pseudotrilliums from trilliums. Eratrum or false hellbores, smilax or green briars, amphiscerpus. Amphiscerpus, <laughs> uh, bulbosinus. Wow, I'm killing that. Uh, Clubrush, <laughs> bulbostylus. Hmm. I wonder if there's bulbs buried under there, uh, subtending those leaves. Callus grip, callus gerpus. Cladium or sawgrasses. Cypress, flat sedges. Sedges have edges. Uh, Dolichium. <laughs> Aliocaris or spike rushes. Rushes are round. <laughs> Areaforum cotton grass. This looks floofy. Uh, Fimbristylus. Fimbristylus. Fringe rush. Isolepis. Rinca rincospora. Rincospora. Beak sedges. Hmm. Shonoplectiella, Shonus or bog rushes, Serpus, Trichophorum, Juncus rushes, Luzula, that's pretty, wood rushes, Agrostis or bent grass, Allopecorus, foxtail grasses, looks like something's eating it. <laughs> Andropogon or blue stems. Anthoxanthum or sweet grasses. Aristida, wiregrass. Beckmania. Blepharidacne. Oh, who named that? <laughs> <laughs> Bothrio cloa, blue stems. Budalua, grandma grass. Bromus or bromes. Calamagrostis, reed grasses. Sina, like cinnamon. Danthonia, or oat grasses. Deschampsia, or hair grass. Dicanthalium, rosette grasses. Digitaria, crab grasses, cotton tops, and allies. Diplacne. Disticlus, Elimus, wild rice and wheat grasses. Enia pogon, Aragrostis, love grasses. Ariacoma, western needle grasses. Festuca are the fescues. Glyceria, sweet grass, maybe tasty. Heteropogon. Hilaria, they're hilarious. Gaeta grasses. <laughs> Hordium or barley. Imperata. Cholaria or June grasses. Lyrsia. Lamus. Malika or melic grasses. Grasses are something I don't even try to identify in the field, so. I don't feel so bad that I don't know a lot of these. <laughs> Mullenbergia or Mully. Munroa. Nacella, Satuk grasses. Neostapphia. Orcudia. Panicum or panic grasses. Papostipa. Paspalum. Phalaris, or canary grasses, canary grasses. Phleum, or the Timothys. Phragmites. Piptatheropsis. Piptocatium, needlegrass. 
Pleuropogon. Poa, bluegrasses. Pseudorogneria. Tilla grostiella. Pusinellia, saltgrass. Cetaria, foxtails and bristlegrasses. Sphenophilus. Sporob Sporobulus, drop seeds, cord grasses, and sand reeds. Stipa, needle grass. Swalenia. Thornocloa. Toriocloa. Tridens. Tricetum. Tuctoria. They're getting tinier and tinier. Zyzania, wild rice. Cool, thanks for having me. Yeah, thank you. That was great. Love you. over to our next reader, Rebecca. Hi. Okay. Hi. Uh, my name is Rebecca Albright, and I am a curator here at the California Academy of Sciences in the Invertebrate Zoology and Geology Department. I'm a coral reef scientist. Um, and I've been in the Bay Area for about 10 years, and I think Studying in the tropics and coral reefs, I think what I really love here is the diversity of animals that you get in the tidal zone, going tide pooling and just, I mean, every time you go, you find incredible new creatures that are so resilient and have to weather all sorts of different environments um, under different tidal regimes. And it's, it's a fascinating contrast to what I typically study on the day to day. So um, excited to be here. Let's get into it. Discophyton, heteropolypus, thrombophyton, cryptophyton, adelogorgia, eugorgia, leptogorgia, and those sound like they're all soft corals, gersamia, Chromoplexura, chromoplexora, chromoplexora. I'm going to commit to that. Muricea, Tylosarcus. That's a C pen. That one's pretty. Ranilla, Stylactyla, Astrangia, that's a cup coral, that's a stony coral, which is similar to what I study. Cenociathus, Parasiathus, or the blackened cup corals. Balanophilia, the acorn cup coral, or the orange cup coral, those are really pretty too. They're solitary polyps, but they're stony corals. They actually lay down a hard calcium carbonate skeleton, but they don't form reefs. They just live by themselves. Epizoanthus. Savalia. Pachycerianthus. Charybdia. Garveya. Candelabrum. Cladomina, Cladonema, Corimorpha. We, we don't have images for a lot of these. That must mean that they need to be better studied. So lots of low hanging fruit here. Corinne, Polyorchis, that's pretty. Scripsia. Doridia sarsia, eudendrium, or knob-tipped hydroids. Those sounds like they would sting. Halamid Halamedusa, S 
Guchertinia. Hydra. Hydra Corinne. Anna Tiara. Porpita. Oh, that's very cute. Valela. Stylanthica. Stylaster. Another coral. Ectopleura. Aquaria or crystal jellies. Aglaophenia, ostrich plume hydroids. Blackfordia, Eutonina, Eutonina, Eucalota, Eucalota, Mitrachoma, Zingurella. Amphisbacia, Liriope, Nymph jellyfishes, those sound cute, Aglaropsis, Myotius, Myotius, Valentinia, Somissus, Nanomia, Apolemia, Physalia, man of war, um, Physophoria, Praia, Rosacea, Paraphylla, Philariza. Chrysaura, sea nettles. We're getting into all the stinging things that you don't want to touch. Facilifora, Aurelia, or moon jellies. Stella Medusa, Halicystis, Manania, um, Fasciolosoma. The Misty, Cypunculus, <laughs> I like the drawing of that, <laughs> Polychorus, Hydro, Hydrodictyon, Water Nets, Lacunastrum, these look like diatom, uh, Monactinus, Pediastrum. These are beautiful. Pseudopediastrum. Steridium. Celastrum. Desmodesmus. Senedesmus. Tetradesmus. Selenastrum, Tetraspora, Chlamydomonas, Dunaliella, Dunaliella, Gonium, Micra, Microactinium, Willea. Elliptochlorus, Calithon, Calithanion, Centroceras, Ceramium, Banded Weeds, Microcladia, Acrosorium, Asterocolix, Cryptoplora, Kumethamnion, Kumethamnion, Erythroglossum, Hymenaena, Neonbergia, 
Phycodris. Phy Phycodris. Polynura. Chondria. Erythrocystis. Oh my gosh. <laughs> really? Jang. Jan. Janceska, Janceska, Janceska. Um, you know, I went to Duke as an undergrad and Coach Shashevsky. We had to like spell his name, so I was reaching for that one. Lorencia, Neorodomela, Neo, Neo Neorodomela, Odonthalia, Osmundia. Neoptiloda, um, Tyloda, Bosiela, Caliathron, Coralina, Jania, Red Coraline Algae, Lithophyllum, Lith Lithothrix, Stone Hair. Clathromorphum, Lithothamnion, Crestos coralline algae, Melob Melobasia, uh, Gelidium, Jellyweeds, Terocladiella. Guys, this biodiversity is amazing. Isn't this amazing? Calacanthus, Calacanthus. There's so many beautiful things. Hypnia, Costantinea, Cryptosiphonia, Dilcia, Farloia, Picia, Endocladia. Opentiella, Chondracanthus, Chondrus, Mazella, Iridescent Algae, Gloiosephania, Calophyllus. Erythrophyllum, Onfeltiopsis, Gymnogongris, Mastocarpus, Encrusting Red Algae, Stenogramma, Gardneriella, Sarcodiotheca, Gracilaria, Gracilariopsis, sea spaghetti, Gratel Gratilupia, Halomania, Hildenbrandia, encrusting red algae. I did. Made it. How does I it made feel? It. I survived. <laughs> <laughs> I felt like I was back in my qualls. Um, thank you, everyone. Happy California Biodiversity Day. Thank you so much, Rebecca. Really appreciate you taking the time. Um, up next, we are going to hear from Mo. And I think we're ready to hand it over. Go ahead and take it away, Mo. Great, thank you guys. <clears throat> I've been so excited for today. And I have two things to start off with that I learned when I first started to learn scientific names. And one is that Latin is a dead language, so it doesn't matter how you say it. And then the other thing is the, the, the rule of pronunciation, this is from a linguist, is it doesn't matter how you pronounce it as long as the person that you're speaking to understands what you're trying to say. So with all that in mind, going through all of the scientific names, 
Um, I always keep that in mind. So, and scientific names are all about worldwide communication and understanding what we're talking about and what species we're talking about. All right, here we go. I'm gonna fall flat on my face. Ovis, the bighorn sheep, right there, nice guide lynx. Lynx canadensis is here in California. Mephitis, our lo lovely little skunks. At least I'm getting mammals here. Spilogale, the spotted skunk. Never seen one of those. Okay, and Hydra. Amazing, amazing animal. I could go on and on and on for the whole time on in Hydra. And Hydra lutris norisus is the southern sea otter who lives here in California between Half Moon Bay and Point Conception in the south, the most amazing place on earth to be because you can see the southern sea otters. Gulo is one of their relatives. Lantra, uh, ri the river otters have the coolest teeth, so spiny and they're amazing. Mustella, the little weasels. Picania. Not sure who they are, but looks similar to the sloth bear, which I have a sloth bear tie on today. Taxidia are American badgers. I have not ever run into those in the wild, but that would be nice. All right, now we're getting into my area. So I'm the collection manager in birds and mammals here. So I work on birds and mammals. And whenever we have a large whale wash up in the Bay Area, I help lead the team with the folks from the Marine Mammal Center to determine how it died. So we're getting into the uh, mysticetes or the baleen whale. So we'll start with you, Baleena, which is a right whale, very, very rare here. North Pacific right whale might come around. In fact, there was one last year in the Monterey area, but not an animal I've ever seen, but would be very excited to see. Balenoptera. So Balenopteras, we have a few species and I brought a prop. So I brought some baleen for Balenoptera, right? Baleen is the feeding mechanism that baleen whales use. They're baleen plates. So this is a series of plates that make a sieve on the inside of their mouth. And you can actually cut out sections of the baleen plate and learn where the animal was feeding during that period of its life by looking at the stable isotopes. So there's a small piece of blue whale baleen or a section of blue whale baleen that you may not have ever seen from the Balenopteras. Spe three species here, blue whale, fin whale, and minke whales. And we sometimes get says or brutus whales. Megaptera, the humpback whales, Megaptera novelangliae. I'm glad you don't have the species on here because theirs is hard to spell. Um, one way you can learn scientific names is every time I had to change my password, I would pick a new genus and then that would be my password for a really long time. And so Megaptera would be Megaptera and then something else afterwards that I can't tell you. Um, and that's how I learned a lot of scientific names, how to spell them at least, of course, not to say them. Delphinus, so now we're getting into the dolphins. <clears throat> so these are the toothed whales. And the cool thing about the dolphins and um, other toothed whales, well, the dolphins in particular, is they're called homodonts. All of their teeth are exactly the same. They look exactly the same. If they fall out, you don't know which one went in which hole. Um, very cool teeth. So Delphinus are the common dolphins. Globus cephala are the pilot whales. And I don't know if anyone's told you, but cephala or cephalus has to do with the head. That might have come up earlier today. Grampus, Grampus griseus are the Rizzo's dolphins. Really cool. Plus they have a great name, right? Who doesn't want to run into a dolphin named a Grampus? Sagmatius, not ever heard of those, but I probably should know. Lysodelphus, these are the right whale dolphins. They don't really have a dorsal fin, so that's cool. We have northern right whale dolphin up here in the Bay Area. Or sinus, so I did bring another prop. I wanted to bring our blow-up orca that we use for trainings, 
but he was too big for this room. So I bought our little, brought our little orca stuffy and we teach people how to measure cetaceans by using little stuffies in our department. We don't really cuddle them or anything because orcas are not really nice animals. They're the largest dolphin. Okay, pseudorca. And Stanella, back to more dolphins, smaller dolphins, the striped dolphins, Terciops. Terciops are the bottlenose dolphins. Also not a very nice dolphin. Like they talk, everybody loves. Um, Flipper, was Flipper the dolphin? Flipper, dolphin, bottlenose dolphins are not nice animals. They, uh, they do strange things. <clears throat> Berardius are the beaked whales. We, in our collection, have one Berardius skull. That was our first one. We have four, but the first one was the Santa Cruz Sea Monster. So if you're interested in Baird's beaked whales, Berardius bairdii, look up the Santa Cruz Sea Monster, and you'll know that uh, we're not harboring the sea monster, but we do have a Baird's beaked whale in our We have four, but that was the first one in our collection. Xiphius, those are other... Um, beaked whales, very cool. All the beaked whales are very far out at sea. Um, amazing skulls. The asymmetry is quite astounding. Kogia, dwarf sperm whales. Um, we don't get that many here on the West Coast. They get tons on the East Coast. And we actually, our team made a trip to the Galapagos and put together a Kogia skeleton for them down there. So that was very cool. Focina, harbor porpoise is the most popular one here in the Bay Area, the most common. Focina, Focinas coming back into San Francisco Bay. You can see them all over the place out there. They're sometimes picked on by the bottlenose dolphins. Focinoides, um, this is a doll's porpoise that you can see there. Sometimes people think they're orcas because of their coloring, but they're a very cool um, porpoise with the tiny, tiny head for this huge body. Physeter is sperm whale. I brought a prop for that too. So here's a sperm whale tooth. <clears throat> this is from a really old sperm whale. And if you cut the sperm whale tooth in half, you can actually read the layers of dentin and cementum that have been laid down inside the sperm whale tooth. And it will tell you how old the animal is, like reading the rings of a tree. But then also you can drill out each layer and study the stable isotopes, that's the chemical signature. And it tells you where the animal was living for each layer of growth in their tooth. Like absolutely amazing that this tooth has that much information inside. Something we never would have known a hundred years from now when people were drawing on them, but. There's so much we can learn from specimens. Oh, now we're getting into birds. Switch hats. <laughs> um, Accipiter, that's, those are some of our good birds around. I better speed up. Circus are the harriers. Great to see flying over the fields. Atlantis, the kites, actually kite. Haliatus, the sea eagles and fish eagles. Parabudio, the name changed, but that's a Harris's hawk group. Beautiful birds, cathartes, turkey vultures. When I first started working here, we actually had live turkey vultures that we were doing research on. One of my first scientific papers was on the molt in turkey vultures, believe it or not. And that one has some really nice molt going, those old brown feathers but I diverge, Cathartes. Corgips, black vultures, Pandion, ospreys, amazing birds that carry their fish like this. Axe, the ducks, some of the wood ducks, beautiful, beautiful birds. Answer, geese, Ithea, the scops, Branta, the Branta canadensis, lots of geese in the Branta family. Beautiful. We just got a collection of 120 geese. Eucephala, there's that head again. Cephala, cephalus, golden eyes and buffle heads. Clangula, 
uh, the sharp tailed duck. I forgot they long tailed. Thank you. They changed the name and I can't say the old name, um, but the, the long tailed duck, beautiful birds. Cygnus are the swans. Histrionicus. Man, were those Mandarin ducks? Sometimes you can't connect the common name with the scientific name. Lophodites, those are the mergansers. Mareka, the widgeons, also known as ballpates. Melanita are the scoters. We have three scoters along our coast up here in Northern California. There's some more mergansers, mergus. So Materia, the eiders, so we're getting into the sea ducks now. We've moved from the coast to the further coast. Spatula, the shovelers, big, huge bills that they get their food with their aeronauti. So now we're moving up into the air with the swifts. Chaitura, the swifts, other group of swifts. Oh, Clipsaloides, they must have changed that. <laughs> Clips. Sipsaloides, Salasphorus are the hummingbirds. Love those little teeny tiny hummingbirds. Anthro Anthrostomus, the night jars. Cordelis, the night hawks. I actually once had a night hawk land on my hip while I was sleeping in a sleeping bag outside. It was the most amazing experience. Phalaenopterus. I think it was actually a Phalaenopterus that landed on me. Athea, the auklets. Okay, now we're getting into some, some other seabirds. Brachyrampus, those are the merlets. Rampus means bill. Cephas, those are pigeon guillemots. Cephas columba has a really pink mouth when it opens its mouth. Cerarhynchus are the rhinoceros auklets. I first worked on seabirds in 1998 on an island in Alaska, and I, we had to catch um, rhinoceros auklets out of their burrows and check on the chicks, and it was quite, it was amazing work. Fraturcula are the puffins. Everybody loves puffins. We have tufted puffins out here. Pictorampus are the... Um, Cassin's auklets, little tiny with blue legs, very sweet little birds. Synthin, oh, Synthilobarampus, I can never say that one. <laughs> and urea, urea algae are the common mers. They're also thick-billed mers. Mers live on the Farallons out here and way back in the egging days. Uh, people would go out and take the mer eggs off of the cliffs, but there's colonies of hundreds of thousands of mers now. They've made a comeback. Charadrius are the plovers, so watch out for the uh, snowy plovers here on the west coast and piping plovers on the east coast. They're an endangered species that we all need to help take care of on our coasts. Pluvialis, some other plovers. Hematopus are the oyster catchers, and this, we have the black oyster catcher here. I just saw 12 of them in Fort Bragg a couple weeks ago. It's very fun. Childonius are the, some of the terns, getting into the terns. Chiriocephalus, the masked gulls. Gelodon. Whew. I don't like gulls. <laughs> Hydroprogne, another tern, Caspian tern. Laris, gulls are very hard to learn. Pagophila, and I have not spent enough time learning them, so I'm going to probably bomb here. Rissa, kittiwakes. Rinchops are the skimmers. Those are really cool birds to see with their longer, their Lower bill is longer than their upper bill and mandible, and they skim along the water. Thus their name, Sterna, the little terns, a whole bunch of terns. Watch out, they'll dive at your head. Sternula, if you're near their nests. Thalassius, so crested terns. Sema, is that a 
black face go? I don't know. Hemantopus or the stilts? Hymantopus. Recurva rostra. Rostra means bill. Rostrum, rostra. So curved bill for the avocets. Actitis or the sandpipers. Arenaria, the turnstones. Calidris, other sandpipers, the little tiny ones. We call them peeps. Galinago are the snipes. Limnodromus are the dowagers. So we're now in shorebirds, limosa or godwits. Fun to see with their bills. Numenius are our curlews, really long bills out on the beaches, feeding on the shore. Phalaropus are the phalaropes, and we see them during migration, but they'll spin around on the water. Teeny tiny little legs, little teeny tiny birds. Tringa, some more of our shorebirds. Stercorarius, the skuas and Jaegers. We don't see them that much up here in Northern California, but they are around. Micteria, some storks. Columbina, doves. Patagenus, New World pigeons. Zenaida, doves. So your typical morning doves. Oh, Megaceral, the kingfishers. Coxius, the cuckoos, Cuculus, more cuckoos, Geocoxix, roadrunners, always fun, and plus they have a cool name. Falco, the little falcons, peregrine falcon, and the others. Oreoteryx, Oreoteryx, the quails. Bonassa, Centrocircus. Sage grouse, beautiful birds. Dendropagus are some more grouse, the blue grouse. Gavia, the loons. Coternicops. Oh, I forget what those are, but there's no picture. Gallinula, the moorhens. Lateralis are a form of rail. Porzana is another rail, black rail. Rallis are the bigger rails. Salter Paris is a little bush tit, super cute birds. You can tell a male from a female by their eye color. And I forget if white is a male, but that might be a male. Urimophila, horn larks. Bombacilla is the wax wings. Calcareous are the long spurs. Plectophenax, you see those during migration. Kamea fasciata is the rente, which is my favorite bird, which is amazing. And I can't, they're just, I could go on and on about them. You have the time to. Oh, really? I yeah, have the got, time to. Got a little bit of time. Kamea yeah. fasciata is an amazing, the rentits are an amazing bird. They're a, a babbler who's found in the new world, the only new world babbler. And the males and the females, they are basically mate for life, which not always happens in birds. And both the male and the female sing. Typically, the male sings. Some species, the female sings, but uh, not a lot. And the rented, the female does sing. Incredible. The song sounds like a little um, ping pong ball bouncing like doo -doo 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 -doo. and the end goes faster by the male and slower by the female. And uh, they're found from Washington down through to Baja, California and in the coastal scrub. So if you're ever on the coastal scrub and you hear a little ping pong ball sound, that's your rented there. I brought one other prop for, um, Let's see it. yeah. This is a pelvic bone from a blue whale. So we know that whales used to have legs and when they had legs, their pelvises worked um, to connect to their legs. And for a long time, researchers thought that the pelvic bone that was left in the whale's body when they lost the legs were just remnants or innominates, they were called, um, or vestigial. But actually, a researcher studied pelvic bones, um, and he determined that they probably play a role in sexual selection. So uh, the male's penis actually attaches, the, the ligaments attached to the pelvic bones. It probably has a role in sexual selection. But whenever we work on a whale, it's hard to get a skull off the beach. 
So we'll often find the pelvic bone and collect the pelvic bone for the collection to archive it for science. So there's one more fun fact about cetaceans and rentids, right? Amazing rentids. Go to the coastal scrub and see a rentid this weekend. I've actually been wanting to tell you that um, I went on a little birding um, outing a couple weeks ago and I successfully identified a rentid song based on what you have told me about the football sound. So that was, um, that was delightful for me. Um, and thank you so much for coming and sharing your knowledge with us. And I, I loved the pro tips and the props. It, it was just a delight to have you. So thank you so much, Mo. Thank you guys. Thanks for doing this, everyone. And remember, it doesn't matter how you pronounce it, as long as the person you're talking to knows what you're talking about. <laughs> yes. Awesome. Thanks, Mo. Thanks. All right. Coming up next, I think we've actually got Darian, who is right next to me. And so we're going to have to do a little bit of an awkward shuffle. Um, So bear with us for just a minute. But Darian's going to talk about some birds that showed up on this list of observations that maybe aren't usually here. Hello. Uh, Thank you so much, Sadie, for that introduction. Um, yes, so Jack Dumbacher earlier went through a lot of the passerine birds and some owls. Mo, you finished out the rest of like our, our typical California species. Um, but being that we pulled this list from community science observations, um, there were some birds that showed up that aren't typically resident, uh, California residents. Um, in the birding community, you call them like vagrant birds, um, things that are not invasive, they fly here totally naturally, maybe they're just a little misdirected or lost, um, and they're definitely not common, uh, but they have made their way to California at least a couple times. Um, so I think we should start just by um, giving some love to those birds. So let's see, Udeo gallus, the black hawks, I believe these are like a central South American genus primarily, they flew up north Ictinia, Ictinia kites, like the Mississippi kite is a lot more common on the east coast of America, but being that they can fly, uh, sometimes they make their way out here, but I don't believe that there's any like breeding population in California. Same goes for uh, Dendro cygna, the whistling ducks, the black-bellied whistling ducks, and the ferruginous whistling, whistling ducks are more common in like the southeast or, or South America. Cynanthus is a species of hummingbird, and hummingbirds are so small. You wouldn't predict that they'd be able to fly such long distances to really like get lost, but some hummingbirds have like massive migration uh, ranges, and so they are like really strong flyers, and they fly long distances, and sometimes they end up uh, maybe outside of their typical range. So Cynanthus is one of those genuses that have, genera that have showed up in California. Leucolia, I believe this is the violet-eared hummingbird. Eugenies, the magnificent hummingbirds, which would just be cool to like, to be named the magnificent anything officially is kind of, kind of cool. Hydrocolius, this is a type of gull. Uh, Rhodostethia, I believe this is the Ross's gull, another gull species. Bartramia, um, like basically a type of sandpiper that usually lives in like middle America and migrates from like Canada to. Mexico is not often found like near water, like a very landlocked sandpiper, which is kind of an odd thing to be, especially when you're a shorebird. Crotophaga uh, anis. These are I'm pretty sure like related to cuckoos, but they look like ravens, and so they're kind of an interesting combo. Yeah. Caracara. These are really cool falcons. Um, yeah. Grus. These are uh, cranes that are common in like. Eurasia. They must have flown all the way over the Pacific Ocean, gotten lost around here. But yeah, they've shown up in California a couple of times. Rinko fanes. Yes, this is another, I think, uh, uh, bird like that's normally found in like the Great Plains, Middle America. Along with Spiza, with the Dick Sissels, another uh, Central, or not Central American, Middle American bird, like the Great Plains areas. 
cyanocorax. Okay, these are like beautiful, beautiful uh, jays. These are this picture right here is of a green jay, which is like typically a Central American species. Um, but they have, on occasion, made their way up to California before. And Berizia, the old world, bunt old world buntings are Eurasian uh, genera. Again, have gotten very lost. Probably passed over the Bering Strait into California. Pukeya, I guess another embarrassed sparrow. Cool. Fringilla, chaffinches and bramblings. Uh, these are a type of finch. Again, uh, a Eurasians uh, genera, Eurasian genus. Moda Scylla, wagtails, another Eurasian genus. Some, I imagine flying over the entire Pacific Ocean. It's a really wild feat. Ooh, Lucinia, the nightingales and allies. This is a, um, a blue throat, aptly named. You can see it's blue throat. Um, sometimes they make it pretty regularly into like Alaska, but they're primarily like a Eurasian species. And I believe they do breed in Alaska. Sometimes they'll make it down here very infrequently though. More Eurasian uh, genera, a genus genera, uh, Owen Nanthi, the weeders and allies. Tarsigers, the bush robins and blue tails. Oh, there was just a blue tail in, I'm forgetting the name of the city, the very, like at the very north end of uh, the Monterey Bay. All right? Santa Rosa, and that's not, Santa Cruz, Santa Cruz, Santa Cruz. <laughs> And I went to go look for it, and I didn't find it. And I was like, cool, I've driven all the way out here. Did you do anything else? Uh, I, I, went, I got dinner. <laughs> Myoborus, neotropical red starts. Oh, sometimes these can be found in like like Central America, but like deep into like Arizona, New Mexico, like that corner of the United States. But very rarely, they make their way up to California. Very, very pretty birds. Aporornis, Prulidae. Oh, these are some of the wood warblers. I believe this is the Connecticut warbler. Um, Again, migrates up and down the east coast of North America. Sometimes randomly ends up over here. Protonotaria, the protonothery warbler. Again, a very rare warbler, even in its like native range in like the eastern United States. Um, sometimes ends up over. Sometimes ends up over here too. Cyurus, uh, what is this? Is this an oven bird? Another warbler, migratory warbler. Vermivora, uh, the blue and golden winged warblers. Phyloscopus. Oh, one of these ended up in Marin. Uh, and I, I remember walking over to like Rodeo Lagoon just to find it. And it was, I saw it. I saw this one. I didn't dip on it. And uh, it ended up being pretty cool. <laughs> Even though it's like the most nondescript brown bird, it's just tiny. And I was really excited about it. Myodynasties. Oh, this is a, a Tyranid flycatcher. Again, I think like a Central South American genus. Eudocemus, white and scarlet ibises, like Gulf Coast, Southeast American species, or United States species. Uh, some must have gotten lost. Platelia, the spoonbills, the roseate spoonbill, like so gorgeous with like this bald green head. But like, if you look at it, you're like, oh, that's like such, so odd looking because of the bean. You see this like beautiful like pink flamingo looking bird. Um, they're just so odd. Again, like a Gulf Coast species primarily. And then Sula, the typical boobies. These are birds that are pretty, uh, they're always found around water. They're pretty pelagic. They can be found uh, up and down the coast, but very rarely make it all the way up to California, um, far more common in like Central America and around tropic zones. But I think that's it for our, our lost birds. <laughs> um, now we can go on to whatever else needs covering, which I think here in this case is millipedes, diplura. I don't know, don't quote me on that. Campodia. Aka, Akas Japix. Haploembia. Ooh, an embiopteran. I have no idea what those are. Schizocerella. Hymenopteran, wherein ants, wasps, bees. Pristolacus. Glenosema. Aleoides, the common mummy wasps. Ooh, wonder what that's about. Apenteles, Apodesmia, Chrysopop, oh frick, Chrysopopthorus, Cotesia, Tynocampus, Calamuta, Acanthochalcis, 
Brachymeria, Conura, Leucospis, Euperigia, Polochrum, Pseudomacerus, Brassadolia. Okay, we're in fungi now. Cereoporus, Serena, Coriolopsis, Cryptoporus, Foamies, Foams, Tremedes. Oh, turkey tails, right? Yeah. Leptoporus, Lofaria, Neofavolus, Neolentinus, Panis, Pisipis, Polyporus, Rhodonia, Skeletocutus, Trematopsis, Tyromyces, Sparasis, the cauliflower mushroom, and I get why it was named that. Abagesta, Lepidoptera, okay, we're in butterflies and moths. Akira, Atheophysa, Agraphyla, Anatralata, Antigastra, Arenocroa, Argyria, Ascioides, Chalcoella, Choristostigma, Chrismania, Chrysotuchia, Conchiloides, Conchiloides, Crambus, Desmia, ooh, very pretty, Diastictus. Dicozoma, Dicey Malomia, Edia, Elophila, Aramanthi, Euchromius, Eudonia, Evergestus, Physicrambus, Frechenia, Gyros, Helula, Hemiplatitas, Herpetogramma, Hyalorista, Hymenia, Lineodes, Lipocosma, Luxostege, Loxostegopsis, Mechina, Microcrambus, Microtheorus, Memorista, Mojavia, I could guess where that's found, Nanobotus, Mimoskinia, Noctuliopsis, Ooh, it's like strawberry shortcake moth, <laughs> Nomophila, Palpita, Parapediasia, Par Paris pasta, <laughs> Petrophila, Samobotus, Pseudoskinia, Pyrausta, the mint moths, Socrobotus, Scoparia, Skybellistodes, Spoladia, Stegia, Tehama, Terastia, Udea, Eurasifita, Eusingariesa, Usarca, Antepero, Gabriola, Glossina, Glina, Hesperumia, Horismi, Holstina, Hydriomena, Idea, Iridopsis, Lambdina, 
Leptostales. Lobocleta. Lomographa. Ooh, that one's very pretty. Macaria. Malacodea. Malacodea. Um, Melanophia. Mesoluca. Mesothea. Fernaldella. Glyphith, Glyphipteryx. And uh, let's see. It looks like it is time for us to move over to our next guest. I am going to, let's see, hand it over to Lowe's. I'm going to give you the cue. All right. Okay. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Los. I am one of the public program presenters here at the California Academy of Sciences. And my connection to California wildlife. Well, I am actually a San Francisco native. So this is the kind of stuff that I enjoy. But also, um, my wife is from Buffalo. So we, she came over to California. We explored it. It was a whole new world. And to be able to see it from her eyes was incredible. So doing this, I bring back some really nice sweet memories from exploring California. Down from South California and their chaparrales and deserts to our core, well, no, not coral reefs, but our tide pools here in, up in the Marin Headlands, actually. So, um, Really neat stuff, really cool things to see out there. Um, and with that, I think I am ready to rock and roll. So, as I am an arthropod right now, <laughs> let's start with the arthropods. So, Bibiodes, Dilophus, Bibio, Phyloris, Califora, blue bottle flies. Ooh, blue bottle. That's what they look like. Oh, Chrysomia, Cochleomia, Comsomyopes, Cynomia, Lucilia, green bottle flies. Oh, wow, there's blue bottles and green bottles. That's neat. Formia, Africamilla, Exilicellus. <laughs> Anorostoma, Pseudolaria, Trixosilis, and wow, look at the scale. I'm, I'm assuming it's on someone's finger. That's tiny. Wow. Soilia, Tephroclamis, Liptotena, that is tiny. Pseudolinkia, Platypalpus. Homonura, Minesia, Asinia, Asurina, Anastrefa. Look at those eyes. That is incredible. Oh, I'd love to see these things live. Campiglosa, although the images, the illustrations, I love that little smile on it. Classic, beautiful. Ketostoma, dioxymna, eurista, eurystoides, eulia. Now, all so far, they all look like flies, and my eyes are opening up because I think of usually common house flies. These are incredibly beautiful flies. Euphranta, eutreta. Godinia, Neospilota, Neotephritis, Oxina, Lactuca, wild lettuces. Now we're moving from flies and animals to plants. Botany, Lanicia, Lasania, Goldfield. Oh, I've seen areas like that. Just fields and fields of yellow. Laya. Tidy tips. I guess they're tidy. Lipid, lipidospartum, scale broom. Mm, lipidopteric scales. 
Và sinh gì ạ? Leo Leo Cyrus. Wow, Fia. Luina. Like Desnia. Malacothrix. Desert dandelions. Now these I have seen down in Southern California. Malparia. Matricaria. German chamomiles and pineapple weed. Oh, they do look like little pineapples, actually. <laughs> Microceres. Silver poofs. Or silver puffs. I just need to say poofs, so. though. <laughs> Monolopia. Hillside daisies. Monoptilon. Desert stars. Hmm. Neostotus. Oh, Nestotus. Sorry. Get a little bit ahead of myself. Nicoletia, hole in the sand plant. Oh, very descriptive. I'm assuming that's very accurate too. Oreo stemmas. Ooh, Oreos. Mm. Orocan Orocanactis. Osmandenia. Pacara, American grand cells and ragwort. Palafoxia. Pick these. Chinchweed. Now, I'm going on the assumption a lot of these are desert flowers. This seems to be a common theme with them. See the background, too. Pentakaiti. Pericomb. Peritile rock daisies. Hmm. Petasites. Butterburrs. Petradoria. Pusephilum? Phalacroceris. Picrodenopsis. Pleocanthus. Ooh, a nice purple, too. Pleocoronis. Plukia. Marsh fleabane. Wow, marsh. Porophyllum. Poor leaves. Cythrates, turtlebacks. Okay, I can see the pattern. I can see the patterns of turtles. Yeah, yeah. Pseudobahia, Silactus, Silocarpus, woolly marbles. Oh, imagine playing marbles with little woolly balls on them. That's really interesting, actually. Silotrophies, paper flowers. Huh, okay. Pyrocoma, golden weeds. Raffinistia, plume seeds. Rylardella. Rio Pappas. Rudbeckia, black eyed Susans and cone flowers. Yep, again, very descriptive. San, San Vitalia. Salsuria. Senecio, ground cells. Sericope carpus, white top asters. Solidago, goldenrods. Oh, that's what Han Solo would call 3PO. Goldenrod, that's what they look like. Okay. Sankos, so thistles. Thinotus, mock golden wheat. Now, do they mock other golden wheat? Or what's going on there with that? Stephanomeria, wire lettuces. Why are lettuces? Wow. Devia. Stylocline. Nestraws. Symphotricum. American asters. Oh, we saw earlier asters. I can't remember what they were, though. But there were still asters. Centricopopis. Tagetes. Marigolds. Now, those I know. Tenacidum. Tansies. I like pansies, but with a T. Teraxicum, dandelion. Oh, my wife, she was the dandelion queen from what I hear when she was a child. Tetradymia, horse brushes and cotton thorns. Tetraneris, four nerved daisy. Wow. Timophila, prickly leaves. Tonestas. 
Townsendia, brown daisy, as opposed to arboreal daisy. Tragopogon, salsify? Trico Tricoptilium. Trixie, threefold, not twofold or fourfold. Venegasia, <laughs> verbicina, crown beard. Mm. Zamphitima. Zamphium. Cockleburrs. Xyloriza. Woody asters. Acromermex. Acromermex leaf cutter. Ants. We're back to the animal kingdom again. Uh, yeah. Aphanagaster. Spine wasted ants. Brachy. Brachy. My mermix. Rover ants. Here, Rover. Here. Camponotus. Carpenter ants. Crematagaster. Acrobat. Acrobat ants. Ooh, I wonder if they do anything neat. Stifle mermix. I'm assuming it's an ant, too. During mermix. Pyramid ants. I'm just imagining a little pile of ants forming a little pyramid. Indio Dites, Formica, wood, mound, and field ants. Lassius, Lithothorax, Leptothorax, Leomeptotum, Velvety tree ant. Now, I wonder if these are actually kind of like velvet ants. Or if they're actually ants, ants. Manica. Veromesor. Veromesor harvester ants. Monomorium. Trailing pharaoh. And timid ants. Interesting. Pharaohs and timids. They're like completely the opposites. Miramessina. Mite eating ants. Oh, we need those actually. <laughs> Absolutely. Mirmentuma. Mermica, furrow dance. Furrow. Neo, Neva Mermix. Neva Mermix. Army ants. Now, as a kid, there used to be a toy called Army ants. Novo Messor. Nylanderia. Felidoli. Big head and ants. Yep, that, that's pretty accurate. Yep, that's a big head right there. Poly, Polyergus. Amazon ants. Wait, Amazon ants up here? Prinella lepi, winter ants and allies. Proceratarium, hairy curl tail ants. Pseudo mermix, twig ants. Oh, I can see that. Yeah, looking like little twigs. Solenopsis, solenopsis, fire ants and sea ants. Stenama, stigmatoma. Whoa, that's a creepy camp. Tanae mermix. Tapinoma, Timnothorax, acorn ants, and allies. Tetramorium, fierce, pennant, and pavement ants? Pavement? Wow. Just eruption. Whoa, whoa, that was a trippy ant. Oh, you had to go back for that one. I just can't miss that one. Wow. I could post him on striped sweat bees. Whoa. There was a switch then from ants to bees. I completely missed it. Algo chlorella. That's some pretty colors. Conan thalitus. Not related to Conan the Vibrarium. Dionomia. Duphoria. Short faced bees. Helictus. Furrow ants. Kind of like furrow bees. Or fair. Furrow bees. Thinking about the pharaoh ants. <laughs> Lasioglossum. Microlictoides. Nomia. Opalescent ground bees. However, I see the word nomia and I think of gnome. Brown gnome, close enough. Celadonia. Golden furrow bees. Spectodes. Blood bees. Oh, yeah. A little reddish in the back. Blood. Okay. Ceratlictus. Ibalia. Lita Nutria. American ground mantises. Wow, we are jumping all over the place. That's a pretty good camouflage, too. It does look like the rock itself. 
And I believe that is it for my run. So if you want to stay tuned in for some really more exciting and interesting organisms that I am just blown away by, stick around, stay tuned, because you will be amazed. And with that, I take my bow. Thank you so much, Los. That was phenomenal. You absolutely breezed through all those different plants, animals, with no trouble at all. So hats off, um, butterfly hats off in your case. <laughs> but yeah, um, we're continuing right on with our California nature 12-hour extravaganza, 12-hour California nature extravaganza, whichever way you want to say it. My name's Aria. I am one of the digital engagement hosts here. And I'm going to go ahead and read some sharks, looks like. Um, just getting right into it. Prionacy. Ap Apristurcus ghost cat sharks. Cephalocilium. Galorhynchus, the liver oil sharks. Mustelis, the smooth hounds. Heterodontus, bullhead sharks. I think that's a swell shark, is it? No, it's not a swell shark. Horn shark, the other one. <laughs> Notorhynchus, the broad nosed seven gill sharks. I love these. Such a soft spot for them. So, Ceterinus, um, basking shark. Carcharodon. Is that the great white? Yeah, that's the great white. Isurus, the mako shark. Lamna. Hypanus. That looks like a ray. <laughs> Teroplati trigon. G Gymnura, butterfly rays. Mobula, devil rays. Fun fact. That's a really scientifically accurate depiction right there of Mobula. Mylobatus, the common eagle rays. Eurolophus. Baron Graha. Platyrhinoidus. Pseudobatos. Zapteryx. Is it, hmm. <laughs> is this yes. the cookie cutter sharks? Um, these guys are cool. I'm pretty sure they're called cookie cutter sharks because they go and take chunks out of the things that they eat, right? Other sharks sometimes, right? They they kind of like just get their like little mouth in there, and then it looks like a like a little cookie cutter took a slice out of their prey. <laughs> Echinorhinus, somniosis. Oh, this is a personal fave. Um, sleeper sharks, Pacific sleeper sharks. Um, and uh, Greenland sharks, I'm pretty sure, are also somniosis, but go look them up. They're super cool. Zamius. Squalus. Spur dogs. Squatina, the angel sharks. Tetronarsi. Hydrolagus. And that's all, that's all the elasmobranchs. Um, yeah, we're going to hop right over onto some other things. And I'm also realizing, I think we might have featured some of those sharks already in one of our other co-hosts Sadie's segment, but you know what? You get double the sharks and that's great. Um, yeah, it's pretty, pretty cool. So we're going to continue right along with what looks like an insect. Cal Caloptilla. Chimeraria. It's kind of my name with an eye. Uh, Leucospila pteryx. Marmara. Neurobathra, Phy Phylonistus, Phylonistus, I'm sticking with that. Bold choice, Silent C. Yeah, Silent C. Phylonorictor, Porphyrozella, that is cute. I don't know where its head or its butt is, but that is cute. Atoll, Atolli, Embola. Lytheriapteryx, Neoheliodines, Coptodisca, uh, Hep Hepialis, Phymatopus, <laughs> Vespina, Globaria, Malacosoma, Tent Caterpillar Moths. These are cool. Phylodesma. That looks like a, is that a, like, a, is that a moth or a chrysalis? What the heck is going on there? Is that it? Oh, look at its legs. <laughs> to wow, to Tolipe, Tolipe. Monoluca. Tor Tortri Tortricidia. So this one's actually a prank. That's just a baked good. <laughs> <laughs> it's 
it's like actually a scone <laughs> that we're looking at. <laughs> it's a beautiful croissant. <laughs> it's a croissant. No, it's not flaky enough to be a croissant. Oh, <laughs> Agri Agriadis. That's beautiful. Uh, at at Lydies. At Lydies. Brefidium. The Pygmy Blues. I think we might have some of these uh, like in San Francisco that are pretty iconic. Uh, Stry Stryman. Scrub hair streaks. I love hair streaks. Calofris. Elfins. This is so beautiful. Celastrina. Holarctic azures. I think there are a lot of blue butterflies. Like, I think that's like a thing. I, I don't entirely know why. Um, Chlorostrymon. Cupido. The tailed blues. Yeah, what did I say? Blue butterflies. They're everywhere. Echinargus. But I'm not mad about it. Like, love a blue butterfly. Euphilites, the American dotted blues. I like this one. That's a cool one. Glaucopsyche. Habrodace. That's so little. Just like a little finger. Um, Satyrium. Sati satyrid hair streaks. Hemiargus. Icaricia. Leptotes, the common blues. I love how butterflies have those little, like, clubbed antenna. Like, I think that's the difference between them and moths. Or one of the differences. Um, pleb... Plebe plebegis? <laughs> Lycana. Ministrimon. Philotes. I recognize that name, and I don't know why. Philotiella. Plebulina. Tharsalia. Uh, uh, ooh, that's what is going on in that? Like yeah, that looks like a gall. A gall, I think, is like a thing that insects make, and they like make their homes in them? Question mark. It's the plant's response to the insect laying its eggs. In Quoting back my co-host, it's like the plant's response. Um, yeah, okay, okay, we're getting a thumbs up from a scientist <laughs> behind the scenes. This is Asphondilia. Aphidolites. Asteromyia. This looks like another plant response slash evidence of an insect here. <laughs> Blasodiplosis. Kama. Ooh, that looks like. What is. Huh. Kame. Kame diplosis. Con Contarinia. That's really cool. De Dasinura. Edestochylus. Halodiplosis. Iteomaya. Yapiella. Lasioptera. Lestremia. Lonicerae. Monarthropalpus. Neolasioptera. That's a really cool gall. You can, like, even see, I think, where insects are, like, boring into the plant and then there's, like, some kind of plant reaction to it. Obolodiplosis. Ogliotrophus, oligotrophus, <laughs> paradiplosis, paramaya, pinonia, prodiplosis, protaplonix, rhabdophaga, uh, willow gall midges. Wow, I'm like struggling to read the common names after like casting wizard spells. Um, Reselliella. Res, res, Ro Ropalomaya, Maya, Rebasia, Schizomaya, Maya, my I don't know how to pronounce those Y I A's. Pico Diplosis, Walshomaya. There's another one. Forsipio Maya, Lu Lu Lucopsis, Keoboris. This this is cool. A bl <laughs> Ablabesmia. <laughs> Uh, Alotanipus. Yeah, that is a lot. Truly. Chironomus. Oh, is that a mayfly? No. These are just... These are just okay. Clunio. Cricotipus. Cricotipus. <laughs> and endochironomus. Chironomids. I know that word. Um, if anybody knows what a chironomid is, let me know. Uh, met Metrionemus. Silent C again. Procladius. 
is this like pterodactyl where the p is silent sectrotenibus reo tenatarsis tenibus telmatogetin seaweed midges thought 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 oh mia yeah that's a that's a dang cute bug look at those eyes that's not a bug it's a fly <laughs> but <laughs> Cairo Maya. Um, actually, <laughs> well, actually, Gimno Cairo Mia. Clusia. Silopa. The bristly kelp flies. Oh my gosh. Are these like the ones that we see on the beaches? Like in the dried kelp, I wonder. Dalmania. Uh, Gyro Conops. Myopa. There are some really stunning flies in California. Uh, Physocephala. Like, seconding what Los said in the previous segment? Dang. Thicophora. Zodion. Cryptoketum. Oh? And that's... That's... That's the... Flies? No? Cirula. Clenonurum. Diasimocera. Lipocata. Paralimna. Filigria, I'm kind of on a roll here. Silopa, Fania, Apa, Apatolestes, <laughs> Banania, like banana, Chrysops, deer flies, Hybomitra, Pegasomia, like a Pegasus. I wonder if it has like a like a horn. Um, Ragio, Silvius, Stonemia, Tabinus, the true horse flies. Yep, I think we see a lot of those. Adegenia, Ar Architus, Bombilio Maya, Closicella, Cryptomegenia, Cylindromia, <laughs> that does look like a cylinder, <laughs> Epalpus, e Euclidea, Gania, the cutworm fly, says, uh, that's, that's a strange common name, Gymnoclidea, Gymnosoma, His Histricia, Microthalama, Min Mintho, Moclosoma, Estrophasia, Ormia, Paradigenia, Paradidemia, Pelateria, Phasia, Protodis. <laughs> Protodigenia. Those J's are like really catching me. <laughs> Takina. Oh my gosh, what is going on with that one? That's a cool one. Yeah, and like look at its little face. It looks like it's wearing like a little like skull mask almost. It's giving Jack Skeleton, Skele Jack Skellington, you know? Triarthia. Trichopoda, feather legged flies. Uramia. Vanderwolfia. Xanthoepalpus. Xanthomelanides. Acrosate. Ammoneos. Chromolepida. Lysin Lysilinga. Nebritus. Oz Ozo. Oh gosh. <laughs> Ozodiceromia. Palicephala. Pandivirilia. Ferrocera, Ficus, Tabida, Tabudamima, <laughs> they're above. Vermilio, Solva, that's cool. Xylomaya, Dialys Dialysis, <laughs> Rachiceris, Xylophagus. And I believe we are now going to go on to our next segment featuring Allison Young reading some gastropods and more. So I'll pass it right over. Hey there, I'm Allison Young, co-direct the Thriving California Initiative, that lovely little sticker you see up there in the corner, and also the Center for Biodiversity and Community Science. Uh, I'm a marine biologist by trade, so I was excited to see I have a bunch of barnacles and bivalves, hence the crazy bivalve glasses and the the tiara, um, and some nudibranchs on my list as well. And yeah, my favorite place to see California biodiversity is the tide pools all day, every day, if I could. 
All right, Coronula. Cryptolepis. And the cool thing about barnacle, whale barnacles, is like whales are their own little islands. And people actually study how barnacles move from like one whale to another whale, the same way you study biogeography. Pretty cool. Tetracleta, which reminds me of like this barnacle that we see in the tide pools. This is my favorite, Balanus nubilis, the giant barnacle. Spinaliberis. Radamella. Deltoparopus, polyparopus, scutigerella, just a little centipede thrown in. Awesome. <laughs> Terebratalia. Ooh, now we're on to salps. Um, if you don't know what a salp is, it's a pelagic tunicate. They just are out there in the ocean. They are colonial sometimes and, and uh, singular sometimes as well. This is cyclosalpa. Uh, Pagia, Salpa, typical salps. Thetis, this is the one that you might see on California beaches, watch up. Our common one is Thetis vagina. Funny, great common name, or great scientific name, which is the twin sailed salp, but this is one you might find on our beaches. Hyatella, ooh, we moved into the bivalves. And really quickly, I was just gonna show, I, I brought props, of course. Um, bivalves, so named for their two shells. Those are their valves right there. So I got a whole bunch of bivalves on my list. So Hyatella. Oh, Panopea, okay. So th this is the gooey ducks. It looks like geoducks. Um, and I have to sing a song because if you ever went to camp as a kid, you might have learned the gooey duck song. It's pretty short, but it's pretty fun. You can hear the digger say as they're headed for the bay. Oh, I got to dig a duck, got to dig a duck a day before I get a bucket duck. If I dig a duck a day, so I got to dig a duck, got to dig a duck a day. Dig a duck, dig a duck, dig a gooey duck, dig a duck, dig a gooey duck, dig a day. Dig a duck, dig a duck, dig a gooey duck, dig a duck, dig a gooey duck, dig a duck a day. Well, it takes a lot of luck and a certain kind of pluck just to reach out in the muck just to get a gooey duck for it hasn't got a front and it hasn't got a back and it doesn't know a Donald and it doesn't go quack. Dig a duck, dig a duck, dig a gooey duck, dig a duck, dig a gooey duck, dig a duck a day. Dig a duck, dig a duck, dig a gooey duck, dig a duck, dig a gooey duck, dig a duck a day. There's the gooey duck song. Thanks for the dancing that was happening. That like really spurred me on there. Gooey ducks are like the largest clams ever too. They can be like 10 pounds. They're huge. They're amazing. Look for a picture if you can like Google it. Look for an actual full gooey duck. They're amazing. Ensis. Siliqua. Solon. Akar. Anadara. Larkinia. Ooh, we've moved on to the cockles. I brought a cockle. Here's a cockle shell. Glycemeris. Americadaria. Dallocardia, Levicardium, the egg cockles, Donax, Gari, the sunset clams. These are really beautiful. You can find them on the beaches sometimes and they have like beautiful like pinks and oranges and purples, just lovely. Heterodonax, Natalia, Cumingia, Semeli. That's a real pretty one. One of my favorites. Taglius. Taglus. Tagellus. <laughs> Ameritella. <laughs> Ida Tellina. Leporimetus. Macoploma. Megangulus. Rexatherius. A lot of bivalves that I don't know. Talina, that's a cute little one. Glands. Ooh, we're moving into mussels. Like I brought a mussel shell. Clamidoconcha. Cymatoia. Kellia, the Kelly clams. Well, that's a perfect genus for Kelly clams. <laughs> Lasea. Ramphidodonta, Ramphidonta, <laughs> Lamaria. Ooh, that's pretty. It's got all its like little tentacles out. That's lovely. Epilucina. Uh, looks like here. I'm guessing it's probably pronounced Hare or something like that. <laughs> Lucinska. Cryptomaya. 
pl Platyodon, Svenia, Barnia, one named after Barney, apparently. Ooh, Chesea. Okay, so um, these, now we're moving into Piddix. Um, and I brought a Piddix shell here. And these are super cool because Piddix um, actually burrow into the rock. So if you're ever out in the tide pools and something is like squirting at you as you're walking through the tide pools, what you're seeing here are the siphons of these guys that are like burrowed into the rocks. And they are squirting at you when you walk through the tide pools, these Piddix. Netastoma, Parafolis, Penatella. I think that's what this one is, is a Penatella. Zerfea, Toretto. That's an interesting looking bivalve. Huh. Adula. Ooh, now we're moving it like these are razor clams. Brachodontes, Leosolanus, Modiolatus. Modiolus. Oh, more muscles now. Mytelicepta. Ladella. Sakella. In rhyming ones. Yoldia. Teria, the winged oysters. <laughs> Anomia. <laughs> Pododesmus. Ooh, false jingles. I brought a false jingle in too. They're very, the inside of them are very pretty. They got this like lovely green color, the false jingles. Um, they're hard to find though because they're like super flat on the rocks, like usually underneath them. They look like oysters because they're in the same family as oysters. But the false jingles, podes, po, Pododesmus. Tadinia. Argopectin. Clammies, the dwarf fan shells. Crassidoma. Oh, we're moving to the scallops. Um, you can see that when you like buy seashell swag, scallops is like the default um, seashell that people like to use for seashell swag. Um, but yeah, that's what. And I, here's a. Um, oh, wait, wait, no, it's in here. In my scallop purse. Scallop shell. <laughs> Crassidoma. That actually is a crassidoma. I think I don't know where you go. <laughs> Everywhere I go. I'm, I'm an unhinged shell person with a shell purse full of shells. <laughs> Leopectin. Leptopectin. Naughty, naughty pectin. Solomaya. Musculium. Margaritifera, almost like margarita, but it's a margaritifera. Anodonta. Gonidea. Ar Arctica. Chama. Pseudochama. Ooh, the false chama, the pseudochama. Mactromeris. Mactrotoma. Rangia. Simomactra, Neoleptin, Zemesina, Amiantis, Calithaca, Chioni, Chionista, this is like a good Spanish, Chionista, uh, Glo Globa Venice, Irusella. Nutricola, the dwarf Venus clams. Oh, these guys are really tiny, also very cute. Very little. Petricola. Entodesma. Ly Lyon Lyoncia. <laughs> Mytilomeria. Heteroclitus. These shells have such interesting shapes. Like, I don't think I've ever seen one like this. Very cool, though. Obviously, someone has, though. There's a photo. <laughs> <laughs> Somewhere out there, they can be found in California. Periploma. Thracia. Onikia, Ani, the giant hook squids. Just throwing squids in there. Awesome. Onikia. <laughs> Abronica. Well, now we're into nudibranchs. Squids to nudibranchs. That was like a rapid transition. Halaxa. Ajiri. So I feel like I'm going to be pretty good at these because like nudibranchs basically are one of my favorite things in the world. Um, but, you know, there are some with some really hard to pronounce uh, genus names. So we'll see if we get through them all. Ajiris. This is the salt and pepper dord. Very cute. Aeolidia, the shag rug. 
I'm just going to throw common names in there <laughs> um, for the ones that we have on our coast. Uh, this is anti alial oleolidella. Um, this is this one here is olives. Olives aeol aeolid is the name of this one. It's beautiful. It's it's a wonderfully long long name. <laughs> Cerberilla, apata, armina. Armina is a nudibranch that I've never seen that I would love to see someday. Babakina, um, if you ever have a chance to see a babakina, they have like uh, candy corn on their serrata. They're amazing, beautiful little slugs, pink. Aldisa, it's a two-spotted one. Cadlina, this one here looks like a modest Cadlina, perhaps. Uh, Diaphorodorus, Diaphorodorus, this is the ridge-tailed nudibranch. Um, very long name for a very little tiny nudibranch. Felimare, these are really pretty. We only see these in Southern California. I'd love to, I wish we had them in here in Northern California. Felimita, another Southern California one. Corambe, these guys uh, camouflage with, Barn oh, with uh, uh, bryozoans. They look exactly like bryozoans. When they're on them, they're impossible to find. Corifella, that's the, the three-lined one. Um, Cuminotus. Cuthonella. Cuthona, another favorite of mine. Dendrodorus. Doriopsila. Doriopsila means sea goddess. So here, right here, here is your sea goddess. Dendronotus. We've got a lot of dendronotus species, nudibranch species on our coast. Dirona. This is the colorful dirona, this one right here, this photo. Adagema. Bactodorus. Now we're into um, things that are not nudibranchs, but look like a lot like nudibranchs. They're sea slugs, not nudibranchs. Nudibranchs are sea slugs. Not all sea slugs are nudibranchs. Oh, Dialula. Now we're back into nudibranchs. This is the San Diego Dorid right here, this photo. Gaitodorus. This is the Heath Dorid, this photo. Jeruna. Another Dorid. Peltodorus. This is like the sea lemon, the classic sea lemon right here. Rostanga. This is the red Dorid. Good name for it. <laughs> Turinga. I don't know that one. Thordisa. Canu Olivia, another one I've never seen. Doris, old school. Dodo, these guys are so tiny and little. They're amazing to find though, but they're like so small. But we have a few species of them on our coast. Pleurobranchiaea. Berthella, okay, this is another, fault. Not, new, not a neuterbranch, it's a sea slug. <laughs> Berthelina, the gumdrops, not neuterbranchs, sea slugs. Tersica. Willamia, named after someone named William, I'm guessing. <laughs> Anadenulus. Hooray! Done. That was an amazing list. I enjoyed it. <laughs> yeah, thanks so much for reading through that. Um, so much fun to see, like, the absolute massive variety of mollusks that are out there. So many. I mean, that was just like a small number of all of the mollusks out there. There's so many more. <laughs> Smallusks, you know. Smallusks, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Do you have like a favorite? A favorite mollusk? Well, I mean, I would. I, nudibranchs are going to have to be my favorite like group of mollusks. My favorite nudibranch, oh, that's a really tough one. I really love the white line Dirona, which we actually didn't see in this one. It's a more northern species, but we can find them like up in like Mendocino, Humboldt. And every once in a while, when we're really lucky, we see them here in the Bay Area along our along our coast. That's a great pick. Yeah. Um, well, thanks so much, Allison. And we're going to go ahead and pass it over to our next speaker, Sydney. I'm just going to like, oh, you stay there. Oh. <laughs> we've got We've got a whole set up here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we're going to go pass it over to Sydney. Okay. And you're absolutely on. Great. Do I introduce myself? Yeah, introduce My, yourself. I'm Sydney. Uh, I work here on the Thriving California Initiative. Um, and I am so excited to be here. Thank you for having me. And thank you for all this work for this extravaganza. 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 Um, if you couldn't tell, I'm dressed as a worm. I was going to wear my Heidi Klum worm costume, but it's actually, unfortunately, at the dry cleaning. So um, this is where we're at. Yeah. OK, let's go. Plasobdella, turtle leeches. Mysdobdella. Darrow, that was a good one. Tubifex. 
Eurekis, innkeeper worms. And that is actually who I'm dressed as today. <laughs> I'm dressed as the innkeeper worm. If you couldn't tell, innkeeper worms are really cool. I'd really love to hold one one day. Um, never seen them in real life. You got to suck them out of the mud. But they make little burrows for other creatures. Um, and they're very cool. And they're, they're around. Um, Aberenicola. Aberenicola. Arenicola. Um, Notomastus. Chatopteris. Phylochetopteris. <laughs> yep. Seriformia. Oh, thread guild worms. Sorry. Read both. Dode Seris. C Dode Caseria. Yeah. Timoretae. That one's kind of kind of cool. Flabolidurma. Flabolidurma. Uh Flabiligera. Flabe symbio symbios. Not symbiosis. Um Ferusa. Semiodera, Oxyothella, Praxilura, Armandia, Armandia, Polio, Oh my gosh, the PHTH, not the PHTH, Polio, Phthalamus, Thalamus, yeah, Nain, Nainerus. Hyboscolex, killed that one. Um, Bocardia, Pseudo Polydora, uh, Streblo Spio, Ame Ameana, Ameana, Pista, Poly Polycirus. That's also kind of weird. Not weird, just. You know, Raymex, Philippus, Tangle Worms, um, Travisia. Oh, hold on. Yeah, please hold. We're we're doing a little bit of what they call a metamorphosis, but not a metamorphosis because because. Worms do not metamorphosize. So true. so true. And that's important that we know that. It's the metaphorical metamorphosis. It is the, will? yeah. Oh, I love that. I love okay, how are they looking? Upside down, but that's okay. Okay, but like. Yeah, slay. Yeah, slay. Okay. <laughs> Galgula. <laughs> Globia. Um, Grotella, Grotelliforma, Hadina, Helicoverpa, Heli, Heli Launch, Heli Launch, Lockney, Locky, Lonky, Helion, Heliothis, Heliothodes, Heliotropha. Hemioxoa. Hemigrotella. Hexo, hexorthodes. Hexorthodes. Homoclea. Homor, homor, homorthodes. Yeah, yeah. Um, Lake Canobia. La Cinepolia. Ooh. Lucania. Linistriasteria. That is a lot. Okay. Um, Litholomia. Lithophane. 
Mommy Frontia. Mega Megalographa. Melon Craw. Oh my gosh. Look at that one's face. Um, Mezogona. That looks furry. It's kind of freaky. Metaponumata. Microthetus. Microhelia. Meodera. Um, Moralia. My themna. That one looks a little hairy too. It's kind of cute. Nedra. Neogalia. Neogrotella. Neotara Tarake. No no cloa. Ocro plura. Ologia, that's pretty. Orthosia. Oxysenemis. Panthea. Papaipema. Parabagrotus. Um, Paradroma. Paragonica. Phobolosia. Plag Plagiomimicus. So I have to do is like it mimicking. I don't know. I'm not gonna. I'm not. I'm not gonna make things up. Okay. Pleromella. Pleromelodi. Melodia. Meloida. Polia. That's cool. Um, Ponometia. Properigia. That one's cool too. Proto deltote. Proto gigia. Proto perigea. Proto protosodes. Provia. Um, Proxenus. Uh, Safida. Pseudol Pseudolpia. Pseudonarta. Pseudeva. Pseudobryomia. Mom, pseudo yeah. Not to be confused with pseudocopy valeria. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I'm sure. I'm sure it's been a struggle their whole lives. Um, Pseudodorthodes. Um, Pyria. Rachiplusia, Raphia, Rizagrotus, right? Yeah, sorry, Riasia, Shinia, Scotogramma, Setagrotus, Spalotus. Spodoptera, army worm moths. Spraguea. Steria. Stretchia. Stretchia. Stylopoda. Sympistus. Syngrapha. Trichos. Tri, trichocosmia. Tricholeta. 
Trichoplusia. Um, Trichodestra. That one's very cool. Tripedia. Um, Triosinemis. Tripudia. Tristilla. Euphaeus. Eulone. Eulone. Okay. Unciella. Um, Water Ella. Um, Xanthro. Xantho. Thrix. Xantho Thrix. Um, Zestia. Is the X like a Z? Do we know? Or is it? No one knows. No one knows. There's no right way. There's there's truly no right way. Right way. Great. Because um, there's I'm seeing Z's here now, and I'm like, oh. Um, Zosteropoda. Um, Zothica. Um, Meganola. Nola. Um, nice, nice tell. Oh my gosh, nice deola. Clostera. That one's cool. Daytona. Um, Furcula. Glufisia. Um, Nadata. That one looks like it's wearing a little like shawl to the Met Gala. Um, Noto Donta. Ianas Ianasa. Eurcia. Um, Phaeosia. Fire. Phrygenidia. Um, Schizura. <laughs> Hello. What? Are we? That, that was your list? And that was my list. I was waiting to see. I have a lot of moths right now in my bathroom. Um, and I was waiting to see the kind so I could shout them out. Oh, um, yeah, they look like? all of my room, they're like little, they're like kind of pale, um, little guys, but there's one big mama that's above the, the shower and everyone's trying to figure out who left the window open all night. It was me. Um, but I didn't see them out there, but shout out moths. Moths are cool. Um, worms are cool. Moths are cool. Worms are cool. Yeah, that's facts. Thank you so much for your absolutely magnificent metaphorical metamorphosis. I am honored. It was, was honored to share that oh, with you. Such a treasure to witness. Great. <laughs> yeah. Thanks so much, Sydney. Um, thank you for having me. Good luck. You all are awesome. Thank you. And hello, everybody who might just be joining us. Uh, we are the we are running the 12 hour california nature extravaganza here right now in honor of california biodiversity day uh we've just crossed our halfway mark which is pretty phenomenal um we've been doing this for like six and a half hours uh been here since 8 a.m pacific time so um yeah we've, we've seen a lot of things we've seen some moths we've seen some worms we've seen sharks and fishes and uh ants and all kinds of nature. And now we have a very special segment from our very own curator of anthropology, Shannon Tushingham, and Greg Castro, who is the cultural director, or culture director for the Association of the Ramaytush Ohlone. Um, and I will pass it over to them to introduce what they're going to be talking about today. But um, yeah, we're so stoked to have them on. We're just getting set up back there. So yeah. Are we on? Oh, great. Okay. Thank you so much. Um, it's great to be here. I'm Shannon Tushingham. I'm, uh, as you said, I, I am the uh, new anthropology curator and, um, here at the Cal Academy, and I'm here with my really good friend, um, Greg Castro, um, who is here to, we're here to honor California, California's great biodiversity. And um, today we wanted to take this opportunity to honor 
um, Native Californians' connection, longstanding connection with the natural world. So today we decided that we would um, select some creatures and plants and animals that um, uh, had a special connection with Native people, but there's no way we could name them all in this segment. So what do you think, Greg? And we didn't call them by those weird names. That I think it's Latin or Sanskrit or something <laughs> yeah. like that, but it's all foreign to me, so yeah. it doesn't make a difference. So um, first time here um, and also first time for Shannon to do this. Um, and we debated about whether we should practice or not. We decided not to. Uh, we were told that makes it more fun for you guys. Uh, and I'm getting the <laughs> thumbs up over here on the side. Um, so I'm going to start off with a song, though, because we need a song. I need a song. I don't know if you need a song, but I need a song um, just for me. Um, all three of you out there that are watching, um, that's that's what's here. Don't tell me if it's any different, okay? Um, yeah, so, okay. I'm, I'm going to do something called the Fog Song. Um, uh, here in Ramatush country, uh, most of our culture was taken from us during the mission in early California times, and our pe people were pushed out from our area. So we went to other areas and intermingled with other tribes, and I'm also Rumson and Totoral Salinan, who are the southern neighbors to the Ohlone. So I'm going to bring a song from the Rumson area, which is Monterey Bay, and it taught me by my cousin. This is a fog song. You may have heard this before. Um, and I use it to clear the air, clear the room, and, and clear me in this case, because I don't know what I'm going to say. Uh, so, Ara pa chitia Juan, wasia him. 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 So we were watching the, the previous person here, and I noticed there's a bait and switch going on, right? Because we were given a list that had English in it. Yes, that's right. I don't think it, we're not going to see that here, are we? I don't think so. Our plan was to sort of do the Latin and then the English and some. Ramatish words, right? If possible. If, yeah, I don't know if we're going to so, be able to do that. But we're going to really wing it. They're yeah. really testing us here. Oh, yeah. This is part of the, yeah. that you do this to new employees, right? So <laughs> this is kind of, part of okay. All right, we're ready. So we want to go back and forth maybe? Yeah. Maybe, or, okay. Yeah, let's right. share the grief. Let's do it. Oh, yeah, you do that yeah, one. Okay, I'll do this one. Oh, no, it has the English. So oh, it does. Merm Cositis. North American honeypot ants. Had no idea. Pogo nom myrex. Typical American harvest ants. There's typical ants, okay. And we included these because um, these ants are found in a lot of arid regions and um, they're considered a delicacy. Uh, some of the ants actually um, work with aphids that have honeydew and it's considered a really yeah. delicacy, sweet. Yes, right? it, it, it provides people. sweetness, strangely sweetness. enough. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Dolicho Vespula. Aerial yellow jackets. Vespula. Ground yellow jackets. Again, uh -huh. insects are good food, good protein. Antheria. Antheria. Ah, Tusar moths. Coloradia. Coloradia. A, a winged bug. So I know Coloradia pandora, so those are pandora moths, and ah. pandora caterpillars were a huge delicacy among the Mono and a lot of native communities, right? Yeah, it's mostly um, towards the east, right? Yeah, yeah, I think so, yep. So yeah. that's a whole other story. That's a, that's a good <laughs> one, though. I like that story. Hyala fora. Butterfly. <laughs> or maybe a moth, huh? Hylace. Another moth. Melanopolis. Grasshopper. Ah. Tasty. Yeah, another tasty one. Anabras. Anabras. Cricket. Some food consider that tasty too. Yeah. They are. They're good. Ellipses. I, I don't know what that is. I think Me, it's a bug. It's a bug. It's a good picture. <laughs> <laughs> I like the picture. Neotridactylus. Is that a cricket? Sounds like a dinosaur, but dry. It's a type of cricket, I think. Yeah. Yeah. 
Um, okay, <laughs> this is we're getting into more. Yeah, cancer. So <laughs> edible crab. Yeah. So archaeological sites we find lots of lots of crab shell, and they continue to be eaten. All this yummy food. So I think we're getting into the seafood sort of portion of this segment. Uh oh. oh good thing we <laughs> so, had lunch. Yeah, I know. Really. <laughs> Um, polypsis? Gooseneck barnacle. Oh, yeah. Mm. I mean, the, I can say, give you a little snippet. I know I heard that the Talawa um, will light fires on top of barnacle to loosen them, not just pluck them for barnacles to get to get mass the, harvest Get them. the muscle, yeah. Yeah, it's pretty ingenious. Yeah. They'll leave, if they just pluck them, they'll leave part of it behind. Yeah. Um, Clupia? Herring in an odd situation <laughs> <laughs> that looks like a big herring too. Okay. <laughs> Sardin sardinops sardines anchoa anchovies i'm glad they didn't show them. i'm not a fan of anchovies myself personally <laughs> but maybe we should put a can <laughs> and growless oh there's the yeah, there they there are you go. okay yeah. uh, somebody heard me yeah. anchovies there they are so these are all mass harvested fish. And I think we're getting to one of my favorites. Maybe the next one. Oh, no. Oh, no. Not, OK. Tacato stomus. Common, Common suckers. suckers. Hypomesis. There you go. There we go. Smelt. Smelts. Yeah. Oh, Smelt. yeah. Hypomesis Smelt. proteosis is surf smelts. And on the North Coast, people mass harvested them. Still continue to mass harvest them. And they have a big uh, ceremony and gathering and celebration when they have the smelt come in. Yeah. Yeah. And they're endangered in a lot of places, but they're yeah, they're cutting. I think the taller are cutting and cutting back because of that, right? Yeah, yeah. We should do a shout out to Santaya. Yeah, hi Santaya. I'm yeah. sure you're not watching them. You're out smelting. <laughs> out smelting, yeah. Spirinkus. So night smelt. Yeah, there's so there a beach. Those are another. Uh, uh, oh, is beach, that the night harvest? The night harvest, night ah. smelt. Yeah. I didn't know they had a special name. Yeah. I thought they were just Spring insomniac Kostarsky. smell. Yeah, we find those, we find thousands, tens of thousands of their bones in archaeological sites. People, they were they were good food. Ah. Amphistichus? Some amphibian thing. What? Paralictus? Another amphibian thing. Flatfishes, I guess, yeah. Not familiar with that one. Oncorhynchus. Ah, yes. Salmon and trout, really? Yeah, salmonids. So they were a huge, huge food. I mean, and they're one, they're emblematic oh. of, you know, California in so many ways. A yeah. lot of people will talk about California native people, and it's all about salmon, acorns, pine nuts, but there were so many other foods that they ate. That's right, too, but that's the right? focus. And now they're trying to bring them back. I'm, you know, I yep. got involved in a project where they, Repopulated yeah. re, uh, a uh, creek just south of San Francisco here. Yeah, uh, that's really cool. Yeah, and the Yurok tribe. You've heard about what happened with the oh, Yurok yeah. tribe this year, which is yeah, really they, sad, actually. Years ago, when I went up there, they they took a bunch of us up the river to where they had the big fish kill in the yeah. eddy. Yeah, and they showed us why and how that happened because yeah. the water had dropped to a certain level. The fish got in, but they couldn't get back out, and they just like got stuck and they started dying. Yeah, by the Thousands, Terrible. tens yeah. of thousands. Yeah. Sebastes. Rockfishes. Lots of different types of rockfish. Sebastolobus. More rockfishes. <laughs> Can we trade? You want to do the? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> Too late. Uh, darn it. No, that's that's the Latin chair. Sorry. Yeah. Okay. Oh. <laughs> um, Aquila. True Aquila? eagles? Does yeah. that mean that implies there's false eagles, I, like imposters? I, maybe. <laughs> Real tail hog. Ah. Condors. Gen, Genoptus. So you ah. have that condor um, like, and, program, right? And, and it Wonderful. started in our area. My cousin Linda Yamani oh, was yeah. was there when they released the first one and sang to it when they released it and named it, and uh, still doing it. We just. Uh, last year, year before, we were involved in a re release in Vantana Wilderness and uh, got to name one of them, Teach, in the Salinian language. Is, cool. is con Does Teach mean something? Or is it, it means Condor. <laughs> oh, it means Condor. Oh, okay. All right. It's a good name. <laughs> um, Anis. Mallards, Pintails, and, and Allies? 
allies. I guess it's good to have friends. <laughs> Oxura. Typical stiff tails. I wonder if they resent that being called typical. <laughs> Cali Pepla. Crested quails. Yeah, Those like cuties. we have quails in our area, but they don't look that pretty. Mm, <laughs> yeah. Um, Fulkia. Fulkia. Coot. Coots. Collaptus. Flickers and allies. Oh, flicker. So endangered and very popular in back in the day with baskets. And now they can't yeah. use them anymore. These, I know a lot of people use uh, duck, duck, certain duck feathers, in, you know, are yeah. close to flicker. And then sometimes they yeah. help them with a little color <laughs> to, to imitate flicker because we can't use flicker anymore. Yeah. And this, oh, here we go. The woodpeckers, right? So three toed, yeah. yeah. Picoides. Three toed woodpeckers. So their, their feathers are used some in the red. Either, some species have the red, have the red. The bright that's right. red that's used in regalia and yeah um, i don't know if you use that down here but in the uh, north we used know. a lot of flicker and i think you know in yeah. some other ones and and now we use other ones that are more accessible yep they're hard to yeah yeah i mean and i learned from the hoopa have this really ingenious probably other communities too they have a really ingenious woodpecker trap basketry trap that I had never seen before oh really cool so <laughs> Oh, okay. Are we, I don't think we're going to get to everything here. No. <laughs> too chatty. Now, Nano Terum. American Cormorants. Good eggs. People ate their eggs. Urile. North Pacific Cormorants. That looks more familiar. Uh, Triacus. Oh. Mm -hmm. Okay. Sharks. Ah. sharks. Ant Antilocapra. Yep. Yeah, it's an antelope. Not in our area. Service. Unless you're, unless you're by Hearst. Ah, now there's some of those in our area, and there is Ta'a in Salinan. Ta'a. Ta'a. Oda Coilus. Puma. Oh, I forgot that one. What's Puma? Sorry. Mountain lions. Eumatopius. Stellar sea lions? Is there like ordinary or mundane <laughs> sea, <laughs> sea lions? <laughs> Ursus. Arctic bears, okay. Yeah, good. Gray whale. Oh. Ashrictus, Ashrictius. Gray whales. All right. See those in the Monterey Bay sometimes. Hmm. Silvalagus. Oh, cottontail rabbits. Ugh. Yeah. There's so many of them. There. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, because all the predators have gone. You know. That's, so now they, you know, the yeah. the ground squirrels, the rodents, the Cottontails, yeah. they're all over the place now because the predators are all gone. Mm -hmm. Lepus. Hares and jackrabbits, more overrun animals. Lampetra. So I think you? that's the uh, lamp, lamprey. Lamprey? The, yeah. Lamprey? Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah. And they call them eels up north. I mean, yeah, they, that's, they, what I, that's yeah. what I said, eels. And they're, they're, yeah. But a particular kind of eel? Anadromous. Yeah, the river. Okay. Yeah. Oh, People yeah. People get them with gaffs and just... You know they can, they can get with the hook basically yeah. and swing them around and, and they're and good. They're real them. greasy eating. Yeah. So like sushi, <laughs> right? So <laughs> okay, this is not fair. Strong gylocentroidus, uh, purple <laughs> sea urchin. Yeah. That was yeah, great. Yeah. Uni. Oh, thanks. Ooh. I kind of made it up, but oh, <laughs> no. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> so I think it's encouraged to actually these guys up because there's so many of them now right because they're sort of waxing and waning with the otter population that's right think, so. that's right so you know as the yeah. water ot otters go away they go blooming mm, yeah clinicardium cockle all right oh that's awesome. a good picture macoma another shell myotillus black muzzles more good food australia so oysters tresses long neck clam Lacoma. Little neck clam. Saxodomus. Oh, Washington clam. You, this is where you came from, yeah, right? <laughs> yeah, that's where I was working. Yeah. Pivella. Pismo clam. Again, really? we've, uh, at sites we find just massive mounds of these um, these uh, shell, right? Yeah. Shell mounds. <laughs> right. Octopus. Yeah, octopus. Yeah. <laughs> One minute. Okay, let's see. Haliotis. Abalone. Ah, good food. yes. 
Good pendants a, can be made out of that. Yeah, I use a lot of it. In fact, we're going to hopefully do one here for Cal Academy. Yeah. Olivella? Olive snails. Okay. Yeah, those snail shells used in the... Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so Ariel, Ariola Max, which Banana were a starvation slugs. food I read somewhere. So. Oh, really? Yeah. We think we're really bad. Terragofria. Yeah, that's something. Well, <laughs> ne Neurocystis. Oh. So, do we have the nori here too, Paul? Mm -hmm. Postelia. Sea bombs. Oh, here it is. Porphyra. Nori. Good food. Uh. This is the stuff that, yeah, people collect. Really, really delicious and um, nutritious. Pyropia? Allium? Onions. There you go. Good root Blooming foods. Blooming onion okay, in that case. The root, yeah, the root foods, right? Yeah. Bordeas. Bordeas, yeah. Really, really good foods. Camacea. Camas. Super important. Chlorogallum. Ah, soap plants. So there's a soap root we were talking about. Yeah, yeah. that's a very interesting project I hopefully get you guys involved in. I'm ready. <laughs> Are we done? Okay. That's it. Thank for you the very first much. people we missed, sorry. Oh, but can I just do a plug for a couple of books? If you want to learn more, um, this is a really good accessible book, California Indians and Their Environment. It's by no means comprehensive, but it's a great introduction. And the Native American Ethnobotany, which is another introduction to different species. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye. We survived. Thank you so much, Greg and Shannon. Um, that was amazing. And just for y'all watching out there, there are so many more plants and animals that are on this list as significant to Native peoples past and present. So um, yeah, just go go check out those books that Shannon recommended. Um, there's so much good information in there to start from. And we are going to go ahead and move forward to some, some other organisms. We've got some more beetles, of course, because there are Truly, so many beetles, <laughs> as we've said maybe like 12 times already, and it's, it's only uh, hour six. Um, and we're also going to see some more birds, some more plants, etc. So, so, so many things left to go with. And I'm not entirely sure how many more, uh, how many more names there are to read. I know it's in the thousands likely, but I do think we have probably read about 4,000 at this point or nearing 4,000. So that's that's pretty cool. Um, and we're working toward a grand total of maybe around like 7,500, you know, like no sweat. But anyways, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and pass it on to our next speaker on the 12 hour California nature extravaganza, Patrick. Well, my name is uh, Patrick. I'm a presenter here at the California Academy of Sciences and um, I enjoy all kinds of wildlife. I'm a birder, go out looking in Golden Gate Park for stellar shades, anything I can find, but I also love my cetaceans. So yes, we can get started. Diphilostoma, Cactophagus, Trifiptorus, Rhinostomus, Rhodobanus, Rhinchophorus, Siphophorus, Cytophilus, grain weevils, Acilius, small flat diving beetles, Agab Agabinus, Agabinus, Agabus, Columbides, Copalatus, Coptotomus, Cybister, Dytiscus, Arides, Graphodarus, Hydroporus, Ilibiosoma, Lacophilus, Lacanectes, Leodesus, Mistonectes, oh, Neoclepiodites, Rantus, 
San San Philippides. Thermonectus. Oh, that's a that's a mouthful. <laughs> Actinoceramorphus. Nice. Aeolus. Agriotes. Aelaus. Eyed click beetles. Ampedus. And Chastis. Athos. Campylo. Campylomorphus. Cardioforus. Chal Chalcolapidius. Conoderus. Dalapius. Danosoma. Deranacus. Dicropidius. Diplostephus. Dolorosomus. Alater. Esthesopus. Gambrinus. Hemicrepidius. Heteroderes. Horistonotus. Hypn Hypnoidus. Hypogenus. Idolus. Lacan. Leptoschema. Schema. Megapenthes. Melanactes. Melan Melanotus. Octonotus. Peridonus. Pidiobias. Pollu Polludius. Pseudonastinus. Celebsosomus. Sylvanellator. Tetralimonius. Acreoptitheria. Amphicosmos. Anastocus. Anthrax, the charcoal bee flies. Aphabantus. Apolysis. Astrophanes. Bombilius. Greater bee flies. Are there lesser bee flies? Chrysanthrax. Conophorus. Diocanthrax. Dipalta. Diphilostoma. Oh, oh. Cactophagus. <laughs> Make a great shot of uh, some kind of arthropod on a beetle, um, on a cactus. Dipalta, Eusecia, Exoprosopa, Geminaria, Garen, Hemipenthes. Heterostylum. Ims. <laughs> Lepidanthrax. Lordotus. Neodiplocampta. Naia. Pantarbes. Paracosmus. Paravilla. Posilanthra. And Posilanthra. Anthrax. Cystocus, woolly bee flies. Theban etimaya. Thyridanthrax. Toxophora. Triplo triplocus. Villa. Xenox. Acerithosiphon. Aphis. 
Aula Corthum, Brachycotus, Bragia, Caliphus, Carolinia, Cabrielia, Kytophorus, Sonara, giant conifer aphids, Diorathus, Drena Drapanophis, Dicephus, Epimibophis, <laughs> Ariosoma, Eucalypteris, Eucaratio, Eulachnus, Euthoracaphis, Greenidia, that's kind of green, yeah. Hyatophis, Hyaloterus, Hyperomyzus, Hysteronura, Illinois, Lip Lipophis, Longestigma, Mac Macrocythonella, Anthemid aphids, Melanaphis. Ah, now we get to one of my favorite group of birds, the Pro Order Procellariformes, which are the shearwaters, petrels, storm petrels, and albatross, and uh, hopefully you can see this, you can see them. <laughs> Wonderful back there. North American <laughs> tube noses. So uh, quick, if we have time, I have a skull of a shearwater or a petrel, and I'm hopefully I'm seeing it. You can see that they have a bit of a tube nose. That's why they're called tube noses. And these birds actually have excellent sense of smell. A lot of birds often use sight or sound if you're an owl, but turkey vultures have great sense of smell, but so do these tube noses because these are birds that spend the majority of their life out in the open ocean, only really coming onto land to breed. So to help me with our group of birds, I have my good friend, Albatross here. <laughs> yeah. Oh, hello there. So we have Phoebastria, the North Pacific Albatrosses, which include black-footed, short-tailed albatross and laysan albatross, which Wisdom, the oldest banded bird, is a laysan albatross. I believe she's early 70s, around 72 years this year. So she is a great parent and she's a beloved albatross. Hydrobates. Ocean ice. So these are really cool storm petrels. Wilson storm petrels, the ones with the little white butts, although a lot of these storm petrels also have white butts on them. They do this behavior where as if the water, um, there's not a lot of wind, the water is calm, they kind of, not the best foot to uh, de demonstrate, but they kind of hop up and down on the water. And scientists, as far as I know, don't quite know exactly why they do this behavior. So, but it's really cool to see. Ardenna, southern shearwaters. Calinectris, large shearwaters. Fulmaris, Fulmaris of two species, northern and southern Fulmar. Procellaria, Teradroma, gadfly petrels. And Puffinus, small shearwaters, which surprisingly do not include any of our puffins. So, totally different. Well, thank you for joining us for California Biodiversity Day. And as you're seeing all these organisms, keep an eye out. You never know what you're going to see. As you're taking a walk, keep an eye out. Or for birds or any kind of animals, just keep an ear out. There's tons of wildlife to see. All righty. Thank you so much, Patrick. Um, that was a delight. Yeah. And we're just going to read a few more little crustacean decapod thing no just kidding plants some plants <laughs> gonna read some plants uh and then we're gonna pass it off to our next speaker so i'm gonna get into it did i kill a stemma the wild hyacinths try to lay out lilies lilium true lilies zero phylum turkey beard and common bear grass i got so excited carex true sedges Schoenoplectus. spar sparganium burr reeds is a speed round, y'all. Typha, cattails. Angelica. Osmoriza, sweet Sicily. Maybe. Carweeds. Maybe? Media. Media. Waipia, mule's ears. 
Ariodiction. Er that's Yerba Santa. And we're going to pass it off to our next speaker, who is Rebecca Johnson. Um, you saw Allison earlier. Rebecca also works with Allison as the co-director of Thriving California and the community science team. So I'm going to pass it over. Hi, everyone. I'm so excited. I have no name yet to see, but I guess you all can see me. Um, happy California Biodiversity Day. Um, I guess we're maybe almost two thirds getting there through this amazing, getting to two thirds of this amazing um, endeavor. Thanks so much to the amazing team, Darian and Aria over here, um, who are making this so fun. I'm so looking forward to reading these names. Um, I've been practicing a little. Um, first up, we have some sea spiders. And I love, I think Aria curated my list a little bit. It makes me so happy. So sea spiders, here's one, um, Emothea and Emothelella, Nymphosis, Tanistylum, and sea spiders and Anoplodactylus. So sea spiders are amazing. They are the closest relative to the rest of the arachnids, things like spiders and scorpions that you know, and mites that you know from on land, um, but these still live in the ocean. Phoixochilidum, Pycnogonum, my favorite of all the small, this is a small sea spider because it is a little bit small, but it's so beautiful. Um, so these basically stayed in the ocean when the rest of the arachnids um, made it onto land and they share a common ancestor that most likely lived, a little bit lived in the ocean. Um, and here now we get to some squids, Doria toothis, um, Halifron, Argonata, this is an argonaut, another kind of cephalopod, this cool shell. Um, Entro octopus, the giant Pacific octopus is in this group, the biggest octopus in the world. Um, super amazing. Um, here's one on the beach, not so happy, but incredible, amazing animals. Dosidicus, Rosia, Aplesia, or sea hare. So now we're getting closer to the things that I study. Um, this is a sea hare. It's a kind of um, mollusk or gastropod, a little sea snail. It actually has a little shell. It's inside. You can't really see it. And if they're called sea hares, because somebody looked at this and thought maybe it looked like a little bit of a rabbit with those little rhinophores. And then Philoplesia, which is probably the best sea hare, actually. This one lives um, in eelgrasses. And you can see it here on a piece of eelgrass. And um, you have to squint a little bit because it blends in almost completely with um, the eelgrass that it's, it's sitting on. And these guys are actually part of a really awesome food web in um, sloughs here in California, but I probably don't have time to tell the story, but they are awesome. Um, Rictaxis, also a little shelled gastropod. Aglaia, another shelled little slug-like-ish, but with a little shell. Melanoclamus. Navinax, another awesome slug that does have a little internal shell. And this one's a predator and eats tons of other nudibranchs and sea slugs and um, almost anything, but really loves those slugs, little shells or not. Bulla, <laughs> this is a really funny picture of Bulla. This one has a, a really a, um, a shell, pretty big shell. Also, they live in the sand. Diaphana, oh my gosh, we need a picture of Diaphana on Ina. It's a really beautiful little snug. Um, Hamanoia, Hamanoia probably. Actiochina, Kina, Actiochina, let's say. Um, Caricinum, um, Melanpus, um, Pedipes, Trimusculus. Oh my gosh, one of my favorites of all. This is a limpet, it has a little shell here but it's an air breathing mollusk. So it lives in the ocean at places like in the tops of caves and places where it's not always underwater um, and it breathes air. So it has a lung, although it looks like a limpet that you would find in the inner tidal and they are so cool. Diodora, which is another limpet with a little shell. We're going to in the shell, the limpets with shells, which are snails with a plate-like shell. Diodora, fizz, what was the next one? Is Fissurella, you can see the little um, pull there, um, Fissurellidae, mm, Fissurellidae, um, Luca Pinella, Pinella, Megathura, the giant limpet that also has a little hole you can see there, um, Casia, Nasarius. Now we're into some mud snails. These are true. These are regular gastropods with a pretty big shell that live in the mud. 
um, Ferontis, Kalianax. This one, I know we all just heard from Greg. This one, Kalianax, um, is sometimes known as an olive snail. And this is a really, really important snail in many coastal Native American um, regalia. So it's this beautiful, beautiful olive shell, our olive snail. Um, Macron, <laughs> not to be confused <laughs> with a yummy Macron. <laughs> Antiplanus. Um, Birchia. Megacircula. Pseudomelatoma. So not a melatoma, but a pseudomelatoma. Um, Neo terebra, um, Lyra buchinium, buchinium. Eubranchus. Now we're into the real nudibranchs. Here's the eubranchus. And nudibranchs are sea slugs, Leo stiletus. Um, these are amazing um, gastropods that live in the ocean. Maybe not, obviously, sea slugs. Um, and they don't have a shell as adults. But as a little larva, they do Australis. U Marcusia, Numaella, Numaella, Fidiana, one of my favorites. You can see I have a little, some little slug pins here of all of these. Um, these are beautiful and incredible. You should also know that they probably don't get bigger than an inch, any of these that you're seeing. Um, and they're just really, really stunning. This one eats anemones and relatives of anemones, but it also eats other nudibranchs. Um, in this picture, yeah, it's a very cool picture. Um, and then we can go on though. So Fiona, um, Flabellina, and then Flabellina. This name just changed. Flabellinopsis. Well, I don't really like it, but look at it. It's called the Spanish shawl. Is it, its common name? Um, it's just super, super stunning. It's much more common in Southern California than Northern California, although you can see it. It also eats anemones and their relatives. And and these guys that eat the the anemones and their relatives, the cnidarians, they actually steal the little stinging cells from their prey and they put them into those little projections on their back to serve as their own defense. It's really, really incredible. You know, it's amazing. Anculia, Anculia, which is like so cute. And Okenia, and this is a, called the Hopkins Rose in Nudibranch. It used to be called Hopkinsia after the Hopkins Marine Lab in Monterey, but um, with some molecular phylogenetics, we know now that it's in the genus Okenia. So this one, although it has these little projections off its back, it is not the same kind as those others. This has like a little circle of gills. It's what we call a Dorid nudibranch. Trepania, Hancockia, which is a like stunning, beautiful slug. Um, Antiopella, which is another stunner. It's a funny common name. <laughs> Genolis. Hermacinda, which looks kind of similar to that Fidiana, but not quite. Um, my our awesome my awesome colleague and former student Kate Montana and worked on this when she was an intern um, here a few summers ago. Um, Vasaria, Vasaria, Acanthodorus, which is another one of my favorites. These are like our like West Coast version of the little sea bunny that you maybe see online all the time. Um, Josh Hallis is another former uh, mentee and colleague of mine worked on this when he first came to the academy. He's amazing, Acanthodorus. And they, like most of these nudibranchs, they're predators that some of them eat. Nidarians that I talked about are, are sea, or, um, sea anemones and their relatives. Those door nudibranchs like this, many of them eat sponges, but this one actually eats bryozoans. And all of those are other animals, other invertebrates, and I kind of are grazers on other animals, which is kind of funny to think about. Um, Adelodorus. Onchidorus, related to Acanthodorus, Philidiopsis, Crimora. Oh, no picture of Crimora. It's a cute little sea bunny. That one is really like sea bunny. Crimora, it comes from the sea bunny. Um, Lamacia, which is another really, really beautiful slug. Polysera, which you can find on uh, underneath some docks. It likes dock fouling, some species of Polysera. Polyceriella, Triopha. Triopha, one of the most common, beautiful slugs. Melaby, I feel like I'm telling too many stories, but this Melaby is amazing. The Melaby is a filter feeding nudibranch. I talked about how most slugs are predators and most of them graze on other invertebrates. This one mostly lives in kelp forests. And this picture is kind of like from the underside. That's its little foot, the little white part. It reaches out its big hood and it, it is a filter feeder and it grabs plankton out of the water and then brings it into its mouth. 
I encourage you to Google Melaby and find some videos of it eating because it's absolutely incredible. It also smells a little bit like watermelon or lemon <laughs> <laughs> if you have it in the lab. And the Acanthodorus that we talked about before smells, that there's one species that smells like sandalwood. Um, Catronia, Diaphoreolis, Tenelia, Trinchesia, Zelentia, a bunch of these used to be in the same genus and they've all been changed <laughs> into these new names and they're really funny because they never really say them. Um, Tocunia, Tritonia, another beautiful, um, beautiful slug with this awesome diamond pattern that you can just barely make out on its back. Um, Tritonicula, Pacifia, this is like tricky because it wants to, you want to say Pacifica, but it doesn't have that C. So, yeah. Um, Cleone, now, the, now we're getting into the sea slugs or the, the relatives of sea slugs that are pelagic. Um, these are all in the open ocean, sometimes they're called sea butterflies. They're called pteropods. They have a tiny little shell, but um, they're heterobranchs. They're all related to almost all these slugs that we've seen. Um, and they're in the open ocean and they swim all the time. So this isn't in, in someone's hand, but this would have been swimming its whole life. Um, Cleopsis, Cleopsis. Corolla, still sometimes. Oh, and now we have some, some land slugs, and these are gonna be the hardest ones, and I'll try to go fast. <laughs> Hesperion, um, Prophyceron, these are the ones that are so much harder. These are amazing native slugs, though. Coccolacopa, Discus, let's see why those get their name. Yukonu, Yukonulus, that's like the first one. Yukonulus. Um, Striatura, Zonotoides, Gloss Nails, look at that name, Ancotrema, Haplotrema, oh my gosh, I love Haplotrema, um, Glyptostoma, look at how beautiful that slug is, um, Trilo, Trilobopsis, <laughs> say that five times fast, um, Vespericola, these land snails, Hawaii, Pristilioma, punctum, vertigo, vitrina. Oh, that's beautiful. Acmea. Now we're getting we're gonna get into some more limpets again, some more ocean going. Um, Icelia, Icelica, Lyrobatium, Neostylidium, Serithiosidella. Cerithopsis, Celia, Celia, Epitonium, oh, one of my favorites, Janthina, a violet snail, which is amazing and planktonic and washes up sometimes on the beach, um, Opalia, Aplesiopsis, oh, Aplesia, yeah, Hermea, Placida, Stiliger, Discuria, Ladia, this is like the true limpets, the limpets. This is a gastropod, but just like one shield-shaped shell. Tectura, another kind of limpet. Lanx. Pseudosuchnia. Oh, that's not how you say that. Visa. Visella. Alicia. Oh, my gosh, I don't even want to tell the story of Alicia. And Acanthine Chitona. Now we're into chitons. Cryptochiton. The biggest chitin in the world, the world's biggest chitin, um, has little eight little valves, but you can't see them. They're actually eight big valves. You can't see them in this one, but they're amazing. Calius stochitin, Cheetopleura, Ketopleura probably, Leptozona, Stenoplax, Tripoplax, Dendrochitin, Catherina. Katie Chitin, it's a common name. Mopalia or the Mossy Chitin is in this group. Pachyphorella, which is a veiled chitin, which Pachyphorella is a predatory chitin. The rest of the chitins mostly eat algae. This one lifts up its, its valves and eats other things. It's amazing. Cyanoplax. Nettolina, Nettles Chitin. Tonicella, probably the most beautiful of all the chitins in California, in my opinion. Leptochitin. And dentalium, which we don't have a picture of, which is another shell that's also really, really important in Native American um, regalia.
It's really beautiful. And ulva, which is sea lettuce, which is not a slug or a snail, but a, an algae, a green algae that you can actually eat. Um, and it's really beautiful and really common on our shores. All right, that's it. We did them all. Thanks, everyone. Have a good rest of your day. Yeah, thanks so much, Rebecca. That You're was welcome. great. So um, fun. We like breeze through all those beautiful sea slugs. We do have a comment um, that says, this might be the cutest section <laughs> with all those slugs. Um, I'm inclined to agree. And we're going to go ahead and pass it on next to Iris for um, another special segment. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Iris. I am a presenter here at the California Academy of Sciences, uh, born and raised in California. So I particularly love all the amazing plants and animals that we've got here. And we've got some really special uh, genuses genera to talk about today but it's not just gonna be me i've got actually a couple of friends to help us read through this and let me introduce to you one of my favorite examples of california biodiversity the giant sequoia <laughs> hello everyone so nice of you all to join us and joining us as well is something very closely tied to what we'll be talking about today, the lichen moth caterpillar. Oh, hello, everyone. Hi. It's nice to meet you all. Well, I'm a lichen moth, and I love to eat lichens, and we're going to talk all about those kinds of plants, and, well, oh, well, hang on a second. Are, are lichens actually plants? Well, sort of, yes and no. But we'll talk about that in a moment. Let's go ahead and get started with our lichens today. Oh, all right. Well, well, well let me go first, okay? I want to give this a try. <laughs> Alatonia. Mm, okay, okay. Bryonia. Oh, oh, horse hair lichens. Well, what's a horse anyway? Citroia. Iceland lichens. Oh, I don't think we're in Iceland. All right, we got Citroia. Wait, didn't we just read that one? Oh, okay. Well, sea storm lichens and Eusnia beard lichens. Hey, you never did answer my question from before. Is a lichen a plant even? Well, the answer to that is somewhat complicated, young caterpillar. A lichen is, in fact, not one organism, but two. It is when a fungus and an algae come together to make something more than both of them. Let's continue on with Eslingiriana. We have Evernia, the oak moss lichens. Uh, yes, love those oaks. Flavoparmelia, the green shield lichens. Mm -hmm. Flavopunctilia, the speckled green shield lichens. Oh yes, that's speckling, very important. Hypogymnia, the tube lichens. And Hypotrachena, the loop lichens. Say, I think I have one of those growing on my trunk. Imshagia, we have Letharia, the wolf lichens. Melanexlixia, and Melanohalia, and Menegazia. We've got Montanilia, and Tucker Monopsis, the wrinkle lichens. Oh, those ones are particularly yummy. I love munching on those. Man, I really love that lichens are so special. They, they have this kind of special symbiosis, this relationship with each other. I bet nothing else has algae that helps it grow like that. Oh, you'd be surprised, little caterpillar. What? What, what else has an algae living inside it? I don't know what you're talking about. I'm going to read more names. There's, there's Canathontia, the thornbush lichens. We've got... Atiana, the candle wax lichens. Nesselechia. There's Nodobrioia, the foxtail lichens. Oh, I actually know that one. I know what a fox is. I've seen one before. Oh, there's Parmelia, the shield lichens. Oh, and, and, and Parmelina, the fine shield lichens. Oh, yeah, those ones are pretty fine. Parmeliopsis, brown lichens. Those ones taste yucky. I don't, I don't like those ones at all. There's Parmotrema, the awful lichens, and, and, and Phacopsis. Hey, what, what, what did you mean that lichens aren't the only thing that's got algae living inside them? Oh, well, young caterpillar, there are other 
creatures that have those sorts of symbiotic relationships with algae. In fact, have you ever heard of a coral before? A coral? Aren't those the things that, that make reefs like coral reefs? Oh, yes, indeed. And corals are animals, but they also have algae living right alongside them, just like these lichen funguses. Moving on, we've got Platismatia. There's Pseudoephebe. There's Punctelia. And Sulcaria. And Vulpicida. Lots of good, strong names here. There's Xantholparmelia, the rock shield lichens. Lots of shields among those lichens. Velhanera. And Mycorrhea. Hmm, yes, a good strong name. Sora, the fish scale lichens. Hmm, they, they gave all these lichens such strange names, such interesting things that they're named after that are not lichens. I, I don't understand humans and their naming systems. But anyway, we'll move on with Bastidia, the dot lichens. Okay, that one I do understand. Uh, Basidina and Toninia, the bruised lichens. And Bolimbia and Cleostomum, very small ones, Lacania, as well as Niabla, the sea fog lichens. And we've got, hey, it's my turn. You've had enough already. Oh, 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 all right, all right. Calm yourself down, young caterpillar. You can have a turn. Mm -hmm. All right. We've got Ramalina, the bushy lichens. And there's Wania. Mm, these ones are quite yummy. There's Feral Forest, the coral lichens. And we've got Lepraria, dust lichens. And Stereocolin, foam lichens. Oh, these ones have a really lovely texture. You just kind of bite into one and they just go crunch right under your mandibles. Mm, mm, mm. There's Strangospora. And we've also got Mycoblastis, the blood lichen. I don't, I don't know what that, that's about. I don't really have blood. Well, neither do I, so I couldn't help you there. Hmm, there there's Tefamilo. And, and Bellamelia, brown sunken disc lichens. That's too many syllables for one name. <laughs> All right, there's, there's Porpidia, and we've got Lepocolin, the mealy lichens. Yeah, they're really mealy lichens because I make meals out of them. <laughs> All right, that's quite enough out of you, my friend. We are here to do serious biodiversity work today. I mean, no one here is, is laughing or having fun. That's absolutely ridiculous. Now, moving on, we have Athalia, as well as Blastinia, the blast lichens, and Calogaia, as well as Caloplaca, the fire dot. Oh, those ones are real spicy. Hush, hush, enough out of you. There's Ericensiania, and we've also got Flavoplaca. Very flavorful, that's why it's got the name. There's Xantho Mendoza, as well as Gialolechia, the sulfur lichens, and Polycarlionia, as well as Cuetlingiria. Hey, 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 Sequoia, did, did you ever hear the story about how the first lichen was made? Oh, no, I don't, I don't think I have. What's that all about, lichen moth caterpillar? Well, they say that once upon a time, there was, there was a fungus and an algae, and they took a liking to each other. <laughs> Indeed. Well, I think I need to go recover from that terrible joke. You keep reading, Caterpillar. Oh, 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 bye, 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 psychiatry. Oh, all right, well, well we've got Pyrene or Dismia, and, and there's a roof of Placa, and, and a roof Oh man, I don't, I don't think I've seen all of these ones. There's Squamulia and and Teloscyces, the hair lichens. Nom, 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 nom. Villafora is one. We've also got Xanthocarpia and Xanthoria, the sun mice lichens. Hypocenomyces, the common clam lichens. I think that one's almost too long too, but you know humans and their weird names. There's also Umbilicaria, the rock tripes. And we've got Propolis. Mm-mm. And there's Cytostheca. There's also Aerocyphe. And Golovinomyces. Mm-mm. All right, I'm back. And no more jokes out of you, little one. 
We are doing serious work here today. All right, moving on, we have Phylactinia and Podosphera and Pseudodium. And there's also Sawadea and Amicodisca. Lots and lots of lichens. Arachnopaziza. Oh, I wonder if those are related to spiders in some way. And Chloroseboria. Oh, the lovely color on those. Podofacidium. And Diplocarpon. And of course, Ascocorine. Who could forget the lovely pink Ascocorine? You know, there was a, another sequoia once. A good friend of mine, and she had some lovely Ascoporine on her trunk. Mm -mm. Delicious pink color, amazing. We've got Chlorocypha and Cudoniella. There's also Hymenocyphus and Hymenotorendiella. A mouthful, that one. Patinella area. Tatrea. That was a little bit easier. Hadiria. And we've also got Trochyla and Hyalocypha. All right, I think we're almost near the end. We've got Lachnilula, and there's Lachnum. Oh, that's kind of similar. There's Neodelsi Sypha and Periantia. Mm -mm. All right, there's Molossia and Trematostroma and Pseudopaziza. Hey, that's kind of like the Paziza from before, but there's a Pseudo in the front, so you know it's not Paziza. There's <laughs> Tolendiello. And Botrytis, Sibulia, and Martinia. Oh, that's a lot of ends. There's Slurtinia and Trichopaziza. Lots of Pazizas. Vexillomyces and Dendrostilbella. Mm, those ones are really yummy. You can tell because they're bright blue. And more colorful means more delicious. Does, does it really? Yeah, yeah, that's definitely true, I promise. Now, there's also Fabricia and Cutonia and one of my favorites. Oh, hang on a second there, Lichen Moth Caterpillar. This is a job for none other than yours truly. <clears throat> and of course, at the end of all this, towering above all those tiny little lichens is the most important organism in all of California, obviously, it is me, Sequoia Dendron, the giant Sequoia. Oh, thank you, thank you, thank you very much. Oh, hey, wait a second, you're not the only one around here. Oh, yeah, well, I am the biggest. Oh, well, yeah, but, but there's more of us. More special, too. I'm going to take a bow. All right, well, if you must have your bow, we can both bow together. Ready? All right, thank you so much, everybody. And thanks to our lovely friends, Giant Sequoia and Lichen Moth Caterpillar. And happy California Biodiversity Day to all of you. Iris, I got to ask, do your friends give scientific name pronunciation lessons? Because y'all did great. <laughs> oh, wow. Well, I mean, when you are one of the animals or organisms in this list, you got you to gotta know it, right? Like, it's, yeah. it's your own kind of name you're talking about. I mean, we all know Homo sapiens, but I mean, these ones, I guess, are just a little bit more keyed into California biodiversity than we are. So fair. That's so fair. We could all learn something or so something or the other. Them. Yeah. All right. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, Iris. All righty. And next up, we're going to pass it right along uh, for the musical stylings of Avery Hill. Um, hi, uh, my name is Avery Hill. Uh, I'm a postdoc and the Center for Biodiversity and Community Science here at the Academy. Um, and I work mostly on trees and I grew up in uh, Napa County here in California. So California biodiversity is very near and dear. Um, and I, I study how, uh, primarily how trees and, uh, and other aspects of California biodiversity are responding to uh, climate change and other uh, recent changes in uh, the California landscape. Um, I'm going, I brought a banjo today. Uh, <laughs> I have not tried to read scientific names while playing the banjo before, so um, this is an experiment for for for, for all of us. Um, so if I if I if I if I give up at some point, don't, please don't be too hard on me. Okay. <laughs> Quick. 
Crossosoma. Glossopatalum. Staphylia. Bladder nuts. Pylostyles. Stem suckers. Cucurbita. Gourds. They, those are very good. Um, brand, branded, brandagia. Mara. Man roots. Oh, I've seen, I didn't know that was a name. I've seen those out in the uh, chaparral, I think. The Stica. Uh, Linnea, twin flowers. Really pretty species when you see it. Genera. Uh, Lonicera, honeysuckles. Um, you can suck the honey out of them. Um, snowberries, uh, Sphericarpos. Valeriana, valerian. One of the active ingredients in uh, red valerian is one of the active ingredients in uh, sleepy time tea. Sambucus elders. Agmispon. Agmispon deer vetch. Amorpha false indigos. Astragalus milk vetches. Caliandra, stick peas. Circus, red buds. Circus is uh, one of the one of the prettiest trees you'll see in bloom uh, in the spring in kind of California oak woodlands. Dahlia, prairie clovers. Glycer, Glyceriza. Hoffman Segia, rush peas. Oida. Osakia. Ladania. Latheris, sweet pea and vetch, vetchlings, little vetches. Marina. Olnia. Oxytropus, loco weed. Parksonia, Palo Verde. Oh, that's a beautiful tree. See in South, southeastern California. Uh, Pediomelum, red roots and scurf peas. I'm not familiar with that one. Physiolus, beans, some of the least appreciated fruits there are. Um, Picaringia. Pithosolobium, black beets. Prosopis, mesquites. These are beautiful trees in the southeastern US. Sorothamnus, indigo bushes and smoke trees. Rodinia, locust trees. Propertia. Senegalia, hookthorns. Senna. Cisbania, river hems. Thermopsis, golden banners. Trifolium, clovers. Visia, vetches. Rhinotropus. Petula, birches. Castanea, chestnuts. Chrysolepis. This is a really nice bush in the Sierra Nevada foothills. And it's got very pokey little fruits, as you can see here. And you can see their fruits and know that there's a Chrysolepis somewhere nearby. Morella, bayberries. Cephalanthus, button bushes. Another nice vine. Gallium, bed straws. Cologia. Uh, erodium, storks bills. You can't really see the stork bill here, but they've got nice storks bills. <laughs> Geranium, uh, geraniums and cranes bills. Geraniums and storks bills. Oh. Comandra. Arcutho, ar Arcuthobium. <laughs> Thorodendron, leafy mistletoes. Melosma. 
Uh, rough sumax. You can make uh, like a lemonade. Something called lemonade berry. You can make lemonade from uh, soaking those little berries in water. Pepper trees. Skynus. Chinus. Brasura. Uh, Nor Noridium. Let's get that C. Uh, Tealy, I'm going to skip that P. Options. <laughs> uh, Themnosma. Acer, maples. Um, we all know maples. Love maples. Dodon Dodonea, hot bushes. Uh, Sapindus. Uh, Castella. Uh, Crassula. Oh, deadly uh, lift forever. I've never heard of lift forever, but uh, you'll see these in rat rat rock outcroppings all over California. It's actually on the cover of uh, one of my favorite um, uh, taxonomic uh, ident identification books for the Sierras. It's a very, just a very beautiful plant. Rosers, Rodilia, uh, Sedella. Sedum, stone crops, another beautiful plant you'll see on stones cropping out. <laughs> uh, rice bit, ribes, uh, currants and gooseberries. There are so many species of these. I, when I did field work in the Sierras, I could barely learn just a couple of species, but they're beautiful, beautiful plants, and the, the, that's where your current scone comes from. Uh, Myriophyllum, milfoils. Uh, peonia, peonies. Uh, Benzoniella. Uh, Belandra. Boikinia, brook foam. Uh, Brewer, Brewer Metella, Brewers and Coastal Miterworks. Uh, Chrysosplenium, golden saxifrages. Uh, Darmera, umbrella plants. Sucks Dorfia, doesn't suck. Great looking plant. Cuchera, uh, alum roots. Gypsonia, probably named it for the botanist Gypsum. Lithophragma, uh, woodland stars. Micran Micranthes, early saxifrages. Myolastra, Ozomilis, Pe Pectiantia, Alpine Mitoworks, Saxifraga, uh, Saxifragus, uh, sa Saxifragopsis, Strawberry Leaf Saxifragus, uh, Talima, Tiarella, foam flowers, Tomea, piggyback plants, and Euthon Ages. Uh, Calistigia, uh, false bindweeds. You'll see these along the highways. Convolvulus. I think I've also seen these along highways, but maybe I got them confused with the other ones. Uh, Cressa. Cascuta, flowers. Dichondra, pony's foot. Uh, Calabacoa, million bells. There's one bell, but I assume there's millions. Otherwise, Fabiana, false heats. Leucophysalis. Lyceum, box thorns. Or Orictes. Physalis, ground cherries. Quincula. Solanum, nightshades, beautiful flower, probably shouldn't eat, but very closely related to the tomato. Uh, Cremaria, rat, rat, rat knees. Some, some of these common names are hard to say. <laughs> to scientific names. Okay. Begonia, uh, vegan bushes. Calstromia. Oh, Lorea, creosote bushes. Uh, I, if I remember correctly, this tree, this plant covers this bush. These bushes cover the most land in California of any other kind of vegetation. Wow. Calosedrus, incense cedars, another great Sierra plant. Uh, Camus cypyrus, false cypress. 
Professus, uh, all the cypresses are really great genes. Juniperus, junipers, another just class A genus. Texodium, uh, ball cypresses. Thuja, uh, white cedars, you get them more in Northern California. Abies, furs, there's too many, too many good ones in here to, to, to count them out, but um, white furs are a great one, I'll give a shout out. Uh, Phanops, uh, Picea spruces, um, there's some nice spruces at the higher elevations of California in the north, but we don't have too many here, um, they're special when we find them. Dendrochtonus, Pseudosuga, Douglas firs, um, one of the one of the great great trees we have the uh, the pleasure of having uh, across uh, many of our coastal and northern Sierra uh, landscapes. Uh, suga, hemlocks, um, not to be confused with Pseudosuga, the Douglas firs. Uh, hemlocks always have. Uh, the tops of, you can always tell the hemlock because the, 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 the top of its uh, crest is always kind of drooping down in some direction. Taxus, uh, use. Uh, Terea, a great genus. Um, what else to say other than that? Is that it? And that's it. All right. Well, that was fantastic. Okay. Thanks. Yeah. Happy biodiversity day, everyone. I, uh, I, I'm glad. I'm glad I have the, the opportunity to talk about so many different plants. Yeah. Do you ever take it's your banjo good. up to the CRS to do field work? Uh, yeah. If I can fit in the back of my car between like plant presses and whatever else. Yeah. Um, but it gets out of tune pretty quick. But no one can tell when I'm in the mountains <laughs> alone <laughs> so it doesn't matter to me. alone in the mountains yeah. <laughs> just playing a banjo yeah. <laughs> among the great genera of trees mm -hmm. that's great yeah fabulous well thanks so much avery yeah thank you all right and next up i'm gonna read a few names uh before we pass it along to our next guest gonna get right into it where we left off lepidium the pepperweeds Atroplex, the salt bushes. And if you're just joining us and caught the end of Avery's musical stylings and this now, um, we're hosting the 12 hour California nature extravaganza uh, in which we're reading the names of as many plants, animals, and fungi as we humanly possibly can in 12 hours. We are currently in hour seven, almost, almost into hour eight, really. Um, Atroplex, the salt bushes. Kinopodium, the goosefoots. Calandria. Curlandrilia, Claytonia, Spring Beauties, Val, Vakelia, Thorn Trees, Alnus, the Alders, Corylus, Hazels, I love a good hazel, Notolithocarpus, Quercus, Oaks, oh, these are, these are wonderful, such, such iconic trees, Juglins, Walnuts, also iconic trees, Clinopodium, Yerba Buena, Salvia, sages. Oh, I love salvias. There are so many amazing varieties of them. Um, Umbellularia, the California Bay. Salix, the willows. Fragaria, strawberries. Yeah, um, I've never, I haven't been able to grow strawberries successfully, but maybe that's a me problem in my current place. Prunus, plums, cherries, and allies. Thank you to the genus Prunus. I love your fruits. Big fan of your work. Big fan of your work. <laughs> Rosa, Wild Rose, Rubus, Brambles, also a big fan of, wait, no, wait, that's, is that Rubus? That's blackberries and stuff, right? Blackberries, yeah, blackberries, raspberries, also a big fan of your work, Rubus. Toxicodendron, not a fan of your work. <laughs> Aesculus, Buckeyes and Horse Chestnuts. Datura, Devil's Trumpets, that is a cool flower. Nicotiana, the Tobaccos. Vitus, grapevines, fan of your work. Sequoia Redwood, <laughs> I love her. Pinus, the pines. Teridium, brackens, also a fan. Beautiful ferns. Polystichum, shield ferns, have one growing on my balcony, love her. Adantium, maidenhair ferns, this is my mom's favorite plant. Um, and I have tried to grow them so many times and I always 
don't make it humid enough. Um, they really like humidity and I think tend to grow on like rocky crevices above caves and stuff. But yeah, that's it for this mini segment of plants and assorted things. We're going to go ahead and pass it on to Mindy, who's going to get us back into the insects. The insects. Yeah. Cool. Hi, everyone. Has someone made the between two ferns joke already? No. <laughs> okay, I'll be the first. Well, and those those were two, three um, really hard acts to follow with the banjo and the puppets, but I'll try make it entertaining. Um, my name is Mindy Kashiwagi. I'm the director of membership here, and I get the honor and privilege of managing our membership program. And I'm a native California uh, Californian, um, and we're super excited to be here to, with you today. So let's get after it. Atapolopetus, Agathymus. Bernicius, New World Checkered Skippers. Carterocephalus. Chythonium. That's a beautiful little one. Uh, Ciopides. Apargarius. Uranus, Dusky Wings. Euphias, Heliopetus, the white skippers. I love these little ones. Hesperia, branded skippers. Halphila, Lerodia, Lon, Ambliscertes, the roadside skippers again. <laughs> Megathymus. Aclodus, Penachina, Folicera, that one's beautiful, Polidus, Pseudocopetus, Pyrgus, the grizzled skipper, which I feel a little grizzled today. <laughs> Staphylus, scallop wings. Cestacea, powdered skippers. That one has a little broken antenna. Thorbus, cloudy wings. Urbanus. Paraleucoptera. Mompha. Ecliptris. Actomdamia, Etania, Stigmella, Agli, tortoise shells, Athenasa, Erginus, Greater Fritillaries, Bellaria, Sersonius, the wood nymphs. I've seen a lot of these out in the woods. Closini, patches and allies. Oh gosh. Cono Nympha. Danius, tiger milkweed butterflies. That looks very familiar. Dione. Dryas, Julia Heliconians. Dimacia. Physiodes, crescents. Euphydreas, <laughs> Utotieta, oh <laughs> I'm just going to start making stuff up, Heliconias, <laughs> long wings and heliconians, Genonia, buckeyes and pansies, Lipthania, new world snouts, Le Lemonitis, Neomin oh my gosh, Neomino Noir. I'm gonna put a little French in there. <laughs> Nymphalis, tortoise shells. Onius, Arctics. Polygonia, commas. Vanessa, I can do that one. Ladies and related animals. Ashna, mosaic darners. Oh, we're on to the Annex Green Darners, Efieshna, 
Ryanishnod, Neotropical Darners, Calypterex, Jewel Wings, Hyterina, Ruby Spots, and Figurion, Red Damsels. I love those. Or yeah, danz Dancers. Canigrion, Northern Bluets. Anaglema, Bluets. Ishnura, Forktails. Telebasis, Firetails. That's an amazing looking animal. Zonia, Grian. Cordel gl Glaster, Spike Tails. Cordulia, Common Emerald Dragonflies. Epseca, basket tails. Macromia, river cruisers. Somatochlora, striped emerald dragonflies. Eryptogompus, ring tails. Octogompus. Octheogompus, snake tails. That really does look like a snake. Phanogompus. Progumphus, sand dragonflies. Who knew there were so many? Slide, style, stylurus, hanging club tails. Archileski, stream spread wings. Lesties, pond spread wings. Rocky Messia, tropical pennants. Breckmorga, or Breckmorhoga, club skimmers. Arethmus, pond hawks, Leucorinia, white faces, Labulula, king skimmers, Macrodiplax, coastal pennants, Orthemus, tropical king skimmers, Pachydiplax, blue dashers, Pelothemus, rock skimmers, Pentala, rainpool gliders, Parathemus, amber wings, that's beautiful. Plathemus, white tails. Pseudoleon. Symphetrum, meadowhawks. Tramia, saddlebag gliders. Tanoteryx, dark petal tails. Aeolopides, saltbush grasshoppers. Agenotex, oh. <laughs> Agnotocasia, Agemonotus, <laughs> Amphitornus, Anconia, Arphia, Asemoplus, Olocara, Utec. That's a really scary looking insect. Brady Notes, slow mountain grasshoppers. Ooh, that is a racy photo. Runaria, Cam Camnula, Chimarosephala, Chloe Alatus, Cortophaga. Cybolacris, Cercotetex, Canozio, Zoa, Cordolacris, Cratipedes, Derotmemma, Desotera, Esselenia, Eupnegodes, Hesperotetex, Herocidotes, Hypsalonia, Carochia, Lactista, Lepris, Leptisma, Ligarotex, Clicker Grasshoppers, Vermeria, Microtus, camouflage, Nubula tetex, 
Oh gosh, Adeladniotas, Odio Mareras, Opia, or Fulalela, Paropomala, Poselotatex, Pseudocortheopus. Pseudopomala, so Solosia. No, let me try that one again. Solosessa, <laughs> Schistocersa, bird grasshoppers, Pheragemon, Stethophyma, Stick. Trepidulus, Trimerotropus, Xanthippus, Xersacris, Sinopotectex, Silk Spinning Crickets, Nega, American Square, oh, skip that one. <laughs> Agula, common snake flies. Elena. Are we done torturing people? Okay. You're off the hook, but we've still got about four hours left of the 12 hour California Nature Festival. I have a feeling our next person will do a better job with those names than myself. Oh my gosh, but <laughs> thank you for having me and happy um, California Biodiversity Day, everyone. All right, cool. Well, we're gonna go ahead and pass it along to someone who's gonna talk about some animals that we have not really seen on this live stream yet, which is wild because we've seen so much stuff. Um, but coming up right now is Lauren Esposito, who's our very own curator of arachnology. And she's gonna talk about some spiders and scorpions. So we kick it right over to Lauren. Hey, uh, I am, well, as you already heard, Lauren Esposito. I'm the curator of arachnology here at the California Academy of Sciences. And my connection with California biodiversity, I guess, like, started when I moved to California, like, 10 years ago uh, to start a postdoc at UC Berkeley. And I have been on an exploration of my own discovery of California's biodiversity ever since, uh, including describing some new species which maybe we'll see. Oh, wait, I need my spectacles to really see these. Um, all right. So we're starting off with the jumping spiders. Jumping spiders are super cute. They're also like day active spiders that don't build webs that they live in. Um, and so they have these like big, huge eyes because they need eyes to see during the day. And the first one is Anastatus. The next one is Atinella, which is like very cute and mossy, Atulus, Calcoscurtis. I feel like that sounds like something that people would say in like a hip hop video, like in the background. Uh, Colonus, that's creepy. Eris, see how cute it is? Jumping spiders are just the most adorable. If you want to learn about spiders in California, you can you can find all, all kinds of information about them in this field guide to spiders of California and the Pacific Coast state. Uh, which was actually written by a park ranger at one of our national parks in the state. Ooh, Offries. Ivarka, look at Ivarka. It's so fuzzy and cute. Jumping spiders can be like very fuzzy or like very sleek with kind of like metallic colors. Um, and they also communicate by doing a song and dance. Habronatus, the paradise jumping spiders, they're called that because they're so paradisey in color. Look at that beautiful red. Marquina. Marpisa, Mesua, look at that metallic beauty. Metacerba, some jumping spiders are actually predators on other jumping spiders. And so they, um, oh, not just jumping spiders, like all spiders. And so they actually like are really good at calculating distance with those um, sort of bifocal front facing eyes. And they'll like launch themselves off of a rock and land right on the web of another spider and eat it straight out of there. Metaphidipus, probably because it's metallic. Mexigonus, 
That one's like a Lycanny situation. Neon. I mean, I'm very disappointed that there's no image here. What happened? Neon should have an image. Absolutely. I don't even know what it looks like, but I'm sure it's gorgeous. Paramarpisa. Paraphidipus. Look at that green. They're so pretty. Pecamia. The other really cool thing about jumping spiders is that some of them are ant mimics. And usually they're like really close mimics to a specific kind of ant that lives in the same area as they do. So this one is one of those ant mimicking spiders. Pellegrina, the white cheeked jumping spiders, so named because they have those like white tufts in their calissery. And those white tufts um, are used for signaling mates. So they like kind of pick them up and, and wave them around a little bit. Pelinis. Canius, Phidippus, these ones you've probably, if you've ever noticed a jumping spider like around your house, uh, like on the windowsill or the wall by your garden, it was probably one of these guys. They get pretty big um, and they, they are really curious. They'll turn around and face you and look at you with those eyes and try to figure out what you're up to. And if they're a male, they're probably trying to decide whether they should try to mate with you. Phlegra, Platycryptus. Salticus, that's the zebra spiders. Sasacus, leaf beetle jumping spiders, so named for their really beautiful beetleness. Synagles, this is another ant mimic. Talavera. Terlonus. Dictus, so we've moved out of the jumping spiders now. This is a spitting spider. Spitting spiders are called that because they actually spit silk, so instead of um, using silk produced by their silk glands on their abdomen to catch prey. They can spit this like gluey silk kind of gel and just like gel coat other things to the wall. Gross. Skytodes, this is another spinning spider. You, you might see them like in your cellar or something like that. Super harmless though to people. Just don't be an ant. Citharoseps. Sehestria. Selenops, the crescent-eyed spiders, or as we like to call them in my lab, that one's sadly missing two legs, just want to point that out. Uh, as we like to call them in my lab, flatties, because they're super flat. They also, as a group, have the highest, the, the highest, the fastest rotational movement of any living animal. They spin faster than a DVD spinning in a DVD player. Loxosceles, these are the recluse spiders. Uh, including brown recluses, which are not found in California, although there are other recluses like the desert recluse. Kookaburras. Heteropoda, the giant huntsman. These are like the stuff of nightmares, actually, when you're in the tropics. They get really huge, like dinner plate size, uh, but we don't have them that big here. Oleos. These are the golden huntsmen. They're really beautiful. Super hairy, terrifying. Usophila, Lukauji. These are the orchard spiders. Uh, these belong to a group of spiders that um, build aerial webs often over water, but Lukauji doesn't. They usually just build them in like low, low, low to the ground vegetation like bushes. And they almost always have one quadrant of their web missing. Uh, sort of like a classic sign of Lukauji. Meta. Metalina. Metaleucauge, Tetragnatha, the long jarred orb, orb weavers. This is part of, part of the same group as Leucauge. Um, they typically build their webs over fast moving streams and catch um, insects that are attracted to, to water. Afana palma, this is a tarantula, super beautiful, uh, hairy, and harmless. Argyrodes, the dewdrop spiders. These spiders are silver. Uh, which is why they're called dewdrop spiders. And they like to hang out in the webs of other spiders. And we call them uh, kleptoparasites, which means that they are a group of parasitic spiders essentially stealing little prey items out of the webs of other spiders. Acigena. Crustalina. Look at how tiny that is. Dipoena. Europus. This is a spider sitting on an egg sac. 
Uh, most spiders guard their young, so they um, have some sort of maternal care, which could just be guarding the egg sac until the young hatch out, or in some cases actually staying with the young even after they hatch. And these are ant-eating spiders. They specialize on ants. Latrodectus are the widow spiders. Um, this one pictured here is the black widow spider. You can see super famous from that red hourglass on her abdomen. Um, interestingly, the males don't have an hourglass. They're not black. They're typically small and brown. Um, and they mate with the female by entering into her web. And in order to make the first point of entry and not get eaten, they play her a song by plucking the strings of her web like a harp. Neoteria. Platnichia, Platnik's cobweb spiders. Platnik is probably one of the most famous arachnologists of all time, Norman Platnik. He has described more spiders than any other person who has ever existed, although he's about to be exceeded, or maybe he already has been, uh, by another really famous arachnologist in um, China. Romphia, the stretched thief spiders. I would also like to see what they look like. Where's these pictures at? Steatoda, false widow spiders. Uh, these spiders, are, you've probably seen them before. They often live like around houses, um, like in your trash can. Super harmless. Theridian, typical cobweb spiders. This is another like really common thing around our houses. Um, people often confuse these also for, for, brown, for black widow spiders because they have that kind of red stripe on their back, but it's a, along their back rather than on their abdomen, on their stomach. Thymoides, Titterin, Wamba, I always love that name. Bassania, Diaea, the flower spiders, this is another group, like this belongs to a group of spiders you might see in your garden. Um, they like to hang out sort of on flowers and eat bees and wasps and other little things that are coming to pollinate. Mechafiza. Misumina. This is, a, this is a, the flower crab spider. So um, similar to the previous ones, they hang out near flowers and they actually can um, change the color on their abdomen to blend in with the with the background flower um, by um, constricting and releasing guanine crystals uh, right underneath their cuticle. Misuminoides, this is these ones also love hanging out near flowers and come in different colors. Zysticus, this is the ground crab spider. So unlike their relatives that hang out in flowers, they just crawl around on the ground and grab things. But you can see they have those sort of Laterograde legs out to the side looking like a crab rather than all around them. Mariola, uh, these are ant mimicking spiders. Uh, they're not jumping spiders, but another group of ant mimics. Trichellus. Hyptiodes, the triangle web spiders. These spiders build a web that's like pulled back into a triangle. It's pretty cool. They're really tiny. You might be able to tell from that leaf size. Euloborus, the feather leg spiders. The cool thing about Euloborus is that they, they don't have venom. So they're one group of spiders. Most spiders have venom in their, in their fangs. Uh, Euloborus doesn't make venom. Ludica. Anachemis. Socalchemis. I guess you could say socalchemis probably. Tidiotis, the Rocky Canyon spiders. These spiders are pretty cool. They're found in like uh, Rocky Canyon deserts. Karyos. Orthinodoros. Whoa, we're in ticks now. Dermacentaur, these are the dog ticks. So you, if you ever have ticks crawling around you, it could be one of two things. They're Dermacentaur, like the dog ticks, or what I suspect we're about to get into, some of the deer ticks. Hyema fasalis. Ixodes. So these are the deer ticks, uh, probably the thing that you are most scared of when you think about ticks because these are the ones that carry Lyme disease. Ripicephalus. Ooh, look at that really disgusting engorged tick. Ticks, when they're engorged, can grow to something like 20 times their original size. Poixilochiris, carrion beetle mites. These are um, a relative of ticks. 
uh, that are that hang out near um, decaying matter and transport themselves on carrion beetles, which also eat decaying matter. Varroa. Varroa mites are something that people often bring up when they talk about honey bee collapse. Um, and it's something that's been implicated. It's a kind of mite that's been implicated in the crash of honeybee colonies. Dalquestia. Euribunus. Now we're into the harvestmen or the daddy long legs. Daddy long legs is confusing because people call both harvestmen and some kinds of spiders, like house spiders, daddy long legs. Globites. Serastolasma. Dendrolasma, Ortholasma, still in the daddy long legs, Metanonychus, Leptobunus, this is also a harvestman, but a really long legged harvestman, Calcina, Enigmina, that one sounds mysterious, Megacena, Microcena, Citalcena, Protolophus, Sabacon, that one sounds like something that belongs in space. Leobunum, we're still in the harvestman. Lyronychus, one cool thing about harvestmen is that some of them, especially the long legged ones, defend themselves using aggregate chemical defense. And so they aggregate together in these huge clumps of harvestmen with like a bajillion legs. And then they give off like a noxious odor that smells. And because there's so many of them packed together, they are all full of smelly scents. Nalima. Hesperonamastoma. That's a short-legged harvestman. Oscaron. Terricus. Ooh, F. Piochithonius. Garapus. Oh, that's like the cutest thing ever. Um, these are sometimes called uh, book scorpions or pseudo scorpions. And they look kind of like a really miniaturized scorpion with no tail. Uh, and they are called book scorpions because sometimes in, in the olden days they would find them inside of books. Larca. Parabesium. Hydrozides, the beetle mites, Otodectes, Habardia, Centuroides, the bark scorpions. You can only find these down in uh, southeastern California, right along the Arizona border. And Eurocteinus, swollen stinger scorpions. They're called that because they look like they have a big giant swollen stinger. Hadrurus, this is the largest species of scorpion in California. If you didn't know, California is a scorpion hot spot. Uh, there's more diversity of scorpions in California than there are in most other similarly sized places. Uh, and this is the biggest. Superstitionia. This one is probably the smallest. It's on the other end. You can see it, those grains of sand. Super cute. I think feel like they look like tiny robots when they move around. Catalinia. Named for the Catalina Islands. Gramloeus. Cochius. Covarichia. Paravegevus, Periuroctinus. This one is super diverse in the state of California. Uh, and actually, we described two new species um, just last year, and we've got another one on the way. Smeringerus, Stankius, Euroctinides, Hemerotrecha. We're out of the scorpions now. Neomologus, this is a mite. Demodex, uh, you probably have Demodex. I would say probably everybody tuned in has Demodex on their face because they are face mites. They live inside your pores and everyone on earth has them. Ricardoella, oh. Acolytus, what is this, this plant? I don't even know what this is. Oh, Asaria, it's, a, it's, a, it's some kind of thing that gets into plants, like maybe like a wasp. We're still a mite. Oh, we're still in mites, mites that infect plants. So mites and also some wasps like infect plants and make them grow these weird little galls. They basically create like a cancerous growth in the plant and then they lay their eggs and the eggs grow up in there. Aculops, 
Aculus, Columaris. They're all, they're usually like super specific. So there's like a specific species of mite that lives on a specific species of plant. Areophys, Phylocoptes, Arathias, Linopodes, Hydraacna. These are water mites. They live exclusively in fresh water. Dinothrombium, the giant velvet mites. Oh, I wish we had a little picture of these ones because they're so cute. They're like really big velvety mites that you probably might see like on a warm sunny day on a brick wall crawling around if you've ever seen like a red thing mysteriously crawling around. Limnesia, I think that these ones maybe live in the ocean, ocean mites. Bryobia, Eutetronychus, Oligionychus, Panonychus, Petrobia, Tetronychus, Trombodium, Trombidium, Time. Thank you, Lauren. That was a lovely tour of some California arachnids um, until we got to face mites. That part was a little bit upsetting. <laughs> Look, the face mites are cute <laughs> when you get them under a microscope. <laughs> Thank you. Never alone. Yeah, Never that's alone. True. You always okay. have friends. <laughs> well, thank you so much for coming and spending some time with us. That was that was great. Um, Hi folks, it's me again. I'm back hosting. Um, I am so excited to see the timer drop below four hours remaining. That feels really good, honestly. Um, this has been a delight. And again, if you're just joining us, um, we are reading as many names of California plants, animals, and fungi as we can, as humanly possible in 12 hours. Um, and we're, we're getting there. Um, I'm going to be reading our next segment, and I think we've got maybe some fungi and some mosses in store. Let's find out together. Abrothallus, Acrospermum, Diplodia, Neofusicum, Phyllostycta? Cladosporium, Toxicocladosporium, Capnus ivy, uh, Tetratosphaeria, Polythristinum, Ramularia. I wonder if are these like plant diseases or are these? additional goals. I don't really know what's happening here. Fungi. Okay. Okay. Rudoceptoria. Stigmidium. Wilsonomyces. Cat Catinella. Dothiora. Uh, Ariobacid. Ariovacidium, uh, Cabatiella, Pseudocidoia. All these pseudos, like everybody's trying to copy something, but I want to know, like, what are they? What are they faking? Pseudo what? Uh, Neopechia, Glaniopsis, Hysterium, uh, Elsino. Epicocum, Leptospherulina, uh, Cyphertia, Alternaria, Priusa, Sporormiella, Apiosporina, uh, Lassiobotrys. Venturia, Cladophyllophora, Cladophyllophora, Aspergillus, 
Pestilomyces. Penicillin. Halloramyces. Oh, that one's kind of gross looking. Elepho Elephomyces. Microglossum. Uh, Ascocorticium. Bulgaria. <laughs> uh, Bisparella. Calicina. Real lack of common names in this uh, this section. Uh, Cocomyces, Lophodermella, Lophodermium, uh, melas Melasmia, tar spot fungi. Oh wait. Okay. Um, <laughs> right, Jasmia. Also tar spot fungi. Uh, pseudo gymnascus. Oh, um, trichobolus, hyalo, hyalopaziza, hepia, lichnella, <laughs> Zal Zalbrook Narella. Peltula, Hyalorbilia, Hialor, Orbilia, uh, Ascobolus, Sacobolus, Laziobolus, Calicypha, that one's cool looking, Neornula, uh, Gyromitra, uh, Hyde Notria, Dysingia, Helvella, Elfin Sandals, Pitchia, Saccharomyces, uh, Robillarda, Pestalotypiosis. Pestal. Yeah, it's good enough. <laughs> Camerops. Um, Fialamonium. Fertia. Amphilogia. That's really bright. Uh, Apio. Nomania. Apio pneumonia. Ophionomania, Cystos Cytospora, um, Cytospora cankers. That is a really intense image all over that branch. That seems wild. Um, Melanospora, uh, Thialviopsis, Microascus, Ophiostoma, um, Fomatospora. Phaeocoropsis, Telemena, Trabotia. I'm like impressed at the people who are able to identify what just looks like random spots on leaves to, to me, to my untrained eye. Uh, Aria Boletus, Boletus, um, Portinian allies. <laughs> Buqualdo Boletus. Um, Butria bolletus, um, Calla bolletus, bitter bolletus, um, uh, Calciaporus, Gastro bolletus, Hemilicinium, Licinium, Neo bolletus, Philoporus, Porophyrellus. Wow, those were like similar syllables, but in different orders. That was hard for my brain. Um, <laughs> Pulverobolletus. Rubrobolletus. Suillolus. 
Uh, Tylo Pillis. Zero Camellus. Boletinellis. Boletinellis. Conifora. Pentelomyces. Astreus or Barometer Earth Stars. These are very cool looking. Krugum, Krugumphus. Gumphidius. Spikes, just spikes. <laughs> uh, Gyroporus. Hygrophoropsis. Hygrophoropsis. Alpova. Melanago. Melanogaster. Melanogaster. Paxillus. Roll rims. Oh, that, that tracks. That checks out. Rhizopogon. Bearded truffle. It's a fun name. Pisolithus. Scleroderma or earth balls. Serpula. Suillus. Truncocolumella, Tapanella, Botryobacidum, uh, Cantharellus or Chanterelles, Clavulina, it's a pretty one, uh, crat Craterellus, Trumpets, Hydnum, Hedgehog Mushrooms, that's adorable, Multiclavula, Ricanella or moss cap, also a cute name. Uh, Cystotrema. Uh, Trulasnella. Cytidia. Punctularia. Uh, Geastrum, different kind of earth stars. Myriostoma or pepper pots. Uh, Chanella. Gloeophyllum, Veluticeps, Claveria delphis, uh, Destinitia, Goderaria, Gomphus, uh, Phaeoclavulina, Romaria or coral fungi. That's a pretty, really bright color. Turban and Turbanellus, Hydrocristella, and Animalon, Lazrosdizus, with Rosdizus, uh, <laughs> Ectrus, Hyposoder. Oh, now we're going somewhere totally different. Um, <laughs> any. Enicospilus, Disona, Era, Aramodulus, Cymodusa, Gellis, Jealous, Sassanaria, uh, Diadegma, Bathyplectes. Charops, is that like a cocoon? It's cute. Uh, Dif Diffius, Diplazon, Gartia, Compsocryptus, Ichneumon, Megarhissa, giant Ichneumoid wasps. I don't like the sound of that. Labena. Mesostenus, Metopius, Natalia, Ophion, Patrocloides, Pimpla, oh, it's such like a pretty picture of the flowers, uh, Risa, Symphion, <laughs> Trogus. Zorites, Anthodelum, Anthodium, Carter bees, Ashmedelia, Atophosmia, 
Chelostoma scissor bees. That sounds cool. Uh, Coleoxis sharp tail bees. Dianthidium pebble bees. Dioxys. Hoplitis small mason bees. Just just little bees. Oh, I think maybe I missed one there, but that's fine. We're moving on. <laughs> Mega Chile, leaf cutter, mortar, and resin bees. Osmia, mason bees, the regular size ones, I assume. Protosmia. Stellus, dark bees. Trechusa, burrowing resin bees. Um, Hesperapis. Dasi Mutilla, Ifuda, Odontophoto, Odontophotopsis, Pseudomethoca. All right, and that's going to be the end of my segment. I'm reading a fun variety of things. I am going to hand it over to our next presenter, who I think has an additional special guest to share with us. So, Laura, you wanna take it away? Yeah, hello everyone. Uh, my name is Laura Fong. I'm one of the public programs presenters. I use she, her pronouns. And uh, one of my favorite jobs to do here at the Academy is to hang out with a bunch of puppets to tell some stories. And one of our puppet shows was about salmon, takes place in California. What a better way to talk about California biodiversity by being here with some of our puppet guests. So I actually have Chinook salmon right here. And of course, a, another stage of life for our Chinook salmon. This is a salmon fry. Hi, salmon. Thank you so much for joining us today. Oh, yes. I'm very, very excited to be here to read off some of the different types of organisms. I believe we're going to be focusing on fish. Yes, I think it's very appropriate because you are indeed a fish. Yes, yes, yes. Salmon fry, are you excited? All right, let's begin, everyone. Ah, Amodites. Mm. Anar, ooh, that's a tricky one. I just learned to read. We'll sound it out. Anarichthys. Hmm, like a wolf eel, maybe? Rathbunella. Hypsoblenius. Caranx. Kingfishes, ooh. That sounds lovely. Chloroscombrus. Bumpers. Do you want to read some little salmon fry? Sure. Celine. Lookdowns and moonfish. Oh. Cereola. Amberjacks. Tra. Ooh. Tracurus. Jack mackerels. Arcofletes. Ick, ick, ooh, is, 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 ooh, that's a tricky one. Ick, I see, is, is, we'll go with that. That's okay. Sometimes if you don't know the word, you can still try to sound it out, and it's fine. Canopheus. Neoclinus. Ooh, they got some iridescence there. Erectus. Gibboncia, Northeastern Pacific kelp fishes. Ooh, that's a very fancy name. Heterostichus. Ooh, Coryphena, dolphin fishes. Ooh, I actually learned about that. Oh, no, no, Laura, you were telling me about that. Oh, yes, I recently went to the Monterey Bay Aquarium, and they told me, and I learned that dolphin fishes apparently have chromatophores. Ooh, they can change color. Yep, pretty amazing. Ooh, Brach, Brachistius, Brachistius. Ooh, that's a good one. Ooh, let me try a few. Uh, Chimatogaster. Ambio, Ambiotoka. Ambiotoka, that's a good one. Hyperprosopon. That's a cute fish. <laughs> Hysteriocarpus. Micrometrus. Phanerodon. 
Rico Chilas. Clevelandia. Clevelandia. Ooh. Tenogobius. Eucyclo. Eucytoclobius. Ooh, the camouflage is very well. Gilikitius. Gilikitius? Maybe. Ilif. Elipness. 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 Yeah, we'll go with that. <laughs> Lepidogobius. Lepidogobius. Lithi. Lithribe. Lithribeness. Yes. Lithribeness. Lithulia. Rhinogobiops. That was a good one. Typh Typhlogobius. Typhlogobius. Ooh. Anisotremus. Brachygenius. Irella. Kyphosis. Chubbs. Oh, Chubbs, excuse me. Media, Media Luna. Halico. Halicoras? Hmm. Bodianus. Hogfishes. Alloclinus. Labrisomus. Paraclinus. La Calolatius. Tillus. Oh, Cardiotillus. Apodictus. Bolus. Ovicola. Oh. Wait, I would first like to mention, I learned recently that Arya is the one that made all of these little images, and they're really cute, so I just like to point that out. Yes, they're very accurate. It's really amazing. Stereo, ooh, Stereolepis, giant sea basses. We used to have one here at the Academy. It was amazing. Palma, Palma Canthus. They have some lovely stripes. I would really like those stripes. You look good in those stripes. Thank you. Abu Def. Oh, Abu Defduf, Sergeant Majors. Promise. Hypsip, Hypsipops, Hypsipops? Hypsipops? Oh, sounds right. Heteropra, oh, Heteroprac, Heteropriacanthus. There we go, Heteropriacanthus. Pristigenis. Attractoskion. Chilotrema. Synoxion. Weak fishes. Oh, I don't think that's accurate. They must be pretty strong. Genyonemus. Menticurus. Ooh, king croakers. That's a cool name, too. Oh. Roncador. Seraphus. Umbrina. Acanthosibium. Katsuwanus. Sarda. Bonitos. Must be bonito. Scomber. Sanus. Bluefin and yellowfin tuna. Sky Talina and who in Pinafellus hmm. I Porthodus my Cetras my Certo Perca hmm. Paralabrex Pronotogramus Spirena Barracudas. Anoflacus. Oh no, Placras, excuse me. Saba Sebi de Kaitas. Hit this? Had this? Yeah, maybe an inflection there somewhere. Cryolophus. Enogramus. By Tictes. Ooh, that's a tricky one. There's a lot of those. La Plagiogramus. 
You want to try that one? Okay. Uh, the Fister. Caprillus. Cathetostoma. Defius. Oh, that's a really cool nose. Like oh days. Like oh days? Maybe like a days. Like onema. Prosopium. Freshwater white fishes. Conogium. Oh! We forgot to hand it off. Well, yes, we were here for the fish portion, but we actually have another special guest. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Well, why don't you hide in the little pebbles of the sand bed, and I'm going to leap on out of here like I would in a stream. Bye! All right, we have a third guest, friends. This is our California newt. They're going to help us read some lichen and mosses, I believe. All right. Hi, California newt. Well, hello. Okay, here we go. It's Diploscythes, greater lichens, graphus, graffiti lichens. Ooh, such artful things. Belliotrema, barnacle lichens. Gyalecta, gyalecta. There it is. Lictus, blemish lichens. Stictus. Looks like it's on a stick. That makes sense. Uh, Topelia. Mm. Polemma. Tree jelly lichens. Mm, they look like they would be them jellies. And, ki and Kylium. Uh, Lathagrium. We'll try to go a little bit quicker. Leptogium. Skin lichens. Skytinium. Tingiopsidium. Ooh, that's a good long one. Lobria? Lobaria. Long lichens. There we go. Lobria. Lobarina. Pseudocyphelaria. Ooh, speckle belly lichens. Appropriately named. Sticta. Moon lichens. Leptochidium. Massalongia. Polychidium. Nephroma. Nephromia. No, no, nephroma. There it is. Kidney lichens. Areoderma. Uscopanaria. Hanaria. Shingle lichens. Soroma. Dendrisco column. Ooh, that's a long one. Peltigera. Pelt lichens. Lacynthium. Black thread lichens. Icmadophila. Peppermint drop lichens. Hmm? Oh, Aspicilia, drunk disc lichens. Circinaria, Circinaria. Lobathalia. Acrola, Acrolosia. Crab's eye lichens. Lipra, full of wart lichens. Pertusaria, poor lichens. Rizocarpon, map lichens. Oh, and I think that's it. That finishes our segments. Thank you so much for sharing your screen time with us, Laura. Well, of course, I do a lot of programs on the public floor all the time, and I want to make sure that you get your spotlight, especially because you are a California newt, and it's California Biodiversity Day. Of course. Well, thank you so much, everyone. I hope you enjoy the rest of the live stream. Off to the next person. Bye. Thanks so much, Laura. That was delightful. Um, before I hand it over to our next presenter, I do want to let you all know about something that is coming up later in our program. Um, I think we've mentioned a few times throughout the stream that there's like an obscene number of beetles on this list. It's so many beetles. Um, and we still have quite a few left to go, even though we've read just over 5,000 
organism names, which is amazing. That's a milestone. Um, so later today, we have a wheel that we have put together where we're going to spin to see who reads the rest of the Beatles. Uh, so stay tuned in the last hour of the program. That is going to be coming up. And I'm on the wheel, and I really, really hope I don't have to read the Beatles. But that's a future problem for future Sadie. Um, right now, I'm going to go ahead and hand it over to Gabby to read us through the next set of names. Amazing. Absolutely played it all. Yeah. Acanthi Acanthosinus Acryson Athe Serenus Amanus Anastrangalia Anaflomorpha Anaflus Anaflus Arco Dantes Arhopolis Asimum Atimia Batal Rachisomida Brothilus Calidium Calimus Calloids, Centrodera, Coenopoeus, Cortodera, Crossidius, Derobracus, Dicentris, Dorcasina, Anaphelodes, Enoplord, Enoploders, Enoploders. Etorophus, Eucrosis, Eudistenia, Eutromula, Evodinus, Acmeops, Gramoptera, Haplitus, Hesperanoplium, Holoplora, Hypodera, Hyperplatus, Icosium, Ipocus, Judolia, Leptalia, Leptura, Lepturopsis, Lophopogonius, Lipsimena, Malacopteris, Megacuma, Meganopleum, Megasimum, Megobrium, Methia, Molo Molorcus, Mononilema. Monochemus, the Sawyer beetles. Nathrius. Neandra. Neanthophylax. Nisidalis. Allosterma. Sterna. Neobelamira. Neoclitus. Neospondylus. Neo Nothopleurus, Oberia, Oime, Opsimus, Ortholectura, Osmetus, Pachyta, Paranopleum, Paratimia. Perarthus, Perarthus, Pi, Phy, Pidonia, Plectrura, Plinoma, P 
polyanus. Prionus. Pronocera. Pseudastilopsis. Pseudogarotina. Pseudoxylosteus. Purpurisenus. Pygoleptura. Ragium. Rosalia. Saperda. Gizax, Semenotus, Spanothicus, Stenaspis, Stenochorus, Stenostrophia, Sternidocinus, Strophiona, Styloxus, Susua Kana Kanga Sina Feta Holo Russia Nephrotoma Tiger Craneflies Foro Tenia Tipula Common Craneflies Trichocera Seroxes Chaetopsis, banded wing flies. Corenops. Diacrita. Eucesta, corn cell flies. Notogramma. Physiphora. Seroterella. Pseudotephyr. Tefritina, Stichtomia, Tetropsis menus, Tetroxa, Calypt, Anas and Costas hummingbirds, my favorite, Adelinia, Amsenchia, Fiddlenecks, Anderson Glossum, Cryptantha, Annual Cryptanthus, Sinoglossum, Hound's Tongue, Aramocaria, Green Neocaris, Hackelia, Stick Seeds, Harpa Gamella, Johnstonella, Lapula, Lithospermum, Stone Seeds, Pacoons, and Gromwells, Martensia, Bluebell, Oreocaria, Perennial Cryptanthus, Pectocaria, Comb Seeds, Plagiobothris, Popcorn Flowers, Simpson, uh, Simpson anthus, Amsenchiopsis, Eretia, Tequila, Euploca, Heliotropium, Heliotropes. All right, you made it through. How do you feel? That was hard. There's so many species that I've never seen and I've never heard of. Yes, that has been my experience of this whole 12 hours um, and all of the preparation before. Lots of things I had no idea existed, let alone lived in our state. Um, well, thank you so much for, for joining us today, uh, Gabby. That was awesome. I, I also love that you like pour through them in under your time in the most like calm demeanor possible. It was, it was lovely. Thank, Thank you very you. much. Thank you. All right, folks, we are approaching only three hours remaining. We are about three quarters of the way through this stream. Um, I'm going to fill some time before our next guest by going through some more of the species.
that have been missed. So let's dive in. Sparothalma. Typhocetes? Cosmocomodia. My Mimosola. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Ormiris. Oresis. Onycoldia. Perilampus. Sinopeus. Eusapiga. Crombiano. Crombiano Pyja, probably. Um, Sapija. Caucus. Eulacanium. Parasicesta. Parthenolacanium. Protopulvinaria. Pulvinaria. Pulvinariella. <laughs> Tormiella. Tormiella. Uh, Hesperoquorixa. Cigara. Uh, Trichocorixa. So small. Amenestis. Chilichorus. Dallasielis, Microporus, Pangeus, Tominatus, uh, Dactylopius, Cochineal Scale Bugs. I'm pretty sure these are the ones that you can make a really beautiful red dye out of. Um, Macrovalia, Orovalia. Furia cushion scale insects. It's so like fibrous. That is such a weird looking thing. I love it. Matsococcus, Stomacoccus, Antianthe, Centrodontus, uh, Certolobus, Ideoderma. Multarioides? Um, Perin, Perintone? Philia? Platycotus? Spicitilis? Stictocephala? Stictopelta? Telemona, Telemona Amphi, Telenaca, Tortistulus, Mesovelia, Ammonostatherium, Nipococcus, Penthococcus, uh, Planococcus, Pseudococcus, Pudo, Spilococcus, Amor Amorphicola, uh, Aphaloroida, Aritinilla, uh, Cacosilla, Cynthia, Euclid. Ponchinera, Prisulia, Heterocilia, Nyctophalarus, Hexaphila, Scylla, Persevora, Apiomeris, Bee assassins, wheel bugs, Emisea, Empicoris, Lophostectus, Melon, 
Milana Lestes? Paratrotomoa? And that is enough for filler. I'm going to go ahead and hand it over to our next speaker. Go ahead, Olivia. Great. Hi, I'm Olivia Van Dam. My pronouns are she, her. I am a community science coordinator on in the Center for Biodiversity and Community Science. So since biodiversity is in my title, this feels very exciting and very amazing to be part of this extravaganza. So I'm going to start and share um, some of my poetry. Um, I love writing poetry and it is a way that I express and connect um, my love for nature and my excitement and just joy when I am in nature. So I'll share more throughout, but I'll start with this one. And this was published in a magazine called Sisu Magazine, um, an issue five, Making Waves. And this poem is called Turquoise and Brown. Poppies and lupins, hawks and pelicans, Palm trees and coconuts, nopales, turquoise and brown. Tracking dreams where desert landscapes meet ocean point breaks, California to Mexico and back. Visiting memories through the smell of copal, a Frida embellished candle burning reminds me that her art has transcended time and place, just like the cold California coastal current upwells nutrients for thousands of miles and humpback whales' majestic melodies travel great distances knowing no borders. Complex tidal rhythms, barnacles mark high tide zones, seaweed as a clue to sheltered coves, turquoise and brown. Brown body, brown skin, brown woman. Brown like the otter, like the plumage of the pelican, like kelp that protects and provides like La Serena in Lotaria, like the soil that mi bisabuelo worked with in the fields, like a refreshing licuado de plátano con chocolate. Who am I does not solely exist in the familiar or comfortable. Conditioned to believe surfing was out of reach for a brown woman like me, pushing against these beliefs, I pursued what began as a dream. Turquoise and brown. Where turquoise and brown patterns flow, Seagulls giving us clues to a falling tide and lichens help determining south facing rocky shores. Great. All right, let's read. Okay, Ancanthoparacotus. <laughs> Adela. Alu Alucida. Agrothesia. Ativa. Oh, I love the patterns there. Samoka. Tegete. Batras Chedra. Bendelia. Belastobasis. Woo! <laughs> Holcosera. Buculatrix, Bondia, Calcoreus, Coretius, Procoretius, Tabina, Coleophora, Latissima, Anokia, Cosmoparaterix. Aurelia, Periploca, Pyrodericus. I wonder if it's something to do with fire or it's red or orange. Sorogenia, Stagmatophora, Stilbosis, Walshia, Acacus. <laughs> Comadia, Giviria, Hypopota, <laughs> Toronia, P 
Pyronoctis. Alephus. Con Conchroderma. Oh, and so these might be the little barnacles that I was talking about in my poem. Um, yeah, they're so beautiful. And they are on the whale's tail there. Dosima. Membra no balonus. Mel mem I'm going to try this one again. <laughs> mem oh, okay. Membra, membra no balonus. <laughs> Semi balonus. Amphi balonus. Balonus. Barnacles, rock barnacles. These are so fun to see all over the tide pools when we're out tide pooling for Snapshot Cal Coast but they can also be really sharp. And so it's super important to be careful with your hands when you're on those rocky tide pools. Mega balanus. Menicilia. Ooh, and this one's growing on top of another shell, which is really cool. Paroconcavus. So I live out at Ocean Beach in San Francisco in the outer sunset. And one of the top things I see when I'm out at the beach are the sand dollars. And so this barnacle lives on the sand dollar and it's so beautiful and pink. And it's really fun when you find a sand dollar with this barnacle living on top of it. So this one reminds me of home. Synanthomalus. Oh, Archinolocus. Um, so hummingbirds are really special to me. I love hummingbirds. And I highly recommend you look up a very special story from uh, Chairman Val Lopez of the Amamutsan tribe. He tells a story about Mount Amanam, which is a really tall mountain here in the South Bay of San Francisco. And he tells the story uh, about their creation story and about how hummingbirds brought fire to people. So highly recommend that. Lecufanius, seagulls. Pelicanus. Pelicans are super special to me too. Um, some of my environmental heroes growing up in California and being Latina and um, Mexican American um, heritage are Cesar Chavez and Dolores Huerta. And they fought for workers' rights in agricultural farms, but they also were really fighting for, you know, the the rights of nature as a whole. And when they were, you know, going against pesticides um, and pesticide use in the agricultural fields because of the harm that it was causing to humans, it was also causing harm to animals and to birds like DDT. And pelicans were definitely um, declining because of these uh, this use. And so growing up in the Latino community, these two were people that I saw also as environmental heroes for social justice, but also for environmental justice, who helped save birds like pelicans and other raptors. Alucintia. Crybnoposis. Oh, I love sea anemones. Epicatus. Ascophyllum. Fucus. The vesseled rockweeds. Those are so fun. They look little fingers. Pelvitopus, Sylvietia, Sargassum, Stephanocytus, Ooh, Pseudolinthoderma, Ralphsia, Analipus, Colfomenia, Puffball algae. Dactosil siphon. I love kelp and seeing it all over. And this summer we saw so many different types of algaes and kelps just growing in all the different colors, brown algae, red algae, um, and is just gorgeous. And the slippery ones, you got to really be careful for. Petolonia. Hydroclathrus. Psychosiphon. That was not right. <laughs> Thrombium. <laughs> Pachnolepia. Christothrix. Oh, these are gold dust lichens. I love lichen. Aluxoria. Lecanographa. 
So lichens are really special, and I just finished this book this week, um, Entangled Life by Merlin Sheldrake. It is an amazing book, and I think my favorite chapter in it was about lichens. Um, they are really special because they used to be thought that there were only like two like symbiotic relationships between um, bacteria and fungi or an algae and a fungi. Um, but now they're finding that there's actually a many, many different types of relationships and more than just two relationships in lichen. So it's a really incredible kind of way or a very open field of study that can just continue expanding on what are all the relationships that are existing in one lichen. Okay, plectocarpin, combea, crespania, Opographa, Dendrographa, Sigredia, Lichenostigma, Candelaria, Candle Flame Lichens, another beautiful one, Candelaria, Candelariella, Gold Speck Lichens. So when you put like a little microscope or you know, put them under a slide, you can see so many different little worlds that live inside of these. Um, and this, the shapes and everything you get when you zoom in on your camera too, when you're taking photos of them, it's really incredible. Kinofica, stubble lichens. Helena, uh, Hel Helianthus, Helianthus. Heliomeris. Hemithotheca. Hemazonella. Amazon Hesperivax Heterotheca False Golden Asters Hier um Hieria come see um that was hard hawkweeds these are really pretty beautiful Holocarpha Holozonia Holcia so cool Hymenopapus, woolly whites. Hymenthrothrix. Hymenooxus, rubber weeds. Acronochia. Ar Arinaria. Cardionema. Sarasatium, mouse ear chickweeds. Chilaria, Drymaria, Eremongon. Oh, those are beautiful. Hartmanella, Hartmaniella, Loflingia. Oh, look at they have the penny there for scale. It's super tiny. Moringia, Grove Sandworts. Pacronychia, Nailworts. Polycarpin, Pseudostellaria, Sabulina, Saginia, Scop Scopulophia, Silene, Catchflies, Spergularia, Stellaria, Chickweeds. Lupinus, lupine, lupins, these are so beautiful. And you see these at the California coast too. Um, I'm a surfer and I brought in some other magazines and books and things that I wanted to recommend. Um, this is a book called Woman in Water. Um, so lupins really remind me of the coast. And um, I'm featured in this book and it has many other women who are surfers. This is Bonnie, she's from the Bay Area. Um, who are underwater divers, who are, um, and there's just tips and tricks on getting out into the water and enjoying like your local waterways. So just a plug for this book. And um, this poetry book is written by my friend and it's all about California coast. Um, and her poems are inspired by flowers like this in the same ecosystem. So I thought the cover of this kind of reminded me of this as well. All right, um, Papavir, 
All right. All right. And sweet. then your segment on the California poppies. Awesome. Yeah. Thank you. Poppies so much. are sweet. Thank you so much, Olivia. Um, I loved hearing the the poetry and the stories, the book recommendations. That was just like a really great and personal uh, way to go through all of this. So thank you so much. Yeah, thank you. Uh, coming up next, we are gonna have Shannon. And Shannon, I think I warned you about this, but we're gonna ask you to do a little bit of a spelling bee with some of these scientific names. So that is gonna require me to say them in a way that you can de decipher. So feel free to blame me if um, <laughs> you don't get any of these. Yeah. Um, but I think we're gonna jump right in with the, the spelling bee options. Are you ready? I'm ready. Do you wanna do your intro first? I'm Shannon. You are. Okay, sure. Yeah. Uh, Shannon Bennett. I'm the chief of science and the Harry and Diana Hine Dean of science and research collections at the California Academy of Sciences. And I love viruses and everything we've talked about so far today has viruses. So I'm really ready for anything. Amazing. All right. Well, let's jump in. So the first, um, the first genus name that I would like you to try to spell is Haida Tostega. <laughs> Haida Tostega. Okay. H-Y-D-A-T-O-S-T-E-G-A. -E yes. 100% accurate. Very impressed. I almost went with the like breakfast toast spelling of Tostega. Mm. I'm really glad I didn't. Good instincts. <laughs> All right, let's go on to our next one. We've got parathalassius. Parathalassius. Okay. P-A-R-A-T-H-A-L-A-S-I-A-S. -A -A oh, really close until the end. A-S-S-I-U-S. -S -S -S. -S. Yeah. All right, let's take a stab at this next one. Uh, chymomyza. Oh my God, you're really picking hard ones. <laughs> <laughs> chymomyza? Yes. Okay, chymomyza. C H Y M O M Y Z A. Yes, very good. That one I feel like was pretty tricky. That but was yeah. tricky. And you yeah, notice but... I used the Canadian pronunciation of Z. No, I used the American version. <laughs> I can never remember where I'm at. I'm Canadian, that's why. Make fun of the sound. Awesome. Let's go on to the next one. We've got Dactylolabus. Dactylolabus. D A C T Y L O L A B U S. So close. <sighs> Off by one. It's just I S at the end. But I mean, I feel like close enough. <laughs> the pronunciation would probably still be the same. <laughs> yes. All right. So in this one, you get maybe a little bit of a hint if you're familiar um, with this genus. So the common name is the tiger flies, and the genus name is. Koinosia. Konios. Koinosia. Koinosia. Okay. C H O E N O S E A. I think again, uh, pronunciation would have been the same. Yeah. I don't know if I said this one right. Mm -hmm. Um no, I don't know, but maybe sometimes it's a soft C, so it could be synosia. Synosia, mm hmm Yeah, that mm -hmm. seems likely to me. All right, how about synthesiomia? Synthesiomia. Synthesiomia. S-Y-N-T-H-O. S O M Y M I A. I don't even know if I. That one had a lot of symbols. It was like, it's, it's a lot to keep track of. Yeah. Oh. 
we can call it close enough. Um, how about pseudonomonera? Okay. Pseudonomonera. P S E U D O N O pseudonomonera. N O M O N E U R A. Yes. Fantastic. Oh. That was a long one. Mm. Great, great job. Um, I think we have just a few more of these. Okay. Um, so this again, we've got the common name here, the waltzing flies, which sounds like very lovely. Mm. Um, the scientific name is Prochiliza. Prochiliza. Um, P R O C H I L I Z A. Again, very close. It's just that C H Y, yep. um, which that was like 50 50, I feel like. <laughs> <laughs> You're so generous. <laughs> um, what about Wolfarsia? Wolfarsia. Wolfarsia. Um, W O L P H A R C H I A. This one was like kind of uh, extra mean. It had some H's mm, in it in places that you wouldn't even expect. This is a very German <laughs> version of a Latin name, I feel. Oh, yeah, it does, it does seem that way. Um, how about. Scathophagia. Scathophagia. Mm -hmm. Scathophagia. S C A T H O P H A S I A. Mm, again, so close. Mm -hmm. yes. And all right. Um Hmm, I'm trying to decide for this one. Give me a second. No, I'm really <laughs> wishing I had afternoon coffee for this gig. <laughs> I think Mixosargus. Mixosargus. M-Y-X-O-S-A-R-G-U-S. -S. Yeah, you got it. Fantastic. Okay, the next one is the Leaf Walkers. Um, and the scientific name is... Chalco surface. Chalco surface. Uh, C H A L C A O O Chalco surface. Um, S E A R F U S. <laughs> oh, S Y R. Okay. Again, close. I, yeah, not even close. Right? First but half. Like, yeah. No. Hard to hard to know. Understanding every decision you're making. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Right. <laughs> Indeed. Right with you. Indeed. Okay. I think this is the last one that we're going to ask you to spell, and then you can just read the rest, and it should be like okay. super easy comparison, right? Cool. Um, <laughs> so this one is Spixamorpha. 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 Okay, Spixamorpha. Um, P S P Y S X A M O R P H O. Mo A P H A. <laughs> the second half, yes. Like, <laughs> okay, all right. First half, not okay. so much. Not but so thank much. Thank you so much um, for playing along. We we wanted to take the opportunity to you know that add was some fun. fun. In. That was really <laughs> fun. Thank you. Thanks for being a good sport, and I will hand it off to you to read the rest of your list. Great. Eighties. This is a genus of mosquito. I'm holding a prop, actually, of mosquito larvae in water. 
I don't know if you can see them wiggling. Mosquito larvae are called wigglers, and they actually have to breathe from the surface, so they'll float slowly up, take a breath through their butt snorkel, their butt snorkelers, and then they'll dive down if they're fearful of predation. I'm kind of the predator in this role. So Aedes is a genus that includes the yellow fever mosquito, Aedes aegypti, and the Asian tiger mosquito, Aedes albopictus both of which transmit disease, dengue and Zika. Anopheles, these mosquitoes transmit malaria. Culex, this is the major vector of West Nile virus here in our state. Culicida, this is actually Cutacida larvae. They're the large winter mosquito and I collected them in my backyard. Orthopodo. My, uh, Maia, Sorophora, uh, Acradocera, Paraphrosilus, Argira, Condylostylus, Dactylomaia. So we're reading fly names and mosquitoes are actually in the fly group and flies are in the order Diptera, which means two wings. So they have two wings instead of four like moths, butterflies and other winged insects. So Dolochopus. Meditera, woodpecker flies. Neoparentia. Pelastonurus, Tachytrachus, Thambamia, Thripticus, Drosophila, small fruit flies, Fortica, Odoparina, Empis, Antoka, Areoptera, Geranomyia, Philolabus, Simplecta, Lambrolonchia, Lonchea, Silba, Lonchoptera. I kind of like that Silba name. I have an 18 year old daughter and I always play around with new names. Silba would be a great daughter's name. Mycopeza, Atherigona, shoot flies, shoot. Lisp, Mesembrina, Phaonia, Leia, Princess Leia, Heteromidas, Midas, Neromidas, Nemo Midas, sorry, Nemo. Opomidas, Raphiomidas, Odontoloxosus, <laughs> Siphonemia, <laughs> Cuterebra, Glear bot flies. I went on an expedition once to Ecuador. And one of the expedition participants gave birth to a bot fly on the expedition, which would, was buried in his thigh muscle. We had to put raw steak on it to finally have it come out. It was amazing. It was huge. Ostras. Geomyza. Haloptera. Toxonevra. Periscellus, Apocephalus, Megacelia, Peophila, Bertamia, Calotarsa, Grossetta, Grossetta, Polyporivora, Hogonortalis. Polinia, cluster flies. Chiliza. 
Maruna. Paro, Paramormia. Psychoda. Nice. Bitacomorpha. Chrysophilus. Chrysophilus. Symphoromia. Rountain, mocky, mount, rocky mountain bite flies. Melanophora. Dark. Stevenia, Omomaya, Boet, Boet, Chiria, Helicobia, Sarcophaga, common flesh flies. They feed on dead bodies. And you can actually age how long something's been dead by looking at the larval forms to see how far along they are in their development. Parallelo, paralleloma, Coboldia, Metatrichia, Pseudotrichia, Sinopinus, Eunoriste, Dictia, cute, and a finger. Saltella, sepsis, All right, I think we're going to end it there for our mosquitoes and flies. Thank you so much, Shannon, Thank for you. participating here. I will say I also have a bot fly story. Um, I, sure. I did archaeological field work in Belize, and all of the men on our team got bot flies oh, during that field season. None of the women did. I don't know what that's about. They're just stinky. One, <laughs> maybe. Um, <laughs> one guy actually got home back to the U.S. and three more bot flies came from the little hollow behind his ear. Triplets. Um, like several weeks after we got home, so the horrors did not end <laughs> when we we oh thought we were we thought we were done. Um, yeah, bot flies are, are real bad. Did you use, did anybody try raw steak? I mean, we really thought that might work. We I did don't. not try raw steak. There were a lot of tips about like, put duct tape over it, <laughs> leave your, like wherever the bite is, like submerged in water for a long time. Use like nail polish to suffocate them. Yeah, um, yeah those were, those are the tips that, that we had. And the now hazards all you have. of field work. It's a joy. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Well, thank you so much, Shannon. Thank um, you. Have fun and happy <laughs> California Biodiversity Day. Yay. Yay. All right. Um, I am going to hand it over to our next reader here. Um, Hannah. Hi, everybody. I'm uh, Hannah. I'm one of the graduate students on the Islands 2030 cohort. Um, and I'm fairly new to California. I mean, my first, I first worked out on Joshua Tree, so I got to know some animals, mostly birds, but yeah. All right. Up to Soros. Apphorstheria. Wraith, well, I don't know. Endo my chus my set five ma forma forma flora. I don't know. Um dice. Megalodai <laughs> Eusophorus Palaeoxenorus <laughs> Stena Ola <laughs> uh, <Bob> <laughs> Bobolim Morris Bobolim Mos 
Sir Restless. Sir Topfer. Virus. Audentius. That's kind of cute. Leech. Leek. Nith? Lick Nith. Guy Rinas? <laughs> hi, uh, hi. Holla. <laughs> Holla. Oh, no. <laughs> Hop Lip Plus. <laughs> Pel Peltaditus Ditus Peltaditus maybe Hello Forius Power Oh man Canta Power of four, loot three, duh. It's got pretty colors. Power of Terrelia. Palamananaya. Palamananaya. <laughs> Pro season. Dorcher, no. <laughs> uh, Rahigalita, let us. T. Furtus, T. Furitus, T. Tarot. No. <laughs> Torelia. Torelia? That sounds right. Um, Tama Plagia. True. True pain. True pain. Tripento. You Roforo Fora You Forora You Fora Val Valid Tibla That's a really I like the wings on that one Askafus Askafus Or I don't know and uh, I should know this. <laughs> and the uh, Axorus, Northern American toads. They're always so fat. So, oh man. Ceridior, <laughs> um, oh, crest, Cerida crest. Chorus frogs. They're so pretty. Raina. Here we go. Easy one. Pond frogs. <laughs> Rana. I probably even said it wrong still. <laughs> so, so cuff for pus. Southern spadefoot toads. Ooh. Spee. Western spadefoot toads. Is that a tadpole form? More? Um, Ambistona. Ambistona. Um, mole salamanders. Dicamptodon. Pacific giant salamanders. 
This one is really cute with the yellow spots. And, uh, and the, and the, D, and it die, D, that dies climbing salamanders. Uh, battle, bat, ratch, oh man, this is bad. <laughs> Batro, choose a Chusip, slender salamander, slide, oh man. Ooh. And Stina, and Stinas, and Stinas. Hydro man manatees, web toed salamanders. Pelly. Throwdown, Pelly Throwdown, no, <laughs> Woodland Salamanders, Ryo, Ryo, Co Trenton, Taro, Richa, Pacific Newts, very common. And Annalena's Northern American legless lizards. I actually did a survey once for legless lizards. Never saw any, but pretty cool. <laughs> Illiganarana? Illig no. El Glora. Western alligator lizard. Chirina, rubber boas. I want a boa. Lichinus, Lichinus, rosy boas. So pretty. Arizona, glossy snakes. Corla, Columbar. Northern American racers. Oh, that one's eating something. Con, 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 tie, sharp tailed snakes. I wonder what's sharp about it. Die, do, fizz, die, do, <laughs> oh man. Oh, hi, hi, Pista Glad. Uh, ooh, <laughs> night snakes, lamb, lamb, rope, listus, <laughs> king snakes, and milk snakes. I've seen some king snakes. They're super cool. Oh, Masticophis, whip snakes, Philo, Rhinoches, <laughs> Pit, <clears throat> Pit. Euphorus, pine, gopher, and bulls, snakes. Ooh, rhino. I got rhino. Rhinor, chirus, long nose snakes. Salvadoria, patch nose snakes. Sonoria, ground snakes. Ooh, Tentillus, centipede snakes. I wonder what that looks like. 
Trimo Trimorphodon Laurel Snake Laurel Snake Laurel Snakes Crotophytus uh collared lizards so cute glam gamadilla leopard lizards i've actually done some research with leopard lizards but yeah doing some monitoring and stuff so um i'm uh Happy to have done this, even though I'm pretty sure I did pretty bad, <laughs> but happy um, Biodiversity Day to everybody here in California. Thank you so much, Ayana, for, for like, who knew that there were so many multisyllabic reptiles and amphibians in California? Yeah. I think you were right on the money when you said that, like, Rana is, like, the perfect genus name. Um, no more should be... No, they shouldn't be longer than four letters. You need, <laughs> Honestly. You need that, um, I don't know, like, figure that out with yourself. This kind of can't be our problem, except it is our problem if you've actually chosen to do this. Um, so now we will hear from uh, Sterling, who I am going to switch it over to right now. We have a, a new a new thing. Cool. Um, hi, I'm Sterling Beliche. I work in the botany department as a curatorial assistant. Um, and I'm here to read some plants to you. Okay, this one is Apiastrum, Barula, Alicia, skip one, sorry, Secuda, Water Hemlocks, uh, Chimopterus, Spring Parsleys. Daucus or carrots. Eryngium. Probably said that wrong. <laughs> uh, Glina. Heracleum hogweeds. Linguisticum. It's good for all the tongue, tongue twisters everyone's had today. Uh, Liliopsis or grass warts. Lomadium, um, this one I definitely did not know the common name of, uh, biscuit roots, never heard that before. Um, Onancy or Onancea, I'm not sure, uh, water dropworts, Orionana, sounds like a dessert, Oxypolis, Peridiaridea, <laughs> Peridiaridea, um, and I am even less familiar with that common name, so <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how it could be common. Let's move on. <laughs> Podostera, Senecula, Seniculis, Spermo, <laughs> Spermolopsis. I can't talk today. <laughs> uh, Towskia umbrella warts. Vesper. Yabia. Aurelius or spike nards. Another common name that I did not know. <laughs> um, Hydrocotyl or water penny warts. Gamo. Cadia. Everlasting and Cudweeds. 
Hysteria or desert sunflowers? Glyptopalura, wish we had a picture for that one. Nephalium or cudweeds? Grindelia or also called gum plants? I find those a lot around here. Guterisia, <laughs> matchweeds and snakeweeds. Um, gymnanthium, well, harmonia, harmonia tarweeds. Pizardia, Castoclise, <laughs> Helenium or sneezeweeds. A lot of these are in the um, sunflower family, so they look very much like sunflowers. Oh, sorry, dwarf sunflowers are Helianthella. Um, Ionactus. <laughs> Isocoma or Jimmy Weeds or Golden Bushes. Iva. Haumea. Gentia. Kyhosia. I hope I'm saying that right. Draparia. Cute flowers. Amanthi. I don't know. <laughs> Um, your crypta, Hesperochiron, cute purple flowers, Hydrophyllum or water leaves. This one's a pretty one. Nemophila, baby blue eyes, and allies. Facelia, scorpion weeds. These ones are a lot of fun. Folistoma, not a good purple one. Romanzophia, Mr. Maidens, not a common name that I'm familiar with. Um, Tricardia, little, little guy it looks like. Another cute little one. Um, Folsoma, lots of tiny ones. Nama, Nema, Turicula. How did you guys know that purple's my favorite color? Um, <laughs> Platystemon. Hesperomechon. Really great poppy, Romnia. Uh, I, don't, I always hear people call them little egg, egg poppies. I've never heard the other, <laughs> the other common name because they look like a little sunny side up egg. Aconitum. Monk's hood. Tia, um, baneberries, and cohoshes. Anemonastrum. Anemone, so anemones and thimbleweeds. See those a lot. Ranunculus. Caltha. Clematis. Clematis or leather flowers. Lots of pretty ones in that family. Um, Coptis, golden threads. Delphinium, lock sprayers. Lots of really pretty delphiniums. Anemion, or anemion, false through anemones. Pelerpestes. <laughs> um, Cumlinia. Maybe. <laughs> oh, sounds like a dinosaur. Uh, Myosaurus, mouse tail. Pulsatilia, uh, cask flowers. These look like itty bitty ones. Thelictrum, meadow ruse. Troutavetaria, <laughs> tassel ruse. Keltus, hackberries, Shepardia, pretty berry looking fruits on that one. 
Adolphia. Cianophis, that's the California lilacs. Didn't have a common name on that, but I can throw it out there. <laughs> Calubrian, Calubrina, Candalia, Ramnus, Buckthorns. Lots of good stuff in that one. Um, Frangula, False Buckthorns. Pseudocyzophus. <laughs> it's a mouthful. Um, Sarco, Sarcomphalus, spiky, Akina, uh, the Dibby did, <laughs> I don't know, Adenostoma, Agrimonia, Agrimonies, <laughs> Malinicure, surface berries. I'm butchering these, man. Sorry, guys. <laughs> Fanny's parsley hurts. I don't know. Uh, Argentinia silverweeds. Aruncus. Circocarpus mountain mahogany. Kim. <laughs> Kim. Batia, Mountain Miseries. It's so, so sad. Kami uh, <laughs> Batiaria. Kologoni, <laughs> uh, maybe? Kamarum, <laughs> Marsh, Chinkifoli. Some of these common names are more complicated than the scientific names. <laughs> um, Critagus Hawthorns. Dysphoria, or dysphoria, <laughs> <laughs> I can't talk. Uh, I'm gonna try the shrubby, whatever that is. <laughs> Drymocallus. Belugia. You, Avens? <laughs> it's more of a question and a. <laughs> Heteromalies, lots of these everywhere. Holodiscus, Perkelia, it's kind of a cool looking flower. No flower. Perkelielli, or Kelia, I don't know, I give up. <laughs> Ivestia, mouse tails. Those sound cute. Ludica. Ludica. Um, line. <laughs> Lyonophamnus. There we go. Man, you guys give me all the weird ones. Uh, <laughs> Nivis, Nivusia. Snow wreaths. Not familiar with that one either. Omlaria, uh, Paraphylum, that looks like a nice fruit, Petrophytum, <laughs> um, Biosocarpus, Nine Barks, Potentia, Sinkifolds, Sanguisorba, Burnett, Hershia, cliff roses or bitter bushes, or and bitter bushes. Cymbaldia, malice, apples, good, good eaten there. Sorbus, rowans, and mountain ashes. Spirea, meadow sweet. Cute little pom poms. Um, Hesperos, nighty. <laughs> Perioteria. Not sure how the common name is any better. <laughs> Pelotories. <laughs> uh, Pilea, clearweed. Urtica, nettles. I had to remember that one for plant taxonomy. Hurdy Urdy is how I would have remembered that one. And I think with that, uh, my, my segment's done.
Thank you so much, Sterling. Thanks for doing this. It's been it's been entertaining to watch all day. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I guess if you work in botany, common names are often less common than the actual scientific ones. Oh, for sure. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I get the confusion. <laughs> um, uh, we're going to keep the California plant love going um, because we will be hearing next from Sarah Jacobs, who is our curator of botany here. Um, let's see. I'm going to hand it over to Sarah. Hi. Hello, everyone. My name is Dr. Sarah Jacobs. I am a curator here in the botany department at the California Academy of Sciences. I'm also the Howell Chair of Western North American Botany. Um, so I feel I need to make a super quick plug for um, how awesome our biodiversity is here west of the Rockies and in particular in the California Floristic Province. Um, I know that they're starting to load my name, so I want to just expand on that a little bit. Um, you know, you may have heard already or, you know, either in this live stream or in other programs about how much uh, natural diversity we have here in the state. And a lot of that is um, because of our very unique geology uh, combined with the climate that we have here in California. Um, it's not just California that makes up the California floristic province. It actually extends up into Oregon and a little bit into uh, Oregon and south into Baja. So it's a really special part of the world where uh, our geology creates some really unique places that, that plants grow. Uh, and all of the topography creates these small little microclimates that combined with our geology um, creates really incredible places for new species to form. And that's one of the reasons why we have so many unique um, plant species here in the state. So with my little plug there for uh, biodiversity, I'll go ahead and get started. Oh, the other thing I wanted to say, when I was learning plant taxonomy um, back in the early 2000s, <laughs> dating me, um, uh, my teacher said it's very important that you don't stress about the Latin names. Um, you know, we have a good reason for that. The classification system, the, you know, the, the Latin names that we use um, for, uh, you know, describing all of the diversity around us. Um, that's fine that we use them and everything. The most important thing is that you know how to spell them. And so he very much encouraged us to pronounce the Latin names so that you remembered how to spell them. So uh, I've gotten a lot of flack for that because some people think it's really important to pronounce it a certain way, um, but that's ridiculous. So anyway, as long as you know how to spell it, that's the most important thing. Okay, I'll get started. Okay, so the first one is Frankenia, the sea heat. Carloritia, the right warts. Hypoestes, Justicia, Ruelia, Amphilophium, the trumpet vines, Chylopsis, Acanthomintha, the thorn mints, Agastache, Hyssops, Condia, Hedioma, Lepikinia, the pitcher sages, Lycopis, the water whorehounds, Mentha, the mints, Monardella, Pogogony, <laughs> the Musa mints. Prunella, self heal. Pycnanthemum, the mountain mint. So, just as a quick backdrop, we are totally in the Lanieles. Um, we have been since I started. And this is a big order of plants that houses a lot of the mints. That's the little section that we're in right now. This is Scutellaria, the skull caps. Stachys, the hedge nettles. Tucrium, the wood sages. Trichostema, the blue curls. Pinguicula, the butterworts. This is actually a carnivorous plant. I got a cool fun fact about this one. Those leaves, uh, if you were to touch them or look closely at them, you can see these like really 
uh, wet hairs that are on the surface. That's part of their uh, carnivorous uh, structure. Um, in order to pollinate, to, to have a pollinator come and visit their flowers, they put their flowers on these really long stalks so that the flowers are held very far away from those leaves that are carnivorous. Okay. Utricularia, the bladder wart. Lindernia, the false pimpernels. Ibicella. Probiscidia. Forestiera, the swamp privets. Braxinus, the ashes. Menadora. Aphilin. Castilea, the paintbrushes. Okay, now we're gonna have to pause. So this is a number, another member of the, the Lamiales, that's the order. The family that this belongs to um, is the Orobanchaceae, and the genus, of course, is Castilea. I'm pausing here because this is the group of plants that I work in. So um, there's so much to say. Um, but I have a cool thing here that I saw when I sat down. Somebody put a lovely little jar of paintbrushes here. I don't know who you were, um, but I appreciate it greatly. Um, I have been given paintbrushes on many occasions um, because I study the paintbrushes, the common name, the paintbrushes. Um, this is a really cool group of plants. Uh, this whole, most of this family, the Orobanchaceae, uh, are parasites, and Castilea is a parasite. It's what we call a hemiparasite. So it's capable of doing its own photosynthesis. That's why it has green leaves. Um, but it also connects to other plants um, using a special organ in the roots called the hostorium. And that hostorium allows the roots of Castilea to access water and nutrients and all kinds of sugars and minerals from a host plant and slurp them up into their own tissues. So um, Castilea is very beautiful. Uh, but also very parasitic. Chloropyron, this is a close relative of Castilea. Cordylanthus, the bird's beaks, another very close relative. And I'm hoping we have Trifysaria. Is that next? Oh, no, okay. Dicranostegia. Copsiopsis, the ground cones. Orthocarpus, the owl's clovers. Pedicularis, the lousewort. Trifice area, there we are. Go ahead. Diplacus. Erythranthi, the monkey flowers. Mimithanthi. Bacopa. Calatriki, the water starworts. Kalinzia, the blue eyed Marys. Gambelia. Gradiola, the hedge hyssops. Hippurus, mare's tails. Holmgrenanthi. Howelliella. Kekilia. Kekiella. Kekiella. Leucospora. Obi-Wan Kenobias. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I've never heard that. Limicella, the mudweeds. Morandella. Mojavia, Neogarinum, <laughs> Nothocolone, Natalanthus, the toad flax, Penstemon, the beard tongues, Plantago, the plantains, Pseudorontium, Pseudorontium. Cyrocarpus, Stemodia, Tonella, Veronica, the speedwells, Budlea, the butterfly bushes and their allies, Scrofularia, the figworts. This is a cool one. This is a native, the California bee plant, Scrofularia californica. Um, you, if you all ever see these while you're hiking, there's some actually right outside the museum. Um, along the back entrance. 
Uh, they have these really cool little tubular flowers that you can peer into and you can see the stamens sort of sticking up on the top. Aloysia, glandularia, the mock verveins, lantana, phyla, the frog fruits, verbena, the verveins, calicanthus, sweet shrub, elatini, the waterworts, acalypha, three seeded mercuries, bernardia, Croton, Dytaxis, Euphorbia, the Spurges. Now, this one's really cool. So, this is in uh, the Euphorbiaceae. Um, and this particular genus, Euphorbia, has a very unique type of flower called the Cyathea. And the Cyathea doesn't really exist anywhere else. It's just this genus that makes this type of flower. If you can see in that picture, there are these sort of little round things that are attached to a cup. Those round things are the female flowers and the, the ovaries have expanded and they're starting to hang outside of the cyathea. Um, inside that cup where you, you can't really see it here are little tiny male flowers. So the male and the female flowers are separate, uh, still in the same flower, but on separate little pedicels. Stalingia. Tragia, the nose burns. Hypericum, St. John's wort. Hesperolinon, dwarf flax. Linum, the flaxes. Sclerolinon. Ternera. Tetracoccus. Populus, the poplars, cottonwoods, and aspens. Viola, the violets. They're so cute. Crocanthemum, the frost weeds. Abutilon, Indian mallows. Ienia. Aramalki. Promontodendron, the flannel bushes. Parasantia. Hibiscus, the hibiscuses. <laughs> Horsefordia. Iliamna, the wild hollyhocks. Malocathamnus, the bushmallows. Malva, the mallows. Malva viscus. Malvella. Sidalsia, the checker blooms. This is one of our um, beautiful spring bloomers here in the headlands. Sper Speralsia. The globe mallows, Durka, <laughs> Amania, the red stems, Lithrum, or the loose stripes, Rotala, the tooth cups, Camisonia, Camisoniopsis, the sun cups, Caminarion, the fireweeds. Chilismia, Chilismiella, Circaea, Enchanter's Nightshades, Clarkia, Epilobium, the Willow Herbs, Aramothera, 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 that's it. Eulobus, Gaophytum, the Ground Smoke. Ludwigia, primrose willows. Neo Holmgrenia, if you remember the Holmgrenia from earlier, this is the new version. That was a joke. Maybe not that funny. <laughs> um, okay, so this is one of those ones where my whole saying the name so that you remember how to spell it came up. So I say this, O-N-O-T-H-E-R-A, so that I remember that it's O-E-N-O-T-H-E-R-A. Um, but most people say Enothera. Uh, these are the evening primroses, sundrops, and bee blossoms. Taraxia. Tetra tetrapteron. Brassenia. Nufar, the yellow pond lilies. 
nymphaea, the water lilies. These are all really beautiful, these, these water plants, but they are a pain to collect. Um, if you, so usually when we make plant specimens, we are trying to capture as much of the plant as possible. Um, you know, the leaves and the flowers of these plants are floating at the top of the water, but there are stems that go down to the, the dirt at the bottom of the pond. Um, and so getting down underneath the lilies to pull them up um, is actually not very pleasant. Um, I really don't enjoy it. And um, yeah, so sometimes when I've collected them, I've just stepped the stems. But technically, you should dive down and grab them. Okay, this is oxalis, the wood sorrels. People call these clover all the time. Not clover. Um, Aristolochia, the pipe vines and the birthworts. A serum, the wild gingers, and yes, the roots smell delicious. Anamopsis. Platinus. Acles. Berberis the barberries, Vancouveria, Arctomecon, 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 that sounds great, Argemony, the prickly poppies, Canvia, oh, that's cute, Corydalis, or Corydalis, Dendromicon, oh, that's a good one, Dicentra, the bleeding heart, Erendorferia, Escholtia, the poppies. Oh, we love those. They're all over everybody's shirts today. Mechanella. And that's it. Thanks for joining us, folks, and enjoy your next segment. My goodness, Sarah Jacobs, thank you for joining us and sharing yes. all of that wisdom. I will say one problem I have is that I think you spoke a little bit too much about wildflowers and we kind of attracted a bee to the studio. Oh, no. And now we're just going to have to figure out like how to get it out. And oh, it's gonna yeah. It's going to be a real pain. Um, it is going to be a pain. Good so luck just keep with that, that in mind for next time, maybe. Okay. Um, I'll keep that in mind. I guess one way we could deal with it is giving the bee a microphone, kind of letting it read some native <laughs> California species. Um, but this is kind of new ground for all of us. I've never let an insect do this before. So um, I'm going to pass it over to a bee. Hello. What is a flower without a pollinator, right? Hi, I'm Nat. The G is silent. Uh, <laughs> I work with the direct response fundraising team. So I work to raise money for all the things we do here. So if you're enjoying the program today, drop a donation down below to continue our very important work to protect California biodiversity. Um, so we've got our first little bee friend, Ansylandrena. No picture found. Andrena, mining bees. What are they mining? We don't know. Um, Calliopsis. It's cute on the little flower. Macroterra goblin bees. I would love to see a photo of that, but unfortunately none exist. Megandrena. You can't see it. Omagandrena. Lots of drainas in the building today. Panergynus. Okay. Perdita. Fairy. Oh my god, so cute. Oh, they really do look like fairies. So small, the Aphelinus. Oh, I'm gonna name it Linus. Oh, even smaller, and Carciella. Anthophora, the common digger bee. Anthophorula. Bombus, oh, the classic bumblebee. You gotta love them. Bracky Maleka. Bracky Nomada. Centrist oil diggers. I guess we know what they're digging for. Saratina, small carpenter bees. Very busy bees. Diodacia. Epiolus. Cellophane cuckoo bees. <laughs> okay. Eric. Crocus, 
Habropoda, mountain digger bees. Leopodus. Beautiful. Martinopus. Melectra, morning bees. Oh, my condolences. Melisodes. Nomada, nomad bees. It's in the name. Oreo. Pepo, no bees. Squash bees. Oh, I reckon they like squash. Svastra. Oh, what a little woolly creature. Tetraloniella, long horned mining bees. Triepiolus. Longhorn cuckoo bees. Lots of cuckoo bees. Xenoglossa, large squash bees. Not to be confused with the other squash bees. Xylocopa, large carpenter bees. Zacosmia. Big horns on that one. Ceratotrysis. Trisura. Trisurisa. Hedy Chiridium. Omalis. Parnopis. Pseudomalis. Ooh, blue and green. Beautiful. Siphotis. Modest bee. Avia, that's not a bee. Honeysuckle sawfly and allies. Okay. Simbex. Trichiosoma. Colatis. Cellophane bees. High layus mask bees. Aphilanthops. Killed it. Bello Micros. Bembix. Oh, I love that one. Bicyretes. Ceres. Typical weevil wasp and allies. Clytemnestra. Clydon. Crabro, shield handed wasps. Crossocaris. Dryudella. Ooh. Ectaminius. Eucerocerus. Foxia, I know that one. Glenostitica. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Hapaloman lilies. <laughs> Arpacta snatching sand wasps. They know what they want. Hoplisodio. <laughs> Lara. Bull cricket hunters. Get them. Laropsis. Lyris. Microbembex, Miscophus, Nutella, Ooh, yum, Nison, Oxybellus, the Oxybellus wasps, who the funk it, Philanthus, the bee wolves, watch out, Pison, Planotulus, who is, who knows. Rophalum, Rophalum, Solierella, Specius, Cicada Killer Wasps, watch out again, Steniodia, beautiful, Strictia, Butterfly Wolf Wasps, Stigmas, Stizoides, Stesis, Tacky Specs, 
Um, tacky pets, sand loving wasps, triple oxy light dialogue. Okay, amphibop lips. That's not a wasp. It's <laughs> like this. <laughs> I think these are wasp galls. It's evidence of wasps. Okay, of course, a gall. <laughs> the gall. <laughs> and Tistrophus. Etrusca. So, what is this, like an egg? I think it's a plant's like, response to there being a wasp. Okay. I don't know yeah. the exact way. Yeah. Lauren Esposito was talking about them a little bit because um, mites also cause galls. They like basically cause a cancerous growth on a leaf and then their babies grow inside of it. They don't want me here to say so. Oh, let's city a. Burnett Weldia. That's cute. Calipheritis. Synips. Diastrophus. Dip lopus. Just the pep it. <laughs> Disholandricus. Oh. Disholcaspus. Look at this. Drew on. Dryocosmos. Heteroecus. Hollow synapse. Coco synapse. I like that one. Nalikayella. Nero Terrace. Heraclistus. Phanasis. Philoterus. Xanthoterus. Neodiprion. Okay, <laughs> Anna Gyrus, I see you. Metanotalia. Terablastothrix. Silaphagus. Pseudochalcura. Aprostylocetus. Allogymnus. Clostero Caris. Epicristo Cheris. Eulophus. Euplectris. Leptocybe. Ophelimus, beautiful. Zagramosoma. Dolicho Dineris. Yo Dineris. Lepto Chilis. Mariko Podineris. Paco Dineris. Harris. Harancistro Ceres. Holistes. Or the umbrella or umbrella paper wasp. What do they need an umbrella for? I don't know. Hero Chilus. Stenodinaris. Lots of dinarises are giving Queen Dinaris a run for her money. <laughs> Simorphus. Metapelma. Modest. Uritoma. Hembra, Hembra, Macro Rilea, Tetramassa, Kaleidotoma, and that's all for, for me. <laughs> um, I gotta fly, I guess. <laughs> See you later. Nat, as a B, you have excellent enunciation, can I just say. I'm 
trying my best, don't worry. Your beast. <laughs> um, well, thank you so much for uh, buzzing in today. Uh, that was phenomenal. And we're gonna go ahead and kick it over to our next guest. Um, and yeah, that's, that's it. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Hey, guys. Um, my name's Grace, uh, Grace Kim. My pronouns are she, her. Um, and I'm a laboratory technician at the Center for Comparative Genomics. Um, that's where behind the house we study the DNA of a lot of these species. Um, and today I think I'm going to talk about or just mention some uh, algae and then I think some more insects. Um, so to start us off, here's Petrospongium. Desmarestia, Saranthera, Dictyopertis, Taunia, Zonaria, Coila Desme, Haplogloia. Uh, Lithesia, leith Lithesia, yeah. Um, <laughs> Sphinicturina, that's definitely it. Um, Glyphinium, love that image. <laughs> uh, Catapyrenium, um, Dermatocarpon, um, or the silver skin lichens. Um, endocarpon or the chalice lichens. Um, Heteroplacidinium. Hydropunctaria. Normandia. Normandina. Uh, Placidiopsis. Um, Veru. Caria or the wart lichens. I guess I see it. Um, Geoglossum um, or earth tongues. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Glutinoglossum or gluttonous earth tongues. Uh, wow. Um, Mitrulia, Mitrula. Um, Tritro blossom or the hairy earth tongue, lots of uh, tongues of the earth. Uh, Hesperomyces, Staniomyces, Neomachilis, Machilis, uh, Petitontus. Machilinus, uh, Zutermopsis, um, Erinivaga, Eremoblata, Cyptocercis, okay, I got that, that one, um, Parcoblata, or the Northern American uh, wood cockroaches. Zupella. Insistitermes. Heterotermes. Reticulitermes. Amitermes. Tetra opis, or the milkweed longhorn beetles. They do have long horns. Tetropium. Tragedion. Tragosoma. Trica stylopsis. Trichosinemis. Trichopharis, Tri Triodoclitus, Tylosis, that's pretty, Typoceris, 
Yuld Chaitis, Extole Putera, Tura, Extole, ex yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Um, Xylo Creus, Xylo Treches, Aredo Dontia, Olicus, Boschella, sounds Italian, Neo Calotilus, uh, Teresa. Simodotera, Eno Clarus, Lodelia, Necrobia, or ham beetles, Tarso Stennis, Thalansinimus, uh, Trichodes, a lot of trichos. Um, Adalia. Oh, nice little ladybug. Um, Anatus, uh, the giant lady beetles. Anisostica. Axion. Brachia cantha, or the spur leg lady beetles. Little cowgirls. Um, Brumoides, <laughs> Exochomus, Calvia, Chilo Chorus, or the, the twice stabbed lady beetles, um, kind of metal, Kudostethus. Uh, Cocinella, Coelho Fora, so small, Colemo, <laughs> Colemegula, Cyclonda, Spotless Lady Beetles, Dimosus, Dimus, Dimus, Helmus. Hippodamia, or the oblong lady beetles. Hyperaspis, um, the sigil lady beetles. Macronamia. Molsentina. Mysia. Namia. Nephus. Nippus, Ola, oh. Paranamia, Silobora, or the fungus eating lady beetles, Rhizobius, Simonus, Stepthorus, or the mite destroying lady beetles. They don't eat them, they destroy them. Maybe these ones. Um, <laughs> don't like, put me on that. Um, <laughs> Zagloba, Xylus, or the Velvet Head Lady Beetles. Very in mode. Doru, Labia, Ablautus, I got big eyes. Um, Andrin, known. Soma, Adamosia, Kalanissus, Serotaniops, Sophura, Citropogone, uh, Diclonus, Diogmites or the Hanging Thieves. Etheria. Hodophylax. Lytheria 
or the bee mimic robber flies. Lesso pogon. Lesio, Lesio pogon. Um, lepto, uh, leptoteromia. Listomia. Uh, Machimus. Just Machimus. Malifora or the bee killers. Oh. Megaphorus. Metapogon. Mylophus. Neoe. Tamus, Neo Mockthermus, no, <laughs> Neomo Neomochthurus, nailed it. Nevada, uh, Nevada, oh, Nevada, <laughs> <laughs> Nevada Silas, um, Nicoles. Pritcha, uh, Pritcha Radomia. Proc, <laughs> um, Procta Canthella. Procta Canthus. Promachus, or the giant robber flies. Who are they robbing? Um, Sarah Pogan. Steno Pogan. Stichopogon. Teractus. 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 Obviously. Triorla. Willistonia. Zab Zab <laughs> what is this the hardest? Zabropes. Leomyza. Chara, or the muskgrass. Nutella, uh, the stonework. Klebsormidium. Clusterium. Cosmerium. Usterum. Microsterius. Plurotanium, Storodesmus, Netrium, looks like microalgae, um, Mo, Mogu, Mo, Mogiotia, Spiriogira, Zygnema, Ophelia, Oopphelia, yeah. Smithora. Lim Limania. Asparagopsis. Bon, bon, maison bon Maisonia. Good house. <laughs> That's it. Um, yeah, happy California Biodiversity Day, guys. That's my time. Yeah, thanks so much, Grace. Um, yeah, I sure. feel like watching your segment was like watching a thriller movie. There was like robbery. There were twice stabbed lady beetles. There were so many other things going on. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> yeah, a delight. Um, mm -hmm. Thanks so much for being here. Yeah, thanks for having me. Yeah. All right. Bye, guys. And next up, we have another segment because we do indeed have one hour, 17 minutes and two seconds at the time of me saying exactly that left of this live stream, um, the 12 hour California nature extravaganza. And if you're just joining us, um, my name's Aria. I'm one of the digital engagement hosts um, along with my two other lovely co-hosts, Sadie and Darian, who you might've seen here throughout the day. Um, and today we're saying the names of as many plants, animals, and fungi in the state of California as humanly possible in 12 hours. Um, yeah, so with that, I'm gonna go ahead and pass it along to our next speaker who's gonna show us 
some more eight-legged things. Um, so anybody who's afraid of spiders, maybe close your eyes and just listen to this one. Take it away, Jacob. <laughs> All right, am I on? Oh, so All scary. Right. <laughs> Hi, everyone. Um, I am Jacob Gorno. I am a research assistant in entomology and also a newly PhD student at UC Berkeley doing some um, study into some arachnids found in California. And I'm really excited to be chatting with you all today. And this is supposed to be a Mothman costume. I realize it kind of looks like I look like a sweaty Darth Maul. So <laughs> we're just going to try our best and get through this. So Agilinopsis. The grass spiders. This is a really cool group. We actually studied this group as part of my master's. Um, there are these spiders called marinoids that are brown. No one really knows like what morphologically or physically appearance unites them, but um, we were able to actually figure out how they were related to each other by sequencing their genomes from museum collections. Calalena, Hololena. Tegenaria, the house funnel web spiders. Amorobius, the lace web spiders. This is another um, member of the marinoid clade, a different family. Uh, Colobius. Gertschenapis. Unfortunately, there's no image for this one. This is kind of what it looks like. It's very small and impish. Um, we actually have a cool little anecdote about these. A couple of months ago, we got some um, salmon gut samples from the National Park Service um, from Marin County, if you're from the Bay Area. And basically, someone had opened up a bunch of salmon guts, looked at the samples, and wanted someone with expertise in entomology or the study of insects, often extended to arachnids, and um, to identify what was in there. And we actually found some spiders, and an intern this summer um, did a lot of hard work sequencing their DNA and keying them out um, morphologically and actually found this genus in salmon guts. So we don't know exactly how they're ending up in a stream, but these spiders were eaten by fish. Aleotypus, Antrodietus, Atypoides, Anifina, Hibana, Aculaparia, Arrhenius, the angulate and round sh shouldered orb weavers. If you run into um, an orb weaving spider, you're most likely to see them um, kind of in those Halloween y style webs that have those really just concentric circles. And so if you've seen any of that around, that's what you're encountering. Arianella, the cucumber spiders, I think that's appropriate. Look pretty melony. Uh, Argiope, the garden orb weavers. Cyclosa, the trash line orb weavers. Um, these spiders are super cool. They're called trash line orb weavers because they actually camouflage themselves in the husks of their prey. They essentially line up all of the bodies of the little insects and stuff that they've eaten in a line down their web. And they kind of sit right in the middle of it. And so they blend in really well with the rest of it. And so that's where the trash line part of the name comes from. Eustala. Gastrocantha, the spiny orb weavers. Uh, Gia. Larinia, the grass orb web spiders. Larinoides, the furrow spiders. I actually remember these spiders. Um, they would be on my like uh, around my porch when I was a kid, and that was still when I was scared of spiders. So there's still like a little bit of this particular spider that I find really unsettling, even though I've come to love them. Mastophora. Uh, these are bolus spiders. These are also a really cool group of spiders. They don't have webs and they don't ambush um, prey. They end up basically drawing a line of silk with a little like bead of attracting chemical that actually mimics moth pheromones. And they basically fish the, sp fish the moths like right out of the air um, because the moths think that they're finding a mate, but they're actually finding this spider that looks like bird poop. Uh, Metazygia. 
Metapyra, Neoscona, the spotted orb weavers, Archoleptinetta, Calponia, Orthonops, Carcinops, uh, Chiracanthium, the long legged sac spiders, Clubiona, the leaf curling sac spiders. Castanera, the ant mimic sac spiders. And this is a whole group of spiders that really, really look like a little up close. You can tell it's a spider, but if you see them running around, like it's nearly indistinguishable. It's really impressive. Krugus, Blaboma, Calamaria, Cybeus. Actually, the last couple of genera I've listed were also part of that group that I studied for my master's. So cool. Uh, Dirxia, Urima, Dictina. Um, this is actually a group that we're also studying. Um, this is one genus within a family called the Dictinidae. And they actually have a whole group within them that um, have various relationships with um, water, whether it's salt water, fresh water different things like that, which is quite amazing when you think of um, spiders not really being associated with water. Um, but this group has some members that actually do interact with water. Emblina. Malos, the Mexican social spiders. Yeah, some members of this dictinity family actually exhibit social behavior, which is like really interesting too, because Often when you think of spiders, you think of these like really highly cannibalistic, um, really aggressive predators that are really opportunistic. But in, more, in quite a few cases, in more than you'd expect, they are able to coexist in pretty loose aggregations. Nigma, um, this is a really cute spider. This um, actually has a pretty long um, brownish looking stripe here, but in some cases it looks like a nice little red heart, um, which is pretty cute. Saltonia, this is actually one of those um, salt flat spiders. Uh, there's actually a researcher at the academy who was one of the first to see this spider after nearly a hundred years. It was thought to be extinct and she found it in some salt flats. Diguetia, the desert shrub spiders. Apomastis. Aptosticus, Cryptotenisa, Promyrmecaphala, Cococania, Sasonia, Drasodes, Drasilis, Haplodrasis, Herpilus, Mycaria, Nodokion, Sergiolus, Zelotes. Oh, this one's sad and dead. Um, Bothriocertum. That's like the saddest image of a spider I've seen in a hot minute. Um, Hebestatus, Homolonychus, Calileptonetta. Aegineta, the dwarf black linophiids. Ceraticellus. Erigone, the black dwarf spiders. Frontinella. Linophantes. Microlinophia. Narian. This actually, the last couple of names as well are from this family called the Linophiidae. And those were actually also some spiders that we found in those salmon guts. I actually forgot. I did bring, this is like the size of the salmon we were um, kind of working with the gut samples from. So you can imagine it wasn't these like really, really large salmon that were um, eating these spiders, but um, still bizarre nonetheless. Uh, Pitio hyphantes, agroica. Alicosa, Alopicosa, the fox spiders, 
Arctosa, the bear spiders, Camptacosa, Hogna, the burrow living wolf spiders. We've got a whole zoo in this group. Pardosa, the thin legged wolf spiders. Pyreta, the pirate wolf spiders. Shizakosa, the brush legged spiders. Some of these have some really interesting, the males will have really fancy hairs and will like flip them around to attract a female. Um, so kind of interesting. Mega Hexura. Mimetis, the cannibal spiders. Um, these actually hunt spiders. They're um, specialists on spiders and will mimic their um, mating, kind of flicking on a spider thread and will actually think that the spider is trying to mate and it ends up getting attacked by one of these other spiders. Zora. Calisoga. Escafiella. Orchestina, Hamal, Hamata Liwa, the crowned lynx spiders, Oxiopes, the grass lynx spiders, Pusetia, the green lynx spi spiders. I think they're so cute. Apollo Fannies, Ebo, Philodromus, the running crab spiders, Rhizodromus, Thanatus, Tibellus, the slender crab spiders. Artema, the giant daddy long leg spiders, another thoroughly dead one. Crossopresa, the tailed daddy long leg spiders. Focalphora, Physocyclus, Silochorus. Dolomedes, the fishing spiders. Tynus. Kibramoa. Plecturus. Prodidomus. Eurocdinus, four scorpions. This is um, one of my favorite groups of arachnids, partially because this is the group I'm studying for my PhD. They're found throughout California, mostly in like forested montane regions and absent from the Central Valley. Um, they're just this like really elegant mahogany brown scorpion. And um, we're studying both how they're related to each other as well as some impacts of wildfire and cattle grazing um, because we know that those seem to have an impact on their populations. And I have some specimens here, um, little difficult to see, but they're about this big. And this is how we preserve them in these jars of ethanol with a cotton ball stuffed to kind of wick up any extra ethanol that, um, so that the specimens never dry out. Um, so we can study them. And we collect them using these fun little forceps that if you're um, familiar with like feeding reptiles or something, um, it's basically the same type of forcep. We pick them up by their tails so they don't sting us. Alrighty, Grilloblata. Apentesis, Arachnus, some moths, Arctia, Ascalapha, this is called the black witch moth. Um, there's some interesting um, folklore around this moth and that it might be a harbinger of death. Um, so kind of cool. Brucia, Bulia, Kynergia, Kynergina, Catocala, the underwing moths, Ciseps, Cisusa, Cisthene, Clemencia, Crambidia, Tanuka, Drasteria, Ectypia, Heteranasa, Empyreuma, Estigmine, the ermine moths. Eucades, um, these feed on milkweed, so you might see them alongside some monarchs. A Euclidia. Nophilea. Hemeroplanus. 
Pseudohemihylea. I think I had this one in the promo video. Hypena. Hypercompy. Hyphantria. Hypocala. Idia. Codiosoma. Leptarctia. Litocala. Litoprosopis. Lophocampa, Lycomorpha, Ligophila, Melipotis, Micterophora, Orgia, Palthus, Phragmatobia, Pyrarctia. If you've heard of the woolly bear um, caterpillar, that's what this, um, that's what the caterpillar turns into, this like beautiful kind of golden um, orange moth. Shrankia. Scolioptorix. Spilosoma. Titanolita. Toxon prucha. Uh, Zolly, the Zolly moths. I called them zales for a while, but I've heard actual um, people with experience call them Zolly, so I guess I'll defer. <laughs> I think that might be it. Well, thank you so much. Um, happy California Biodiversity Day. I'm a big fan of California, although I'm from New York, a big fan of the biodiversity here and looking forward to studying it more um, through this PhD. And I hope you enjoy the rest of the segment. Thanks so much for being here, Jacob. That yeah. was awesome. When did you first get over your fear of spiders? Was there a moment? Uh, it was actually in high school when I decided I wanted to study entomology or insects. I was like, this is going to be really ridiculous if like, my whole career was like knowing about insects and being able to study them, but I can't study or be around something that even though it's not an insect, just has an extra pair of legs. And so I kind of like exposure therapy myself um, by just like capturing a bunch in New York because I knew none of them were dangerous. And then I got kind of close to them and I was like, actually, these are cool too. And I haven't really looked back since, so. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. Well, I aspire to it. And thanks again for being here. Yeah, thank you, Arya. We're going to go ahead and pass it on to our next guest. We have officially crossed into the last hour. So this is going to be woo, like a race to get to the end, say as many scientific names as we humanly possibly can. You want to take it away, Mitch? I just, am I just here? Hey. Ooh, knocking things over. Okay. <laughs> I don't see anything coming up. Um, Aranophilus. No image. Geophilus, compost centipedes. Pachymerium. Tayuna. Gariscophus. Nothobius. Strigamia, Dicelophilus, Nictunguis, Bothropolis, Gosibius, Nothembius, Pocabius, Pseudolithobius, Theatops, Scolopendra, giant centipedes, Scolopocryptops, Entomobria, Entomobrioides, Lepidocyrtus, Pseudocinella, Cinella, Willosia, Balistura, Isotomo, Waterfall Springtails, Isotomurus, Vertigopus, Pogonognathelus, 
Tomoceris, Megalothorax, Brachistomella, Ceratophysella, Hygogastrura, Anurida, Neanura, Morulina, Morulodes, Paranura, Sudo Suda Corutes, Sensilanura, Vitronura, Hymenaphorura, Podura. Arhopalites, Burletiella, Prorastriopes, Ptenothrix, Palicatiana, Sminturinus, Pararhopalites, Sminturus, Spherotheca, Gaussia, Anthesius, Atomaria, Cucuyus, Priacma, Prolixocupis, Adaleres, Agronus, Antonomus, Stereus, Apleurus, Atriconutus, Bagus, Bangasternus, Cathor Mioserus, Sutorincus, Sianomimus, Cocotripes, Coniatus, Cylindrocapturus, Cosmobaris, Procidema, Curculio, nut and acorn weevils, Dacilus, Dermestis, skin beetles, Doritomus, willow weevils, Dislobus, Elasoptes, Elescus, Amphiastes, Erecideus, Eusilus, Macorinculus, Gonipterus, Eucalyptus weevils. Hypera, Ips, engraver beetles. <laughs> That's a season one. Larinus, Ligniotis, ash seed weevils. Lixus, Limantes, Magdalis. Messinus, Microlarinus, Miloderes, Monarthrum, Myrmex, 
Naupactus, white fringed beetles. Nemocestis, Derelomus, Ophriastis, Otiorincus, Pachirinus, Pachirinus, pine needle weevils, Pandeltenus. Pandeleteus, Paraptocus, Floeosinus, Thaselephas, Thalaselephas, Silvanus, Pityopthro, uh, Pityopthorus. Proctorus, Selactus, Rhinusa, Siopithes, Scolitus, Sibinia, Sitona, Smicronix. Stamoderes, Steremnius, Tachierges, Tricolepis, Tricobaris, Trigonoscuta, Tichius, Zileborinus, Zacelis, Sibocephalus, Anorus, Acrocera, Eulongus, North American jeweled spiderflies, Pterodontia. Turobopsebius, Agromaisa, Amaromaisa, Alagromaisa, Calicomaisa, Serodontha, Phytomaisa, you hexomyza, haplopeodes, lyriomyza, leaf mining flies, nemorimyza, ophiomyia, phytolyriomyza. Silvicola, Anthomaia, Utricota, Fuselia, seaweed flies, Pegomaia, Apistomaia. That Looks was like I'm all done. <laughs> phenomenal. Mitch, I can't tell you how many comments we have coming in about how absolutely luxurious and elegant your pronunciations are. So congratulations. Oh, that was wow. amazing. <laughs> well, I am, I'm also a classical singer and I've spoken or sung in a lot of Latin, uh, church Latin. So maybe that helps. I wasn't sure whether it would be. I'll just mention I um, will be singing um, the tenor solos in the Mozart Requiem in December. And now I'm learning German Latin. So I'm going to have to break a lot of old habits for that. <laughs> wow. So, um, that is so impressive. Yeah. That's so okay. cool.
Well, gosh, thanks. Yeah. yeah. Well, thanks for being here today. Well, thanks for having me. It was fun. And now I can just fall asleep. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And boy, will we be doing that a lot of after concentration. this stream because we are officially 45 minutes away from the end of the 12 hour California nature extravaganza. And we are going to pass it right along to our next speaker, Luana. You want to take it away? Hello. Can you hear me okay? Yes. Hi, everybody. My name is Luana, and I am a planetarium presenter at Cal Academy of Science since last year. I love this idea of how everybody's working together to speak Latin and having some fun together. So I can't wait to get started on this. Okay, so acro lofus, grass, too warm, moths. Oh yeah, we, we have them at the planetarium sometimes. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> we, we fill many past reports, <laughs> <laughs> but they always take care of it. So it's really nice to know that. Amidria, Cifitinia, Daviscardia, Dry, dry, no, Driadella, Diotopasta, pasta, hmm. Haplotinia, Monopis, Monopis, Nemopogon, Nemopogon, Oinophila. Now I'm like, should I use Portuguese or <laughs> like, what, what do I go with this? Opogona. Firi, Firi, mm. Firioica, Tinea, Tineola, Silistia, Astrotischeria, Coptotrish, Tisheria. Acleris, Acleris, Aethis, Amorbia, Ancilis, Anopina, Apodomis, Archips, <laughs> okay, Argirotainia. Bactra, Bahbara. <laughs> <laughs> okay, <laughs> Shimoptesis, uh, Chloris tonira, hmm, interesting, Clepsis, uh, Snephasia. Nephasia, Cochilis, Crocidosema, Cydia, Decodis, oh Endothenia, Apiblema, <laughs> Epitonia, oh. Epitonia, like nice color. Epiphias, Phias, I don't know. Episemus, Eucopina, pine cone, and shoot borer moths. Okay. Eucosma, Eunosta, Graphalita. Graphalita, <laughs> Gypsonoma, Gypsonoma, <laughs> Idia, <laughs> Enricos, Enricos, Lorita, <laughs> I don't know what language I'm speaking, <laughs> Notocilia, <laughs> Nithia, Ophatulena, Olethro. These pandemis, we know that one. Fellow mm -hmm. <laughs> Krista, uh, 
Fiocroa Platfalonidia Platinota Proteoteras Seldex Centera Pseudociaphila Ritinia, pine shoot moths, Rudenia, Sonia, Spargonothis, hmm. Sulema, Thaumatographa, Calesia, Atamelia, Eucalantica, Zelaria, Eoceratia, Ipsilofa, Haricina, Tripocris, Kenny's, Wolves and Dogs. I love this one actually, and I asked if I could bring Kenny's up because I learned from Greg Castro, who actually was here earlier today, as you might know, uh, taught me a little bit about the significance for Ohlone culture, that they were a big part of creation for a lot of native cultures, and that they bring that trick trickster <laughs> into it, into creation, and then remind us that they too do have a right to exist. And I love that. I love that about <laughs> learning uh, with different people I meet and learning how the universe is also a conversation. So yeah, I, I was really fascinated by it. So Canis. <laughs> Exobasidium. Pseudomicrostroba. Tylitia. Microbotrium, Anther smoots, Rhodotorula, Tuberculina, Chrysomyxa, Coleosporium, Cronarchium. Wow, I love the color of this one. Melampsora, Ra, <laughs> Cerotelium, uh, Gymnoconia, Cuenola, Fragmidium, Pileolaria. Cumin Ciela, Gymnosporangium, oh wow, I love that one, Peristema, Puxinia, Orange Yellow Rust, wow, love the colors, you, um, Uro Mises. Calisto, calis, no, Calitospora, Pora, Melamsorella, <laughs> Melamsoridium, <laughs> Uridin, Uridinopsis, Nisopsora. Austroputinia, Europixis, Emilea, Uredo, Septobasidium, Cystophilobasidium, Mixadium, Beatoropsis, 
Fiotremela. Tremela. I love this one. Yeah, that's. Tritiratium. Sorisorium. Ustilago. Alumisis. Sin shitrium. False rusts. False rusts. Anthrophaga. Entomophthora. <laughs> Masospora. Cicada fungi. Mortierella. Dicranophora. Mucor. Ficomyces. Spinellus. Pilobolus. Hmm. Rhizopus. Sizigites. Endogone. Modicella. Fairy snowballs. Umbilopsis. Canochia. Euonemos. Spindles. Mortonia. Oh, those are really cool names. Paxistima. Mountain lovers. Parnassia. Grass of Parnassus. Ceratophilum. <laughs> uh, hornworts. Hmm. Okay. Cornus. Dogwoods. Carpenteria. Tree anemone. Fenderella. Fenderella. Jamisia. Philadelphus. Mock oranges. Whiplea. Ilknai. Ilknid. Menzelia, blazing stars. Oh, I saw that one in the living roof. Petalonyx, uh, sandpaper plants. Thank you so much uh, for um, for joining us for finishing out as our, our last external guest from here on out. It's uh, it's uh, DE going rapid fire. So I so appreciate you coming and uh, and giving so many excellent pronunciations of all those plants and fungi. Um, I'm going to turn it over to Aria who is dressed normally. This is how it always looks. Ahem. I will be reading some sea stars. That's not a sea star. Tigriopus, tigger pods. Actinius. Penella. Emiletus. Betus, blue winged olives. Calibatus, speckled duns. Diphetor. Canis, common square gills. Drunella. Ceratella. Timpanoga. Hexagenia, giant mayflies. Heptagenia. Rhytrogena, march browns. Isonychia, slate drakes. Neolio, neolio, neoleptophlebia. <laughs> Astrometus, ah, there's my kind. 
Coronaster. Evasterius. Lepasterius. Orthasterius. Pisaster, giant sea stars. Technopodia, Sclerasterius, Stylasterius, Astropectin, Luidia, Henricia, Blood Stars, Pateria, Bat Stars. Dermasterius, Mediaster, Odontaster, Linkia, sometimes these are blue, Poraniopsis, Solaster, smooth sun stars, Acolonia. Okay, that's not a sea star anymore. Speed running some insects. Elasmo, Elasmo Stethus. I'm going to keep wearing this. <laughs> Elasmuca. Sixidia. Junipertia. Synecdoche. Synecdoche. <laughs> Adelgis. Pineus. Alluroclava, Allurocybotus, not to be confused with Alluroclava, Allurodicus, I'm not going to remember the last two, Alluroparadoxus, wow, a lot of Alluros, Alluroplatus, Alluropleo, oh my god, they keep getting longer, <laughs> Allurofluorocellus, Allurofluxus, <laughs> This is a joke at this point. Come on. Okay. Paraleros. <laughs> Pialias. Singiela. Siphoninus. Te Tetralude Rhodes. Triolude Rhodes. Alidus. Aphrophora. Aratus. Mezira, Holocranium, Holocranium, am I right? <laughs> Abatis, Bellostoma, Luthosiris, Lethosiris, Hoplinus, Jalysis, Neonides, Proto, Pronotacantha. Calophia, Prosapia, Serococcus, Serratagalia, Asinopterus, Agaliopsis, Alconura, Allegia, Allegiella, <laughs> Amphigonalia, Aplanusiella. Balcanosiris. Caledonis. Cochlorinus. Coladonis. Querna. Dalbulus. Deltocephalus. Decrella. Dixianus, Dracula Cephala, Dracula Cephala, <laughs> Dryonia, <laughs> Empoasca, Erasmonia, Mamonura, Erythronura, Eupteryx, Eupteryx, Eutetix. Evacanthus, 
Excultanus. Exitianus. Friscanus. Gloridonus. Graminella. Graphocephala. Gyponana. <laughs> Hilocara. Homolodisca. Hularia. Hularia. Idioceris. Illinigina. Limbanus. Macropsis. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. Catiana. Pneumonia. Memnonia. Memoria. Neocolidia. Neoco <laughs> Lidiana <laughs> Norvelina Oncopsis Osborellus Pagaronia Paraflipsis Pasadinus Ponana That's like almost what I used to call tomatoes when I was a kid. Um Reticopsis, story for another time. Scaphytopius. Spenbergiella. It is cute. Spathinus. Texaninus. Themo Themnotetics. Twin Ninja. Xerophloia, Xiphon, Zin, Zignin, Zignama, Kakama, the cactus dodger cicadas. That's cool. Clydoflips, the American stri. <laughs> Why is this harder than the name? Stridulating, stridulating cicadas. Diceroprocta, scrub cicadas. Mega tibs tibis and great cicadas. Yeah, they're great. Neoplatypedia, wing banging cicadas. Okanagana whip cicadas. That is a cool looking cicada. Okanagodes. Platypedia, wing tapping cicadas. Cicadas, cicadas. <laughs> Tibisinoides. Cymex. Oh, Oeclis. Pintalia. Platysixis. Clastoptera. Acanthocephala. Anasa. Squash bugs. Catarintha. Centrochorus. Cereleptis. Caristeris. Kelenidia. Leptoglossus. Merocorus. Mosena. That is cool. Look at those legs. So wow. Narn Narnia. Where's the closet, huh? Huh? <laughs> Scoloposeris. Peculius. Lascazito chorus. Or Orgamara. Scolops. Hymenochorus. Areococcus. Flatormenis. Mistarnophantia. Galastochorus. Nerthra. Geochorus. Aquarius. Yeah, I'm an Aquarius. <laughs> Darius. 
Limnoporus, Metrobates, Tripobates, I bet it's Batis, Maragata, Heterogaster, Macrohomontia, uh, ma Macrohomotoma, Hydrometra, Catlinum. <laughs> hey, Kathleen. <laughs> <laughs> Navis <laughs> Embrisus <laughs> Ranatra Buenoa Not a nectar, milky back swimmers <laughs> Graminorthesia Ortho Orthesia Crophius, Metapoplax, Microplax, Oxycarinus, Phlegias, Ashlocaria, Atrazonotus, Crifula, Crifula, <laughs> crying. <laughs> We're so close. Emblithus. <laughs> Erymochorus, Heraeus, Colinetris, Lamprodo, Lam Lamprodema, Ligicorus, Ligirochorus, fully just left out the RO, Melizonotus, Megalonotus, Ozophora, Pseudopachybranchius, Pseudopamera. I'm focusing so hard, y'all. Scolopostitis. Sphragisticus. All two brain cells. All of them. Tempira. Thylochromus. Togodolentus. Pentacora. Camiris. Diopulcus, Urigaster, Homemus, Spirochorus. These are so cute and round. Stethalox, Stethalox, Thoma, Thoma, Stochorus, Corymelanine. <laughs> I'm sticking with it. Sidnoides. Cori Theta, Cori Duca, Dictilla, Leptodictia, Sudacista, Teleonemia, Bac Bactericera, Kalinda. Lauritrioza, Trioza, Denepteryx. At this point, I really feel like this is what they make people record for like Animal Crossing voices and then speed them up. <laughs> Dictino, Dictionia, Dictissa, Dicti, Dictidia. Nietus Microvelia Ragovelia Josephiella Pleistodontes Dialis Triscolia That's a cool looking insect. Scolia. Cyrex. <laughs> Just look at it flying. <laughs> Tremex. Euroceris. Ceres. Amophilia. Thread wasted sand wasps. That is a little terrifying. I think I would lose my mind if that crawled on my arm. Calibion. Chlorion. 
That's cute. Cryoscolia. Oh, so cute. Isodontia. Grass carrying wasps. <laughs> Carry grass. Palmodes. Pol Podolonia. Cutworm wasps. Very metal. Podium. Prionix. Celifron. Black mud dauber wasps. Sex. Schleteris tana so tana stigmodes bidigitus. I feel like my mouth is like disobeying <laughs> my brain. <laughs> Bledogenerus <laughs> caliroa. Like the reading comprehension to speaking is not Cladius. Yupa reofra. Yura. You uh, really emphasize the you. Fenusa. Philacus. Halidamia. Hemicroa. Lagonis. Monophadnoides. Tenthreddido. <laughs> Tenthreddy. Tomostitus. Acanthetropus. Brachycystis, Colocystis, Mycenium, the New World, New World Banded Thinned Wasps, Paratyphia, Stilbopogon, and we are still going, Megastigmus. Monodontomeris, Podagrion, Torimus, and Cystoceris, Eumenes, the typical Potter wasps, Miscocytiris, the long waisted paper wasps, Odinarius, Zaila. Rectiostoma, Vicombia, Drepana, that is a cool moth, Euthyatira, <laughs> Habrosini, Pseudothyatira, Agonopteryx. That's me. Oh, well, Anteo Trica. Yeah, I'm going to pass it back to my fellow co hosts. Thank you so much, C Staria, for that excellent uh, masterclass in how to pronounce insects. Um, it is the final segment of the night. I regret to inform everyone. Honestly, I regret to inform myself because I'm scared of what is about to happen, which is. Um, the three of us, Sadie, myself, and Aria, we have a huge wheel with all of our faces on it. Um, and whoever that wheel lands on is going to have to read the remaining Beatles, which still is so, so many. Uh, Aria, could you please, could you please uh, assume the position? <laughs> and, and hold up, hold up. There we go, that's the one. And oh, show off this beautiful wheel that we have. We have. So many faces that each and every one of us are making. Oh, it's happening. Oh, oh, that was scary. Okay, I really emotionally like am not ready for this, if I'm being honest. I didn't mean to spin it so hard. I just wanted to show that it's good. Okay, okay. Um, should we just do it? Let's like let's do it. It, la it landed Darian on the one of me sobbing. Yeah. <laughs> so appropriate. The one of me crying after watching everything everywhere all at once is yeah, I great. I'm glad. This is this is gonna happen. Um honestly, Sadie, I can click through it if you'd like, just so I can like do it like quickly. Um like rapid Wait, fire because we are getting this done. Speed through the Beatles. 
Don't look at that. Beatles. Thank you. Go team. Okay. Okay. Let's make this a reality. I'm getting the microphone really close. We're, we're doing this. Um, I have all four limbs like planted on a surface. Okay, let's go. In one second. <laughs> Amartus, Anthonaeus, Heteral Hellas, Cartodir, Fushina, Revelieria, Leptinus, Carucus, Platyceroides, Platyceris, Cynodendron, Calochromis, Dictyoptera, Punicialis, Atalus, Lederia, Osphia, Fringanophilus, Prothalpia, Russia. I'm rushing <laughs> to finish these beetles. Cordylospasta, Cystodemus, Cyste desert spider beetles. Oh my gosh, 10 minutes, 21 seconds left. Eupicata, burning, burning goose leaders. Uh, Eupomfa, Gnathium, Lida, Meloe, Nemognatha, Fodaga, Pleuropasta, Pyroda, Spastonyx, Tegrodera, Tricrania, Acidates, Colops, Endiodes, Escatrocrepus, Hypobaeus, Malachius, Tenops, Hypocorus, Vectura, Vectoroides, Hesperobanus, Macrorops, Monotoma, Phyconomus, Rhizophagus, Mordella, Mordellistina, Burgonus, Vitargus, Mycetophagus, Typhaea, Athenia, Brassicogethes, Carpophilus, Eupurea, Glycerochylus, Nitidula, Nitops, Stelidota, Euroforus, Calopus, Capidida, Didylus, Eumechomera, Ischgnomera, Oxacus, Rhinoplatia, Xanthocroina, Ginglimocletus, Methetius, Orsodacne, Distremocephalus, Zarhippus, Pleocoma, Acneus, Eubrianex, Psephenus, uh, Dryophyloides, Gibium, Mesium, Tinnus, thank you, Mo, Dendroides, Petalus, Svalma, Sandalus, Macrosagon, Ripiforus, Acoma, Aegialia, Amblonoxia, Aphodius, Boreocanthon, Chilothorax, Sinacanthus, Cotinus, Cyclocephala, Dichelonyx, Dinocoma, Diplotaxis, Hoplia, Liberis, Leptohoplia, Leactongus, Ligurus, Megasoma, Anidus, Anthophagus, Paracatalpa, Serica, Paranomala, Phobetus, Phylophaga, Pleurophorus, Polyphyla, Pseudo, Pseudocotalpa, Valgus, Dystaxia, Glyptoskelomorpha, Schizopus, Erythania, Anapsis, Heterosilpha, Necrophorus, Denaphtophilus, Dendrophagus, Orzeophilus, Euliota, Spherius, Aloides, Allobates, uh, Alphitophagus, Anochoma, Anepsius, Apocrypha, Apsina, Argoporus, Absolus, Batulius, Blapstinus, Serenopus, Chirodes, Chilometopon, Sibidellus, Claborus, Xila Nemus, Xilas, Canibiasoma, Cani Coniontis, Craniotis, Cryptoglossa, Diaparis, Edrotes, Elioides, Ambathion, Apanteus, Escatomoxis, Eulabius, Eusophulus, Eustatus, Gondwano Crypticus, Gonocephalum, Helops, Ephthymus, Lepidnos Nebmetplatia, Megaliat, <laughs> Metopoloba, Metoponium, Microscadia, Nocibiotes, Notibius, Mectoporus, Apatrioides, uh, Phalaria, Phalaromella, Philolithus, Pseudocystella, Scotobanus, Stenochitis, Stenomorpha, Tribolium, Trichodon, Triophorus, uh, Typhlusacus, Ulus, Trifilia, Pactopus, Trachypacus, Amorgus, Aeronixa, Peltus, Temnoscalia, Alonium, Coxalus, Hyporhagus, Philopsis, Lascanotus, Megathaphorus, Pholoides, Microprius, Microprius, Nemurania, Synctia, Euschimorpha, Eusetius, 
Zopharis. Zophobus? Is that it? <laughs> Wait, we still have so much more time to go. Oh my gosh, oh my killed God. that. that was easy. Okay. <laughs> Should we? Do you want to look at that? Yeah. Because we didn't get to all of them. No problem. Okay. We got more. I could do this for fun. I do this all day. <laughs> <laughs> Paratriatoma, Celiopus, I'm doing really well. Rasahus, Reduvius, Rhinochorus, Sinea, Sinolemoides, Triatoma, Zealous, Arhysis, Aphius, Boisia, Harmostes, Jadera, Lyorhesis, Maestria, Semoluium, Gyurinura, Eurypariphus, Exireta, Hedriodiscus, Hermetia, Autonotomia, Pachygaster, Sargus, Stratiomus, Allograpta, Anasimia, Asemosirphus, Baca, Blera, Blera, Blacky Palpus, Calicera, Seriana, Chiloisia, Chrysotoxum, Copus Stylum, Cri Criorhina, Dasi Surfus, Didea, Aristalis, Megasurface, Aristinolinius, Eumerus, Eupoides, Phasia, Ferdinandia, Hadromaya, Helophilus, Hypocrintanus, Melada, Melanostoma, Meliscavia, Microdon, Myolepta, Nosigaster, Omega Surface, Orthonevra, Palpata, Paragus, Parasurface, Parahelophilus, Paladicurus, Pocota, Polybiomaya, Polydontomaya, Diaprosopa, Pseudoscavea, Scavea, Sericomaya, Spherophoria, uh, Spicomaya, Spilomaya, Cirphus, Toxomeris, Tropida, Volucella, Hydrophis, Coleonyx, Reptiles, Dipsosaurus, Soromalis, Rena, Calosaurus, Pterosaurus, Phrenosoma, Scleroporus, Uma, Urosaurus, Uda, Phylodactus, Plestiodon, Ap Aspidoscelis, Crotalus, Santhusia, Chelania, Lepidochelis, Dermochelis, Actinemus, Gopherus, Drosera, Hypertellus, Calyptridium, Cystanthi, Lucia, Montia, Abronia, Ecclesianthes, uh, Alonia, Anulocalis, Borhavia, Mirabilis, Armeria, Limonium, Acanthoscyphus, Distorta, Centrostegia, Corizanthi, Dodecara, Dodecahama, Erico, Ariogonum, Gilmania, Holistera, Goodmania, Congia, Lastarea, Mucronea, Mulenbeckia, Nemecolis, Oxera, Oxypeca, Persicaria, Polygonum, Pterostegia, Rumex, Sidotheca, Cystinotheca, Portulaca, Sarcobeta, Simondicia, Ardea, Boterus, Bubuculus, Buteroides, Egretta, Ixobricus, Nictanessa, Nictinotorex, uh, Pelagitus, Phaethon, Dryobates, uh, Dryocopus, Melanerpes, uh, Spherapicus, uh, Ichmorophorus, Poly, pol, Podolimbus, uh, Chrysoclista, Elachista, Ethmia, Peridia, Fulgoracea, Nematocampa, Nemoria, Neoalsis, Neoterpes, Nepatia, Operoptera, Orthonema, Peliacrita, Paraxelsia, uh, Perozoma, Pero, Feora, Ferni, Figalia, Philidia, Platea, Plemuria, Prochoroides, Prorella, Prototami, Protoboramia, Pterotea, Rumipsura, Sabuloides, Scopula, Selenia, Ceres, Cosema, Sicia, Solacina, Asparagania, Spodolepis, Stamnocnetesis, Stamnodes, Stenoporpia, Metanema, Tetrachus, Synclora, Synglocus, Thalophaga, Tornos, Trichodesia, Triposa, Venusia, Xanthorhoi, Xanthotype, Zo Xenophleps, Antro oh, of course it starts again. Antropora, Bugularia, Bugulina, Deandrobiania, Celeporaria, Celeporina, Cryptosola, Intergripelta, Flustra, Hickensia, Celeporella, Jellyella, Prima Velens, Phytolopora, Schizoporella, Feminoloporella, Water Sipora, Flustra de Lillo, Anguinella, Ferrucella, Amanthia, Cristatella, Pectinatella, Heteropora, Disparella, Patinella, Tubulopora, Diaporoforma, Blasia, Lunularia, Asterella, Cryptometrium, Menia, Clevia, Conocephalum, Marchantia, Riccia, Riccocarpos, Targonia, Geothalus, Severocarpos, Isotis, uh, Lycopodiella, Lycopodium, Seleginella, Pachystegia, Pseudognathelium, Campunella, Donindia, Githo, Heterocodon, Legner, Lobelia, Nemocletus, Palmeria, Porterella, Ravenella, Trachiellum, Triodenus, Menianthes, Lyrocarpa. That's it. That's every genus we prepared. 
okay. all the Beatles and everything everyone I'm, else didn't get doing the wide shot. Do. <laughs> Hi, everyone. A little peek behind the curtain. See how the sausage is made. Um, <laughs> we just did it in 12 hours. Um, every gene is observed in California. Every yeah, genius. they did it. Okay, we have a scripted closure. <laughs> <laughs> like, this is I real. This is real. Um, and we're still going to be real. It's just going to be scripted. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, I do want to say I think it's very appropriate that Darian took us out that way based on all of the time that he has put into curating the spreadsheet that has been powering this whole live stream. Amazing. I love it. Thank you. Thanks. Appreciate it. Could it be? <laughs> Is it really the end? 12 hours, 7,265 genera, and a lifetime of memories. Okay, who's tired? I am legitimately tired. This is scripted, but I'm tired. I yeah, <laughs> absolutely. But we cannot end until we thank all of the people who sent in recordings, who came in live to read all of these scientific names. Um, thank you. You were all phenomenal. Uh, this was so much fun. You're all absolute stars. And a huge thank you to everyone who helped out behind the scenes too. Uh, our moderators, Jess and Laurel, who have been present in the chat all day long. Alwyn and David, who helped us to wrap our brains around the massive amount of tech required to make today's event a reality. Like you should all see the state of this live stream studio. It is bonkers how much stuff we squeezed in here. To, and we also want to thank Angela and Megan and everybody else who helped us with the check-in process and getting all of these folks organized to come in and out of the live stream studio. It's been a journey. Yes, a huge team effort. And lastly, thank you, our amazing audience, for tuning in. Uh, whether you've been here for 10 minutes or 10 hours, I know some of you have. I've seen your names in the chat. Um, <laughs> we here at the California Academy of Sciences would like to thank you for joining us and celebrating all the beautiful biodiversity uh, that makes up this state. And now it's time for a 12-hour nap. Good, Good night. night. Ooh.